Thank you.
Welcome to Sew Creative Live. This is our very first virtual sewing event. My name is Trisha and I am going to be your hostess. We here at Sewing Parts Online have been working really hard to get this all together for you and we are confident that you are going to have a fantastic time. We are so happy to be here and that you are joining us. A little bit about what to expect. We have a fantastic lineup of 28 experts. We are going to be doing four days of streaming from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. So you're gonna get a lot of education. There is going to be over $26,000 worth of giveaways. And at this point, it's way over that. <laughs> and don't forget to comment and to get into our giveaway. Um, in order to do that, you just comment on any social media. Now, if you're on YouTube or Facebook, that is where the comments are gonna be pulled from. But if you're on TikTok or Instagram, just hop on over to YouTube or Facebook and comment there. We don't want you to miss out on getting involved in the giveaway. The giveaways are going to be so many awesome things, but we have a Grace Cutie Bundle. We also have um, several machines, including the Baby Lock Triumph and thousands of dollars worth of fabric. So we're super excited. Again, thank you so much for joining. We're gonna have a good time. So without further ado, we are going to invite our first guests. That's gonna be Jana Matthews and Melinda Romero with The Grace Company. Good morning. Welcome you guys, thank you so much for coming. Thank Can you, you tell me us. a little bit about yourself and what you're gonna be showing us today? Yeah, so I'm Jana, I'm with The Grace Company and the sales team here. Um, today we're gonna to be talking about the Cutie and the 15 Pro. Yes. Hi, I'm Melinda. Uh, Again, uh, sales executive with Gina, uh, and yes, just echoing what she said, we'll be talking about the Cutie and R15 Pro. Yeah, so let's get going. So first we're gonna talk about the Cutie. Now, some of you may have seen this before. Um, we've had lots of great advertisement through some parts online about this product. Uh, Melinda, I, I wanna to talk to everybody who's never thought about quilting in their home and they have a small space. So. Let's have everybody in the comments, let's have you put a one in the comments if you have always wanted to do free motion quilting and just thought, well, I don't have the space or I don't have um, the ability to get a huge, long, you know, 10, 12 foot frame, what do I do then, right? I will put a one in the comments. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too, right? I, I don't have that space. I also put a one in the comments if you have um, a non-dedicated space, right? Your craft room is smaller, like mine. I have my sewing table, but I don't have additional table room for tables. So my machine comes off, and then I use it for cutting, and then it goes back on. So if you have a non-dedicated place, put a one in the comments, because this is what the cutie does for us, is it's that non-dedicated quilting space. Exactly, exactly. You know, when I first started with the Grace Company, uh, the cutie had launched maybe six months prior uh, to me starting, mm -hmm. six, maybe seven months. Uh, and I'll tell you, those first few months were rough. We had, we, you know, just uh, inventory uh, <laughs> shortages. Uh, we were waiting uh, for our product to come in, but everybody wanted to get their hands on the cutie. It's true, yeah. Yeah, the cutie was so popular and, and had a waiting list. Well, wait no more, it's all ready to go. So let's talk about a little bit. So it's right here behind Melinda. As you can see, we have it on the just a lifetime table so the cutie sits on a two foot by four foot section and you might say well what is it about the cutie do i have to uh, attach it onto my frame or my table how what does do it do? work how what does it do? work what i wear when how? yeah so let's let's show people if we just lift it up you can see melinda and i are able to lift it there's no problems with it you just sit it right on there there's some rubber grips on the bottom here and they are set so that it's, it won't slide back and forth, but it's just a two by four. You can see this table, it's just a regular disposable table, not having any issues. So you're gonna have, you know, it's easy to do on your cutting table, on your kitchen table. We've even had people, because it's so easy to move, we've had people um, put it on their patio and quilt outside. We even have a customer, she, her husband's a long haul truck driver, and she goes with him sometimes, uh, and she'll call every three, few months or so. Uh, she'll order her thread and 
hate you know new blades or, or you know little knickknack uh, mm -hmm. type notions. Uh, and she's on the road with her husband with her kiwi, and, yeah. and it's like I don't know how or when or you know she doesn't, but she doesn't. Yeah. Well, and everything you see here is what comes with the cutie, right? So people always say, well, what additional pieces do I need? And we'll get into that in a moment as well. But first, we want to talk about what comes with it. So first off is this carriage. This is where your sewing machine sits. Now, you can get a long arm or mid arm machine, like here on my left, the Kinique. But this carriage is all that you need to start with, right? It's set so that you can put your domestic machine right on there and has these clamps that slide back and forth. These clamps allow you up to 11 and a half inches of space. However, if your machine is larger than that, some embroidery machines, some larger machines, they're just a little bit wider, you can take the clips off and then you have 12 inches of space so that you're not limited to only that 11 and a half inches. Exactly. And, and you know, talking with our customers, and there's so many different sewing machines out there, hundreds, Thousands. Yeah, I, I've lost count. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How many have been made? The other thing I wanted to show was these handles right here. So you can unscrew them and then they adjust to the direction that feels most comfortable for you. So if you're the person who likes to sew and likes them pointing down, all the way up, straight across, you can adjust it for however you feel necessary. You can also telescope the handles so you can pull them out a little bit further if you wanted to do that. Yeah, you can well. see these are the bars that come with the handles so they can come up all the way so that if you want to stand out back a little bit farther you can do that. Also you can put them into the back here. There's holes here and you think well, why are there holes on the back? You can remove the handles from the front, put them on the back and then on the side Two's here up. there's these holes and you can put a laser so that you can do pantograph work from the rear as well. So you're not only limited to free motion work with the cutie. Exactly. And, and I think that's, uh, a, you know, really what the cutie uh, is all about. It, it's opening new opportunities uh, for everyday quilters, whether you're beginning, whether you're experienced, what have you. They, there are so many possibilities with the cutie. Yeah, you're, it's not limiting your quilting just because you have a small space. Exactly. So the other thing that comes with the cutie is you can see these clips. Now these clips have a special um, ridges on it. The rails on the cutie are square and so you can have additional, um, this is your ratchet system. So you can see here it's got these little edges. So when you put it on and clip it down, then when you're adjusting it, it um, that's what your ratchet system is not to make your fabric super tight right because you don't want it too tight right, right? you you want uh, a little bit of bounce you want to really want to be able to bounce a quarter off the fabric well and just a little bit looser than that depending on your looser, yeah right? depending on your domestic machine some machines if it's too tight then they get a little bit too um, overwhelmed i think is the problem so when you're going along and you're thinking, okay, well, what do I do here? So we can see on this machine, we've got the um, fabric is rolled up. So you can see these clips come on the front and the back for your quilt. Now, Melinda, I know one of your favorite things is the size of quilts and projects you can do on the cutie. Yes, so we're definitely not limited by just a small quilt. So yes, we can do a small quilt, uh, anything as small uh, as like a table runner or crib size, but even all the way up to a king or larger. On this little frame. Yeah. It, it, it's it's so versatile, right? Yeah. So you're not stuck with all the, oh, I have a small space, so I can only do small projects. Right. One thing I love about it, too, is people will say, well, how do you do that? You can't roll it up on the rails. You're not going all the way around. So you're doing what's called zone quilting. So you're going to do it in each section, so you're going to quilt in that zone what's available. Now you are limited um, for your throat space, even though the cutie can do up to 19 inches of throat space. So that fits our cutie 19X Elite, it fits other machines up to 19 inches that can sit flat on here, or the cutie that will sit on just the bottom carriage. But you also have um, these rails here. So if you have a domestic that only has 7 inches of throat space, or nine, you're going to have five inches with that seven 
you just kind of estimate it's about two inches for this rail um, and the clips and everything, and so that's your limit. So unfortunately, if you have a four inch throw, a very, very tiny machine, you're only going to be able to quilt about two inches. So you can do a straight line, right, back and forth. But the difference with that, even if you have a smaller machine and you think, oh, is it worth it? Just think of the time that you're quilting and you're having to push that fabric through the throat of the machine and slide it around. Yes. And you're holding it on your shoulder. You got your leg up. It's all moving. I've heard all the stories. All the stories. You know, from shows, from talking to customers on the phone. And, and I honestly don't know if, if I would have the will or the drive <laughs> to push all this fabric through the throat of my machine. I. I would probably have a few choice words and <laughs> exactly, put the right. project back in the closet and, and think, oh, I'll, get, I'll, I'll finish it. Yeah. I'll finish it. Well, and I think that's why a lot of people have those unfinished quilt tops, those UFOs. So really quick, I just want to know from everybody, how many UFOs do you have to try and get finished right now? Just, just put the number in. How many are there so we can see in the comments, are you finishing? Five? Quilt tops, right? I know I've had ones handed down from my um, grandmother and mother. So it's it's all over the place of how many quilt tops you've got going on. And, and you, you know those numbers, they're coming in uh, in uh, the viewer comments. Uh, and you know I would say I've been fortunate enough in, in my short but brief quilting journey. I finished the projects that I started, and, and I feel like nobody ever does that. Yeah, yeah, it's true. So, Trisha had a, a, a comment here really quick. Excuse me, ladies. I just want to interrupt you for a quick second. We had a wonderful viewer that just pointed out that we're having a, a little bit of an audio issue. So we're going okay. to go on just a brief break, 30 seconds to a minute, and we will be right back on. We're going to show a short video in the meantime. I'm always down for making my life easier. And when it comes to gathering fabric, this foot does just that. Let me show you how it works. Hey everyone, Trisha here with Sewing Parts Online. So let's talk about the gathering foot. This foot will beautifully and easily gather your fabric for you. Depending on the style of foot that you get, it can do a single layer or it can do a double layer. I grabbed a couple of different styles of gathering feet. As you can see, this one is a snap-on, whereas this other one is a low shank screw-on. Depending on your machine, the style and size can drastically change. But as with many presser feet, the style may vary, but it accomplishes the same thing. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. That way you'll get notified of any future videos that we have. First, let's talk about installation. This particular snap-on foot installs slightly different from other snap-on feet. It's not hard, but it's good to know that it won't snap on just like you're used to. See on the zigzag foot, there's only one bar, whereas on the gathering foot, it has two bars. To attach it, go ahead and push up the presser foot lifter and hold it to the highest position. Hang the rear pin of the foot on the spur of the presser foot holder. Slowly lower the presser foot lifter until the foot snaps in. Keep in mind this applies to this particular snap-on. Some of them are just as easy as popping on your zigzag foot. For the low shank screw on option, that will likely be a familiar process, but you would just unscrew the shank, remove and screw on the presser foot. Now that the foot's installed, slowly rotate the hand wheel counterclockwise towards you, just double checking that the needle will not hit the foot. This works best on lightweight fabrics. For medium weight fabrics, a ruffler is recommended. I'll include a link to the video at the end of this video so you can take a peek at the ruffler. Now you just need to adjust your stitch length. This is going to vary depending on how much gather you are wanting. The way that you increase your stitch length is going to vary depending on the machine. With this little mechanical machine, I just selected the number 10 since it's a straight stitch with a longer stitch option than these other options. Check your manual to see how to make an adjustment to your stitch length on your machine. Next, you also need to increase your tension. Longer stitches and increased thread tension will result in the fullest amount of gathers. I suggest testing on scraps prior to working on your actual project. There are also different types of gathering feet. See how this one has a slot? This allows you to gather the bottom fabric while leaving the top fabric flat. One easy step. Not every gathering foot has a slot. I'll show you how it works, but first let's do a single layer. Since you've made all the adjustments, you are able to just begin to sew. 
if you need to adjust your gathers, you can do so by simply pulling the needle thread. Then you can manipulate the gathers as you'd like. How do you plan on using this gathering foot? Please comment below. Now let's do the double layer. It can be a little tricky at first because you need to keep your bottom layer straight and keep the top layer all the way in the groove. It takes a little bit of practice, but keep at it. It's totally worth it. I hope this helps you gather your fabric with ease. Please make sure that you go over and check out our other gathering foot video. We also have some cool ideas like using elastic thread. Until next time, happy sewing everybody. I think we have everything fixed now. Thank you for pointing that out. I'm going to let you guys take it over again. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> so, so now we've, we just want to recap for those who couldn't hear. We're talking about the cutie fabric frame. And we like to call it a cutie fabric accessory because in some ways, even if you have a long arm machine with a very large frame, you can have this cutie use it in ways that you never thought of. We've had people who tell us they take it to their guild meetings or they go um, to retreats. They go and, to the cabin. Exactly. <laughs> fifth wheeling. I, I had a person said, well, I'm taking this um, while we go fifth wheeling. My husband's going to go out on the four by four and I'm going to quilt in nature. And I love that. I thought that was so great. So we're talking about the cutie frame, which is a two foot by four foot base. So that's all the space that you need on the, the table that you have. It's able to fit any size machine that can drop the feed dogs and has a throat space up to 19 inches and a base of 11 and a half inches or smaller if you're using the sewing machine clamps that hold it in place. But if you have a larger machine um, that's, you know, sometimes some of those embroidery machines have 12 inches at the back, you can take the clamps off and put the 12 inches there easily and have space for it. And even if it hangs off a little bit, don't worry. Exactly, exactly. And some people will think, well, don't the machine, the clamps hold the machine in place? Uh, and in a sense, yes, they do. But in all reality, I mean, machines are heavy. Yes. They, once, <laughs> once you get the machine on there, it, it's gonna take a lot to get that machine, you know, without physically lifting it up it would will we'll definitely take a lot to get that machine to come off yeah so people have asked okay once i get my cutie together what tools do i need to get started what things do i have to do with the machine or the frame to get everything going and the nice thing is once you put it all together it comes with all those tools um, the screws everything that you need to assemble it and and both of us have assembled it at different times mm -hmm. it's there's great instructions that show you how to do things. We have a video on YouTube with our head engineer who is putting it together so you can follow along, pause it as you go. But once you have it assemblers, there's no other tools you need other than your hands, right? So you can see here that we have got these clips on the side and on the base and then for opening the, the um, rail in the back. This is the take up rail. This is where your fabric is going to go at the end. Each time you're um, getting ready, you're rolling that fabric up here on the top, not around the rail. So that allows you, like we were saying earlier, you can do any size project. You can do the king size, you can do queen size full, you can do small wall hangings, whatever project you need, the QD frame will help you get there. Exactly, exactly. So Jenna, um, we talked about the different throat sizes of machines. Uh, and so I know this rail, uh, it also ex extends mm -hmm. out uh, and it comes in as well. Let's just show how easy uh, just it is. sliding that along. Yep, just slide it out. And you can see there's measurements along here. So you can make sure that you're correct on each side, your numbers. So if you're saying, okay, I'm, I'm gonna put it at five, I can slide it in. Melinda can match me on the other side. And then it's just pushing my clip down and I'm ready to go. Exactly. Easy peasy. Let's get a machine on, Jana. All right. Oh. So first we're going to take this take up rail off because that way we're not trying to get the needle around this rail. So again, we're just going to slide this off and then lift it up. And I'll hold this while Perfect. you grab that machine. So today we just have our everyday at home domestic machine. Uh, and I would say this machine 
It's probably what about maybe a seven inch throat? Seven or eight, yeah, yeah. And so. it's it's a great machine. It drops the feed dogs so that as you're quilting, you're not having that additional um, grabbing of the fabric underneath. So that's an important thing. We've had people mm -hmm. ask us like, well, can I use my machine because it has a good throat space, but it, the three feed dogs aren't able to drop. Um, and then you just make sure that you have a quilting foot on there so that you can um, do that direction. So I'm just gonna slide this rail in there and we're gonna put it on. And now we're ready to go to get our fabric. We can sandwich that fabric. So you're gonna have your um, sandwich put together previously and then put it on. So you can see that it's really easy to get started with the QD. There's not a loads of things and, and dials and measurements that you're gonna to have to worry about, right? Exactly. And, and again, you know, just going back to a little bit of what we've talked about before, the ease uh, and simplicity of the cutie with your, whether it's a domestic machine, whether it's a long arm or mid arm quilting machine, just the simplicity, uh, the ease of getting your project started it is really what appeals to so many different people. Yeah, and so uh, we've had some questions where people have asked in the past, like, what do I do if I do want to put it on my sewing machine table or my cutting table, and then I need to cut? How do I get it off? So the easy thing about it is let's, let's take the machine off now so we can show how easy it is to disassemble. We're going to pull that machine off. And again, the carriage just slides to the side so you can lift it easily. I'm just going to put this back on while well, Melinda puts that on the floor so that we're set. Now we can take this and um, take the carriages off. I've had people who put it on bicycle hooks in the garage. Mm -hmm. Other people put it up above their sewing table so that it's just easily accessible. But the other thing you can do is we're going to take these clamps here is you can put it down to nine inches. So you can see here, it's just nine inches high now. We put these clamps back on so it's not gonna fall off. And you can slide it under a bed. You can also turn it on its side. I'm gonna pull these uh, carriages off to show that they both come off easily. And I'm gonna set this down to the side. And then the bottom carriage comes off. And then we can take this frame and pick it up. Now you can store it on one side, so let's show them that. If we'll just put it, you can see it's not very thick. You can slide it behind a sofa. You can slide it in the back of your closet. It's anywhere. 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 It's really, it's easily um, portable, storable, yeah. relocatable. It fits in the back seat of my car so I can take it wherever I need to. Now again, the bottom of the carrot or the base is only two foot by four foot. That's the size of this table that we have here. It's two foot, you can see it's on the side and it's slightly hanging over the front here, but that doesn't matter. What matters is these two uh, rails. braces, rails, mm -hmm. they are set on the, on the frame. That's all you need to be sitting on the table. And then this excess part just can come hang over. So from front to back, you can go up to 38 inches depending on the throat space, right? Like Melinda and I showed here, you can adjust it out. So if you're adjusting out all the way, you're getting about 38 inches of space. Mm -hmm. So you can plan, okay, I'm walking around. So that tells you where you're gonna go with that. So I'm gonna pull it back to five again. And again, when you're ready to set up, you get your bottom carriage. Now you can see on the carriage here, there are uh, these ball bearing wheels. There's two wheels on there and they're set so that it gives that more professional feel with two wheels at a time instead of a single wheel. You know, I've uh, worked on a single wheel uh, track system uh, and it's great. Uh, it's fine and dandy. And, and I always, you know, considered or thought I wouldn't notice or I don't need a dual track. But I'm telling you, once you uh, use the, a dual track system, you really don't want to go back to that single wheel system. Yeah, and, and as you can see, the sewing machine clamps come off easily. So again, if you've got that machine that's more than 11 and a half inches, it's 12 inches, or maybe just a little bit more, then you've got that ability to take the clamps off and put it on the carriage just as you need. 
Now, people have asked me, how much quilting space do you really get? Right, we talked about zone quilting. Sure, your throat space might be eight inches, but what are you gonna get side to side? So as you can see, as it comes to the edge here, if your sewing machine is in the middle, it's only gonna quilt to where your needle is. So there is some inches here, and if we slide it over to Melinda's side, the inches on that side, so you get about 31 inches side to side. So then in your head, you can say, all right, I've got six inches of quilt space, front to back, and 31 side to side. So that helps you decide, what is my quilt gonna look like? What design can I do? If I'm doing a pantograph, what height do I have? All those kinds of things. Yes, and, and you know, again, just emphasizing, you can quilt any size quilt, small, uh, table runner, crib size, up to a king or larger, it, you know, just depending on your project, do take into consideration, you know, those certain factors, it, you know, so the size of your machine, how your pos machine is positioned on the carriage, uh, and then in a sense, what kind of designs do you wanna do? You know, free motion, uh, you know, giving you a whole range of motion, or uh, are you, doing just straight lines, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, what type of design are, are you wanting to complete? Yeah, now several people have asked before, how do I do this with my foot pedal? Well, uh, the, with the cutie machine or frame, the one thing that we don't show here is there are six different cords that are extension cords for your foot pedal. Now they're the most common brands of sewing machines. So they don't do every machine, but they do most of them. Yes. So you can extend your foot pedal. So as you're quilting, you can use your foot pedal to, to do the um, sewing machine. However, you can also get a sure stitch regulator, which allows your stitches to be even and precise as you're going along. Yes. Or you can get a speed control that just replaces your foot pedal it's a start and stop button. Now we have a list of all those um, machines that are compatible with our sure stitch and our stitch regulator. They are on uh, Sewing Parts Online website, so you can go there and check them all out. Yes, yes. And, and you know, I think uh, being able to quilt with my domestic machine at home, that is a game changer for what I can do and not have to send off to somebody to have finished. Mm -hmm. uh, but knowing my machine at, and it's in a sense limitations it, you know I, I always think it's a good idea to look at those options just as Jana mentioned it, you know a sure stitch or speed control just to help make your projects go a little bit easier yeah and so then on top of all that um, when you're working on this and you think oh I am ready for the next level right I'm ready for that whole quilt block, I wanna make it bigger than what we've got going on. How do I get to that next step, right? And so the next thing then is to get a mid-arm that fits on there. And so you think, a mid-arm really fits, right? Does yes. it have that, you know, does it have that space? And so even though the throat space will work, people have said like, is it gonna tip my QD forward? Is it really gonna be secure here in the back? And, and the biggest question, do I have space for a mid-arm? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we saw, let me put this machine We're gonna put the machine back, back on. on. Mm -hmm. Just wanna compare. So if we move this machine, oh, we do need to go up a little on our oh, yes. side rails. What level do you have it? Now these side rails also have measurements. They're alphabetical, so you want to have about a finger's uh, measurement about your finger behind the take up rail um, to the the Still rail in the a front. Bit higher. So I am on G. What are G. you on? G. Okay, I'll bring it to G. As you can see, they're really easy to move up and down or accidentally hit and bring it too far down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if we slide this machine a little bit closer to our 15 Pro uh, and just kind of do a, a little comparison, can we get both machines in the same shot? 
Okay, perfect. So in all reality, they're taking up very similar amounts of space. So even if you thought, oh, I, I just, I don't have the space for it, it you know, there, it's not that much of a difference going to the 15 Pro. Right, we have it on the same table. We have it on just this, uh, this lifetime table that actually folds in half, so it's easy to put someplace else. The machine is just forward more. You can see our throat space on the domestic was limited. And so as we bring the 15 forward, we just get that much more throat space. So your quilt blocks, your quilt design, everything now can go that much bigger. Yes. So you're in a sense, you know, reinventing the wheel uh, for what you're capable of doing when you're jumping from your domestic machine to the mid-arm uh, and long-arm machines. So let's take a step over uh, yeah. and take a closer look. So we're gonna come over here and show our 15 Pro and on the Cutie and see what it looks like while we're quilting on it. So the 15 Pro, just so that everybody's like, okay, I know my domestic, what does the 15 Pro do, right? So the 15 Pro is set up, of course, with 15 inches of throat space. That's from the needle to the back of the machine. And then we have four stitch modes. It has precise, which means, which we'll show you how to sew here in a moment. It will quilt when, we're, when you move the machine. Then we have cruise, which is kind of like your cruise when you're driving your car. Yes. It's going whether you put your foot on the gas at all. So it's gonna cruise. That is great. The precise is great for just basic quilting. The cruise is perfect for when you're trying to um, fill in a small section because the mm -hmm. machine's not going to start and stop. It's also great for when you're trying to follow along something like feathering or stitch in the ditch so that you're perfectly, you know, like measuring it, you're not starting and stopping as you're going slower. Yes. And then the other two modes, based, because every machine has to have a great basting stitch, right? You can baste this in a long, medium, or short level stitch and then manual. Now, recently we were talking about this, why our machines have manual mode as well. You, you know, Jenna, there's so many people that love their everyday domestic machines. Uh, they know their machines, they love their machines, they, they can pretty much do anything with their machines. Uh, and those machines, they are a manual stitch mode. Yeah, and the best thing about manual is that when you're doing that stitch mode, um, it doesn't have that limitation. Now, in the regulated stitches, right, that gives you that even stitch modes, it's gonna be the same length whether you're moving fast or slow, the machine has up to 2,000 stitches per minute, which I've never stitched faster than that, but there are some people who've been quilting for a long time and they are just gonna put the pedal to the metal and go crazy, right? Exactly. So the manual works great for them because it no longer has that stitch regulation and they have that easy, perfectly practiced movement. And so they're, they're going the direction that they need to go. Yes, so uh, let's take a closer look uh, at our touch screen. Uh, so again, as Jenna mentioned, uh, we have the different stitch modes, uh, cruise, precise, based, and manual. Uh, and so we're going to go to precise first. Yep. So we're on precise. Uh, and here we can also set our stitch length. Uh, and there's a bit of a glare. I hope everybody can see that. Okay. <laughs> if not, you can go to Sewing Parts Online's website and see what the screen looks like close up. Yeah. Yes. So again, we can set our stitches per inch. Uh, we can go through the different stitch modes. But again, as Jenna mentioned, we're gonna go ahead and start on the precise. So, so we've got our quilt sandwich on the frame here. As you can see, we've been quilting a little bit, so we have that extra roll at the front. Now, if we had our domestic machine, we would take the fabric here and roll it up over the, the section so that it was um, so we out of the access. way of the handles, yep. yes. But with the Cunique 15 on the machine, the 15 Pro, we have the handles up here. So we don't need to bring the fabric up and roll it against here. So we can leave it floating. But again, we've got our rails on, our ratchet rails. So we've brought it, you can see it's a nice even um, tension, but it's not too tight. We're not, you know, in the military, but we're, we're getting it so that we can easily sew. Yes. All right, so let's go ahead and pull our bobbin. 
Now, the handles have six buttons, and they're reversible. So if you like the bring up your bobbin um, button on the left or the right, you can do that. And then if you have um, uh, the start, stop, the larger button, and then the smaller buttons are kind of like um, your scrolling buttons. They're going up and down, so you can choose which uh, stitch length, which mode, all those kinds of things. So you can see as Melinda's moving it, it's just quilting as she moves it. And it's so easy. It really just glides uh, over the fabric. Uh, you know, it doesn't feel heavy. Uh, it has a great fluid motion. Yeah, you can see Melinda's not gripping those handles. There's no need. I, I know I talked to someone, she had arthritis really bad in her hand. And she says, well, I can't quilt because I just can't hold a fist anymore in my hand. And the nice thing about this is because of the, we showed you the ball bearing wheels, it's so easy to glide back and forth. You can literally just move it with your hand. You don't have to grip it or, or do any of those things that would cause you pain in any way. Right, so I would say uh, the shipping weight out on the machine, it's roughly about 60 pounds. So the machine itself, a few pounds less than that. So what would you say, maybe? 50, 50 yeah. 55 pounds. So, so if you might need some help getting it onto the machine, or on the, the machine onto the frame. But the nice thing about it is once it's up there, you're set. Now, with the 15 Pro, you might say, well, I, I got the cutie because I wanted it as a non-dedicated space. Can I move the 15? Absolutely. You can take the 15 off, store it as well as you can store the cutie so that you're not stuck having um, only this on your sewing table and you can't ever cut anything or, or try and piece anything. So next we're gonna to go to the cruise mode so you can see that. All right. Perfect, so again, we're on our cruise. Uh, we're at uh, a nine stitches per inch. So we'll go ahead and give that a go. So you can see the same even stitches, the same speed but if melinda stops moving the machine it's going to continue to go so as, as she's doing those small sections it's not going to start and stop it's going to give her even stitches as she moves along and again the machine just glides effortless effortlessly even though it's you know that 50 55 pounds you don't feel it uh, as jenna was saying with, with the uh, dual track system or, or the dual wheel system, you really just don't feel it. It moves and glides so easily. Yeah, and the other great thing about the 15 is it's really easy to maintain. So a lot of people I know will take their machine once a year in, you have to have it surfaced and cleaned and everything like that. The 15 is a very easy machine to take care of. There's only two spots that you're going to oil and maintain is one is right behind the display here and you can see there's a knob on the display the great thing about the knob is you can adjust that for the height that you are so you can view your um, display where it's comfortable for you the second place to view to put the oil is down in the bobbin casing on the bobbin hook again the instructions are really great they show you exactly where to oil and how often like how many bobbin changes how many stitches so you're easily um, taking care of that you don't have to take it in. So when you're thinking like, oh, I have a 50 pound machine, do I have to take it in to get serviced every year? And no, if you're maintaining it, it's really easy to never have to take it in. Yes, yes. Now you brought up uh, a great point uh, in every few quilts or so to go ahead and oil the bobbin. Let's just show how easy it is to access that bobbin. So we'll go ahead and trim our thread, cut our thread. Uh, and we'll move the machine just all the way over. Uh, and we know our bobbin, it's going to be right below uh, where the needle comes down. Uh, and we can see the hook just right up front. There's nothing uh, that's preventing us uh, from being able to get into uh, being able to oil uh, the bobbin hook assembly. Keep in mind, if you have a larger quilt uh, that is on the frame. You may just need uh, to unhook the fabric uh, and just to expose this corner. 
really on either side of the frame uh, to go ahead and get in there. And this would be the same uh, if you are changing your bobbin, uh, you know, just very easy uh, to access uh, and get those done. Yeah, now people have asked, what kind of bobbin do we use? And it's an M class, so that's M for mom, so or Melinda. Yes. Uh, it's, it's a larger size, so you're gonna be able to quilt longer with that M class bobbin. That's what fits in that bobbin casing. And also people have asked, what kind of needles do we use? Now, with the machine, you get three bobbins and you get a package of 10 needles. So those are either size 16 or 18. Um, there are MR needles, which stands for multi-range. So that's a, a needle that helps bring up that bobbin thread a lot easier so you're not finding um, misses on, on that thing. Now, when we're talking about thread, you can see on our uh, machine here, we have the finesse thread. It's, our, uh, it's from oh, Wonderfill is the company that we got it from and we helped create it with them. Our finesse mm -hmm. thread is a 1500 yard middle cone. So people will say like, well, why did you guys go with a smaller cone as opposed to the giant ones you can get? Aren't you quilting all the time? And it's true, you are quilting all the time, but this size is perfect to do a king size quilt with bobbins and then you can get another color instead yes. of okay, now I have a giant spool of red thread. What can I quilt? Now I have to do all my quilts in that red thread. Or you run out. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've done so many quilts, you run out in the middle of the quilt and then you can't find that same color again. Right, and so with the, the we have about 60 different colors. They're solid and variegated and you're all set to do your quilting with the finesse thread. And with a machine, you get two spools of thread to get you started, right? Um, then you can test it. Now, when people talk about their mid-arm versus, or a, a quilting machine versus a domestic and thread, they always talk about tension. I put my machine on, I started with my thread, and the tension's off. And so yes. they always have all these questions. Well, we have a lot of great um, things to help you with your tension. On our site, under support videos, we have a couple of how-to videos to assess why your tension is off. And that's the thing about a mid-arm. You set the tension differently than a domestic. A domestic machine, you know, your Janome, your Juki, your brother, whatever, Singer, you know, mm -hmm. it's more set of, oh, it'll help adjust for that thread. Right. But with the mid-arm, you adjust it. And there's two places that people always get kind of hung up on. And the first is here in this section. There's two discs and you have to make sure that you're flossing them all the way through. Sometimes they'll bring it around, but they're not gonna floss it all the way. Same thing, this is the next spot that people will have issues with tension. Again, it's those discs. You have to make sure you're going right all the way through. I kind of talk like it's the difference of putting your thread here as opposed to putting it all the way back. So you wanna get all the way between those two discs and then go from there. And again, try out your tension. Have a test fabric. Um, I know when I was talking to one of our um, quilters and she, when she's, she has the same test fabric, you know, that it's similar to what she's gonna be quilting, but when she gets all filled up of all her tests, she donates to the Humane Society. Yes, yes, and, and you know, it's a great sentiment uh, because our test projects, we're not gonna use those for anything. They're never good enough to, you know, <laughs> give to anybody, uh, but the shelter animals, they, you know, they just, that little bit of extra warmth, that's a great sentiment uh, for her to do that. Yeah. I, I love that. The other thing people always ask us about, we've got the cutie frame, we've got the mid arm, and even the domestic on the, on the cutie frame, they'll ask, well, I'm not great at free motion. Is there other things that you can do? And so we mentioned earlier, you can get a laser. It's the Gracie laser that attaches to the side of the domestic carriage there. But if you have the Cunique 15 Pro, you can get a sewing machine laser that again will help you do pantograph work. So for me, I know I'll get started at the first of my quilt and I roll it up enough and then I think I've stepped away, I'm trying to do something else. And I come back and it's like, what was the design I was doing? And that, <laughs> those pantographs sometimes save me of like, okay, this is the design. I don't have to remember, was it a popcorn? Was it a swirl? Where, or was it a swirl and then a popcorn? You know, so I've got it all set. So sometimes pantographs, that's the way I use them is to help me get on track of what my quilt is supposed to look like from exactly. beginning to end. 
Yes, so, uh, and we have lots of different options. So we have, uh, as Jenna mentioned, we have our machine laser, uh, which will attach onto the carriage. Uh, and then whatever solid flat surface you have underneath the machine, that's where you're, uh, in a sense, putting your designs, laying those designs down. Uh, we have our plastic pattern perfect set, uh, which are tiles uh, that will sit uh, on your solid flat surface. Uh, and there's a stencil that will attach onto the carriage as well. And you're just following those grooves with the stencil. Uh, it's really a, a foolproof way uh, of quilting. And the best part uh, it is uh, you're learning, uh, just getting that muscle memory from even just going through the motions. Even though you're just following that stylus path, you're still getting that muscle memory. Yeah, one of our educators here, she's our head educator, Carla Jerome, she is always doodling. And I love it because her, that memory, like Melinda was saying, that muscle memory of drawing, that comes here. You wouldn't think so because it's, it's just pen and paper, but that's what this is. It's just like you have a giant piece of paper and you're drawing with, with your machine mm -hmm. now instead of with a pen. Yes. One thing people do ask is now that we've done free motion and pantograph, is there a next step, right? Like I'm on my quilting journey. I got the cutie with my domestic. I upgraded to the 15 Pro. I'm doing my pantograph work. Where do I go from here? And next you can do automation with it. Yes. So I love that all of our machines and all of our frames are compatible with our automation. So whether it's our 15 Pro on the cutie, the automation is going to work. Right, and so people might say, well, can I do automation with my domestic? And absolutely, we have a number of machines that are compatible with our QCT5 software. And you can look either on Sewing Parts Online website, or you can also look on our website to see the list of machines that are compatible. Now, with the automation, you do not get um, a screen. It doesn't work off the screen. So you have to bring in your own tablet. Uh, and it would be a Windows-based tablet uh, in our classroom and when we go to shows, all of our tablets, they're... Um, Microsoft Surface Pro yes, is the one Surface we use. Pro. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I could see that you, <laughs> you saw that it. I was like, what is it called? <laughs> yeah. So, But that's, that's just one of the many tablets. Now you can't use an Apple device, so no iPads. Or no Android I, it's, tablet. It's just those tablets and you can find all the requirements on Sewing Parts Online or on our website to see what kind of tablet you need, what kind of memory, all those kinds of things to do automation. Yes. Now we've talked about the lasers and that's an accessory you can put with a cutie frame, but there's also other things. So the 15 Pro here, we put our micro stippling foot on to show a little bit different. So you can get different feet, hopping feet for the the machine, but you can also get other things for the uh, um, cutie frame. What are some other of your favorite accessories, Melinda? I love the channel locks. Uh, for the life of me, I cannot sew a straight line, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, with, uh, with our Cunique machines. Uh, and the channel locks make that very easy to be able to do that, whether I'm doing my straight line straight across the fabric or uh, you know, directly in front of me uh, as I'm quilting, those channel locks really make it super easy. Uh, I would say my next favorite accessory, if we're talking about just the frame, mm -hmm. would be the bungee clamps. Oh, so yeah. those will help uh, give a, a little bit uh, greater tension uh, in the fabric. Uh, by, they attach on the side of the frame. Uh, and then the clamp will clamp onto the fabric, just giving it just that little bit of extra tautness without making it too tight uh, to be able to sew on. Especially as, as you can see on our frame here, we've got it onto the side with our clip, but on that side, it's just open. And we did that so you could view the bobbin case area really easily, but we also wanted to make sure that you could see that section really well. Yes. So. Any fun accessories yeah. that you love? I love the cloth leader. So I'm a, I'm a big proponent of cloth leader. So the cloth leader you would need with the cutie frame, and that just allows you to not have such a large backing, is you can use the hoop leader cloth. So it would be the same if you were doing a Q-Zone hoop frame. It has two side pieces, so they attach here on the side, and then you can 
um, a pin your fabric on. There's a corded piece up here at the, stop that the top that helps you start rolling your fabric. And then there's a front piece. So when you get to that section, you can get to the edge. And all it does is allow you to quilt right to the edge of your quilt without having to have extra minutes. Yes, and you know, I love being able to do edge to edge quilting um, when I use the cloth leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, that way I don't feel like I'm wasting fabric because I, I don't have the reach otherwise. Now, one thing we did talk, we haven't talked about with the Gracie um, laser and the sewing machine laser, if you're gonna be doing um, work from the back, so you're having your laser on this side and you've got your pantographs with the machine, with the domestic, you're just gonna pull those handles out from the front and put them in the back. But with the Cunique, you'd need to get rear handles. And so they just come on this side and then you're working from the back, sewing from this front section. So you can put your pantograph down here and you're watching the laser on it and viewing it so that you're not trying to look up above, right? Like trying to like, how am I doing? And then the carriage covers at the top and then you don't have any way to see that. Yeah. So it, again, the 15 Pro, it's a phenomenal machine, 2000 stitches per minute, uh, it, you know, full color touch screen display, uh, four stitch modes. Uh, really, what else could you want, uh, it, you know, with a mid-arm machine? One of my favorite things too about the 15 Pro is that these handles are attached when you get it. So when you're taking it right out of the box, you don't have to worry about how do I get these attached? Am I hooking them up correctly? They're also great to help you hold it. And so as you're lifting it, they're another thing to hold on to rather than just the machine itself. And I always love that the, we have the needle up, needle down on the buttons. It's got all those things that maybe I would try and reach to the back to turn my knob in a domestic machine, but I'm vertically challenged and can't reach that far. So rather than having to walk around, turn my knob and then come back, I can just do that on the buttons there. Yes, yes. And, and a great thing also about the buttons is you can switch the controls from side to side. So again, on this side, we have our start stop, our needle up down. Uh, this uh, side, we can go through the different settings uh, on uh, the touch screen display. We can select our stitches per uh, inch we can re flip flop what side uh, of the handlebars we would have those options. Now, one thing we haven't mentioned is about the warranty of the machine. Now you yes. get a one year warranty on the cutie frame, a one year on the electric for the machine, two year on the manufacturer parts, and then five year on the outer body casing. So the one thing that we love about partnering partnering with Sewing Parts Online is their amazing customer service, right? Yes. That's one thing that we pride ourselves on. And so we always want to have great customer service and we love it when our dealers also have amazing customer service. So anytime you're having an issue, call Sewing Parts Online. You can also call our technical support team. We can help you figure out what's going on to the machine if there's anything that ever happens. Yes. And, and you know, time and time again, whether uh, it's on the phone uh, with our customers who call in or even at shows. The sentiment is always the Grace Company takes care of its customers. Uh, so whether uh, you're a customer of Sewing Parts Online or you know anywhere else, you're always going to be taken care of. Yeah, so to recap, let's talk about all the things we've talked about in you know the five little minutes we have left where everybody joined late, right? Yes. So we're talking about the cutie fabric frame, which is a tabletop frame that can sit on any flat surface. That's a coffee table, right? I have one quilter I was talking to. She's like, well, I love to put on my soaps and quilts while I'm watching. Now I can't watch TV and quilt, but no. she loved it. So you can put that anywhere. So anywhere that you can fit a two foot by four foot, it's gonna sit there, right? And you can use your domestic machine as long as you can drop the feed dogs and it has a throat space of about seven to 19 inches. Yes. If you go lower than seven, you're gonna lose two inches of space and we don't want you to get frustrated because you're just doing one line back and forth and then having to move the fabric. Yes, yes. All right, so Jana, uh, I, I know Sewing Parts Online uh, has some wonderful prices uh, and you know some great things up their sleeves this week uh, for uh, their So Creative uh, event. Uh, Trisha, uh, do you have any particular questions uh, about the Cutie uh, with the Domestic or Cutie with the 15 Pro?
Oh, we lost. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, it looks like we have some wonderful questions from our guests here. Um, one was Janet Pest asked, how much does the 15 Pro weigh? Do you know that offhand? Yeah, so shipping, it's about 60 pounds. And then out of that shipping box, it's about 48, 50 pounds so that you're prepared of having someone help you if you can't lift that all by yourself. And awesome. then the cutie shipping is 39 pounds, but once you get it out and all put together, it's about 25 pounds. But I always like to take, not lift it with the carriages so that you can have that ability to be a little bit lighter, right? Yeah. Take the top that carriage and the, off. The carriages, they, it'll slide around a little, mm -hmm. little bit on the track. So yep, so the frame itself, it, it's really surprisingly very light. Wonderful. Another question that we had is, what is the largest size quilt this frame can accommodate? <laughs> That's so, an easy one. Yes. Anything so, you can dream of, right? Yes. <laughs> so again, it, it's a hoop style frame uh, and you can quilt anything as small as like a table runner or a crib size all the way up to a king or larger. Uh, and again, you, that you can do that just by zoning, uh, quilting in your zones uh, and going ahead and hooping the fabric across the frame. Fabulous. Well, I was looking through the comments here and it looks like you guys explained everything so well that we didn't have a lot of questions. So we can move right into giveaways and great. Well, I think there was one question I missed and, and oh, it didn't pop up again. It was kind of at the beginning. So it was, can you do ruler work? Yeah. And so, yes, the answer is yes. So if you're using um, your uh, domestic machine, there is some companies that do a ruler base that you can get for your domestic machine. But if you're using the Cunique machine, then you can get a ruler base and then do your ruler work. Because you, you want a, a base for the rulers to sit on so they're not sagging underneath there at all. Yes. That is a wonderful question. Awesome. Well, we can go right into our giveaways and Grace has so generously donated a couple of awesome prizes. We've got the eight pack of finesse quilting thread. And then we also have the, the number two one is going to be the luminous five and a half foot adjustable LED light station. So thank you so much for donating those. And if you would like to be present while we pick our winner, that would be fantastic. Yeah, that'd we'll, be great. We'll be here. Yeah, we're excited. Wonderful. Well, let me go we ahead and get giveaways. our giveaway <laughs> tool pulled up. All right, is everybody ready? Let's do, I'm going to share this screen so you guys can all see the... Good luck, everybody, in winning. Yes. <laughs> Should we do a, a <laughs> drum roll? All right, let's see. We're going to pull <laughs> that up right here, and we'll be ready to draw. We've got 167 people Ooh. in right now. So let's click and see who our winner is of the number one, the eight pack of finesse quilting thread. Who's it gonna be? Rachel. Well, I think we need to go ahead and draw again. Rachel has been so kind. She um, is actually working with us here. So we're gonna go ahead and <laughs> repick that here. So we're not gonna do She's that. She's viewing, viewing for <laughs> Sorry, it, yeah. Rachel. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and pick that again. <laughs> if I can find my little mouse. There we go. Okay, let's try that again. New <laughs> drum roll. New drum roll. <laughs> She's going to be so sad. <laughs> All right, Patsy Vanderhoeven, congratulations. You win the Congratulations, Patsy. A nest thread. All right, and now we can do number two. We'll go ahead and do the luminous five and a half foot adjustable LED station. This is pretty cool. Yeah, and it actually extends out. Um, you can do the top parts that can get it up to six feet. So if you're putting on a domestic or a table that's six feet, Audrina, you can go up that far. Yes. Fabulous. Well, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, winner. If you guys want to hold on for just a second, I'll explain how you can claim your prize. All right, Jana and Melinda. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time and your demonstration, and we hope that you can join us again in the future. We'll be back. Thank you so much, Tricia. It was lots of fun. See you later, everybody. Thank you. 
Well, that is awesome. We have our two winners and to claim your prizes, if you simply go to our link in the description, it's gonna be our link tree. There'll be a little button that says claim your prize and it has a form to submit and we will get you your prize. Speaking of prizes, you guys do not want to miss out later on this afternoon. We are gonna be giving away one of these wonderful cutie frames. I mean, this is awesome. Now you know what it's doing. Um, what it does, we've got the legs with it as well. So we've got both the cutie frame, the legs. We're throwing in the TL2000QI as well. I mean, this is a, an amazing package. Also, Grace, um, Jana, and Melinda had mentioned the bungee clamps. Those are also going to be included in this bundle. So make sure that you stick around this afternoon and we will get that winner selected. So let's talk about some special pricing. Let me get our overlays pulled up. I want to show you all the goodies that we have available for the Grace machines. So let's talk first about the Cutie frame. We've got the Cutie tabletop frame with the uh, 15 Pro. Normally it retails for $6,199 and we have it on sale for $4,189. But that is not the special event pricing. We are not able to display that. You do have to call for that special pricing. That number is right on top of the screen. So you can give us a call. We are ready to help you secure that amazing special event pricing. The next one we have is if you're just needing the cutie frame or the cutie tabletop frame. That retails for $1,199.95 and it's on sale for $889. Again, it's already a great sale, but that is not the special event pricing. So go ahead and give us a call and we can help you out. Jana and Melinda had mentioned the software. We have the creative, the excuse me, tongue tied, Quilters Creative Touch 5 Beginnings. That is on sale for $4,499. And the Quilters Creative Touch 5 Pro is on sale for $6,499. Again, call for special pricing because those two are actually significantly discounted right now. So you do not want to miss out on those. If you have been in the market for these, believe me, you want to give our customer service a call because it's great pricing right now. So I think that's all the specials that we have right at this time, but you're welcome to check our website and go from there. All right, well, I think that wraps up our first segment. Up next, we are going to be doing a demonstration on the bloom, and that is going to be with me. So it's going to take just a moment to get all set up. If you wanna go grab yourself a cup of coffee, get your notebook so you can write down all your goodies, and we will be right back.
All right, everybody, we are back. We have the bloom set up. There's a lot here. <laughs> so we are gonna go over a brief demonstration here of the Baby Lock Bloom. This is brand new to the Baby Lock series. It is a wonderful combination sewing and embroidery machine. Ignore my little guy over here. We're going to use this camera to show you a close up of the machine and some of its features. All right, so a couple of things to note about the Bloom. If you're familiar with the Verve, this is like its big sister. It has a few more features, a little bit larger uh, hoops, and just overall, it has some nicer features. Um, one being that it has the Wi-Fi capability, which is huge. So let's go over, let's take a look at this particular view. Brian, do you mind switching over to show Let's get that, oh, oh, it said that it's not on, so let's take a peek. It'll just take me a second. Try again. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again, right? <laughs> All right, let's see if it'll pop up now. There we go. <laughs> all right. So if we just open up this machine, you can see all of the decorative stitches available. You have over 241 different stitches, both utility, decorative, and buttonhole. It also comes with the needle down and the automatic thread cutter. So this is a feature that I absolutely love. You don't really think about it until you use it and then you can't live without it. It's one of those things where you're sewing along, hit that button, snaps all your snaps, cuts your thread and everything is good to go. Um, we now have the easy push buttons. It used to say start stop, but now it has a play button on it instead. So you would be, you can see with the red that you cannot go and then it'll turn green and you can hit play on that. So up here on your threading system, it does appear a little bit different than the thread path that you may be used to on the baby locks, but it's very easy to use. It's numbered like it usually is. The other thing that's really lovely about these machines is you can use the needle down, needle up to put your needle in the correct position. So you don't have to worry about the needle threader not working. How many times have we done that where you have your needle and all of a sudden you use your needle threader and it doesn't work properly or it snaps and the little hook on your needle threader breaks. That will not happen if you position your needle threader using that button where you put it down, put it back up and you're good to go. So let's talk a little bit about the embroidery side of things. Let me pull up my note here. There are over 342 designs. Uh, so you have unlimited amount of creativity with that has 15 built-in fonts. It has floral, animal, festive patterns, all sorts of good stuff in there. The embroidable field is five by seven. So if you're familiar with the Verve, let me go ahead and set this down. Um, if you're familiar with the Verve, the embroidable field is four by four. So this five by seven is going to give you a larger area, making it um, so you don't have to re-hoop as frequently. One thing that is absolutely wonderful on this particular model is the jump it cuts jump stitches, excuse me. So on the back of your embroidery frame, you'll have your embroidery on the top and then on the back you have all the, you know, lovely mess. <laughs> but this machine cuts it as it goes to the next section. So you don't have to go back with your little scissors and cut those yourself. So that saves a lot of time. It also comes with, let's see here, I've got one ready for you. It comes with the five by seven hoop and the larger 12 by five hoop. It also comes with your placement grids as well. I have the little accessory table here for the sewing side of it. So it's full of the normal accessories and you can do a whole lot on there. Now with the sewing end, of it you are let's see here so with the sewing end of it one thing that you want to look at is the fact that it has the speed control this is really handy because if you're not very um, comfortable sewing at a fast speed 
you are able to put it down to a slower speed, but you're able to press down on your foot control as hard as you want. So you don't have to worry about if I push it too light, then it's gonna go um, not fast enough too much, it's gonna go too fast. So once you get a little more comfortable, you can bump it up to the middle, practice that way. And then when you're ready, you can do it all the way. So let's see what we have about this machine. So let's actually talk about some pricing. That's Good. Got this right here. So right now it is available for pre-order. Uh, it is a brand new machine, so we do have to get it in, but it retails for 5,000, excuse me, $3,599. And we have it on sale for $2,499. That is not the event pricing. So if you want to give us a call, we can go over the special pricing with you. That number right at the top is 888-824-1192. Does anybody have any questions regarding this machine? Let me take a look at some comments here. It definitely is a beautiful model. Let's see, I'm gonna peek at the questions. back up a little bit further <laughs> you guys are doing awesome on commenting and just a reminder to get in on the giveaway that is what you need to do is to comment so go ahead and continue to comment ask questions unfortunately it's hard for me to look at all the questions so we've got a team that's trying to answer them for you as well but i will do my best to look through here and find a couple that we can answer right now Awesome. Okay. Well, not seeing any questions regarding it yet. But I absolutely love a combination machine. As I mentioned, this is like the big sister to the Verve. The Verve is really nice as well. Um, however, that only has the four by four hoop. So with the Bloom, you're getting these larger hoops so you don't have to re-hoop your fabric as often. The other thing that's really awesome about having a combination machine is you can embroider a design and then construct your project. So actually, let me grab something really quick. Here's a little example. I've got this cute little drawstring gift bag. I'll show it right here, actually. You can have something embroidered on it, and then you're able to construct the bag using your machine. So you could just remove the embroidery unit, hook the accessory table back up. Oh, there we go. <laughs> hook the accessory table back up and then you can go back into sewing. The other thing that's really nice about this machine is it has a knee lift. So an optional knee lift is really cool. You don't always get this particular feature. That is put right here. You can see down here in the corner of the screen, it'll insert right here. And you're able to use your knee in order to lift your presser foot. So just think about this for a second. If you're in the sewing side and you're doing, say, free motion sewing, and you don't want to move your hands, you've got those on the side, you're moving your hands like you need to, but you don't want to lose your spot. So you can have this machine, have the needle program down when it stops, and then you can use your knee lift to lift up your presser foot and then you can reposition as needed and then release your knee and continue sewing without leaving losing your spot so that's a really really cool feature again um, i love on the sewing side of it the thread cutter honestly that's one of those features that once you have it it's really really hard to go back so let's go ahead and look at that Special pricing again, just in case you just came on. It is um, normally three thousand five. Excuse me, three thousand five hundred and ninety-nine, and the sale price currently is two thousand four hundred and ninety-nine. But that is not the So Creative Live special event pricing. Give our customer service a call, and they will be able to help you get this machine on order. You'll be one of the first to get the Baby Lock Bloom. 
Another thing I want to mention is we are going to be featuring another machine, another new baby lock machine, the Allegro, and that's going to be on day three, and that will be at 9 a.m. So you don't want to miss that. There are only three of those machines here in the U or in the USA, and somebody is driving it eight hours so we can show you. So that's a pretty awesome privilege that we'll be able to see that. So up next, we do have... Up next, we have Callista with Wonderfill, and she's going to be joining us to show us a lot of information on some fabulous thread. So we'll be right back. Hello, Callista. We are excited to have you on. Um, sorry, we went a little bit long there. So <laughs> we are totally ready to see some information on some awesome thread. So what Perfect. do we have today? Yeah, well, thank you for first of all so much for having me this morning. And hi, everyone. My name is Callista from Wonderfill. So today I'm going to be talking about how lightweight sewing threads are a game changer. And I think it's going to be pretty mind blowing to some people because a lot of people don't realize how much of a difference thread can really make to the end result of your project. And a lot of people are pretty much used to using just only like 40 or 50 weight thread, but they haven't thought too much about trying different weights and like what that could really do for your projects and things like that. So I'm excited to talk to everyone a little bit about that. Um, I got some comments that uh, people can't see me. So I just want to make sure that things are okay from your end and like that people can see because I'm about to kind of like yeah, show from my and everything looks good. Let me take me off the screen and just you and hopefully that'll be great. Let's take okay. a look. All right, so I just want to know in the comments if you guys can see me now. Okay, perfect. You guys can all see me. So for those of you guys that are just meeting me for the first time, hi, my name is Callista from Wonderfill. And if you guys have never heard of Wonderfill before, we're actually a thread company. And it's really fun to see where all of you guys are at um, in the States. But I'm here actually in Calgary, Alberta in Canada because uh, – Wonderful is a th Canadian thread company. So I just want to make sure everything is going on well, because I still see a lot of comments about that I'm fuzzy and like a little bit blurry. So I hope that kind of is going to be okay going forward. I do have a presentation. So um, hopefully you don't have to just like rely on looking at my screen and the presentation that I put on the screen will be clear. But Trisha, let me know if there's anything that I need to do differently from my end if it's not working properly. But uh, yeah, let me continue. So Wonderful is a Canadian thread company and we specialize in all different types of thread. So we have 36 types. You can see behind me, I have like a giant wall of thread. And we carry everything from 100 weight all the way to a number three pearl cotton. But what do all these different types of threads do? Like, do you really need all these different types of weights? So that's why I want to be here today to like tell you a little bit more about thread. And we're really passionate about thread education. So educating you guys on thread knowledge. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So like I mentioned, we have 100 weight all the way to a number three pearl cotton in rayon, cotton, metallic, holographic graphic, glow in the dark, reflective, wash away, iron fusible, wool, et cetera, et cetera. We really have so many different types of thread, obviously, because I only have uh, 30 minutes here. I can't go over every single type. So that's why today's topic, I'm going to focus on lightweight threads, because I think you guys are really going to feel or see what a difference lighter weight threads can do in your projects and how you can incorporate them into what you're doing. 
Okay, so um, seems like some of you guys may have heard my presentation before, so hopefully it doesn't sound too rep repetitive, but like I hope you're still excited to learn about some different types of thread knowledge. So the first thing that I always love to talk about is thread weight, because thread weight is super important on, uh, in terms of like understanding how thread works and understanding when you want to use different types of thread. So for those of you guys that have been sewing for a while, I'm sure you mostly have experienced using like a 40 or a 50 weight thread. So 40 and 50 weight thread, I usually call those utility weight threads because they can pretty much do everything you need it to do. But of course, there's a limit to what they can really achieve because you can't change the thickness of a 40 or 50 weight thread. So you're definitely going to see it sometimes. So what about lightweight threads and how do those compare to like what you're typically using right now? So let me show you um, a screen here. Let me know if you guys can see this. This is my PowerPoint presentation. Um, but what you'll see here is my scale of thread here. So you see everything from an eight weight all the way to a hundred weight. Sorry, let me try sharing again because now I have it on the presentation. Perfect. So what you should be able to see here is, are you able to see it guys? Perfect. Okay. So what you see here is everything from an eight weight to a hundred weight. So I just want to give you the perspective of like how thread weight works. So you can see the lighter the thread, the higher the number and the lower the thread, the smaller the number. So I know it feels like a little bit counterintuitive because the smaller number is it equals a thicker thread and the larger number equals a higher, uh, equals a finer thread. But to give you guys like an analogy to hopefully remember thread weight a little bit better is our Wonderfill sausage theory. So what is the Wonderfill sausage theory? So that is a way to remember thread weight. So if you just picture yourself um, hosting a barbecue and you guys have like a pound of meat at your barbecue there um, and you have 10 guests coming to your barbecue. So you're like, okay, got to make 10 sausages for these guests. So just picture how thick each sausage could be if you have a pound of meat and you only need to make 10 sausages. Okay. Now imagine word got out, word got out and suddenly you have a hundred people coming to your barbecue now, but you only still have that one pound of meat. So now you're going to make really thin or really small sausages so everyone can kind of get a portion and can get a bite of it, right? So the higher the number, the finer or the less there is, and the lower the number, the more sausages, the more hot dogs everyone can have. So that's why they're thicker. So hopefully you guys remember this fun little analogy to help you remember thread weight. So and that's the first part of, you know, my thread education today is remembering thread weight. And so you can see here in, in the second session, in the second group here, I have 40 and 50 weight thread, which I mentioned is what everyone is probably used to using. So anything lighter than that is going to be what I refer to as like lighter weight threads or finer weight threads. And obviously because they're finer, we use these in instances where we don't want to see the thread as much, right? So that's kind of the logic of using a lightweight thread. So lightweight threads are amazing because they can reduce the bulk in whatever you're doing. And so let's talk about these in different types of sewing situations. So let's talk about uh, embroidery first. So embroidery, of, of course, you guys know, you put so many stitches in one area, and it's like very dense sometimes, right? And most commonly, you guys probably use like a 40 weight thread for your embroidery. And using a 40 weight thread is okay. But like I mentioned, using a lighter weight really reduces the bulk. And when you do that, your pieces of work can be a lot softer as well. So not just like the bulk of it, but your embroidery can feel a lot softer. And so you can use um, lighter weight threads like an 80 weight, first of all, in the bobbin for embroidery. So I highly recommend using a lighter weight thread for your bobbin for your embroidery because 
if you use a 40 weight top and bottom, then your piece is going to be, it's going to feel kind of thick and it's not going to be soft. And so if you, you know, put that on a shirt or something, it's not going to like really flow or drape. It's going to almost feel like this like hard piece on, on your, on your design. And so I, I'm already getting some really great questions. I'll try to answer them as, along the way. But uh, would lighter weight thread break more on embroidery? No, it wouldn't. Um, you can also reduce your stitch length um, and have even denser stitching if you're worried about thread breakage or anything like that when you use lighter weight threads because then you'll get more stitches per inch, which actually makes it stronger as well. But uh, first of all, going back to the bobbins is... Uh, another thing that you can do with the lighter weight bobbin is use a pre-wound. So I don't know if you guys have tried using pre-wound bobbins before, but they're kind of a game changer because you can see here on the right hand side, that's a pre-wound bobbin. And on the left hand side, that is a bobbin that you've wound in your own sewing machine. Of course, it all varies. And sometimes you get a little bit more. It goes a little bit more on the top and then it goes a little bit more on the bottom. And so your tension isn't totally even when you're winding your own bobbin. And But on the pre-wound, because they're done on these giant machines in the factory, you can get perfect tension. And so it's not only convenient to use a pre-wound bobbin, but you actually end up getting like better... Uh, better stitch quality and like better results for your sewing when you use a pre-wound bobbin. And I'll show you guys on the next image as well. So you can see here on the left-hand side, again, that is wound on the sewing machine. And then on the right-hand side, that's wound using a pre-wound bobbin. So you actually notice by using the pre-wound bobbin, look how consistent and flat those stitches look. You get better and more even stitches for your embroidery compared to like a self wound bobbin. So um, I, I know you guys are like wondering what bobbin size is my machine? Cause a lot of times it doesn't really always say in your, you know, manual what the bobbin size is. So you guys can always go over to our website, wonderful.ca and under, under products and resources, we have a bobbin guide. So you can find your sewing machine brand and your model number, and you should be able to find what size bob in your machine takes. And if you don't find your machine model, we actually have a sizing chart. So you can print it out and measure your bobbin on our sizing chart to hopefully find out what size your pre-wound is. Um, right now, I'd say some machines, especially some of like the newer Berninas, actually have their own unique bobbin size that don't fit to like the standard three sizes of bobbins that are available. So those ones don't take pre-wound. So just you can always like measure on our sizing chart to make sure if you're not sure what size bobbin um, your machine takes. So now I want to talk a little bit more about how awesome 80 weight is in the bottom or like how nice finer weight threads are in the bottom. So you can see here we used a 50 weight white embroidery thread and then we used an 80 weight white deco bob embroidery thread pre-wound. And you can see the big difference in the two sections. So you can see here with the white bobbin thread, the 50 weight, you actually see that poke through a lot more and it doesn't fill out the design as nicely as that 80 weight does. The 80 weight almost makes it look like richer and fuller because like, you know, there's like density that comes with using a heavier weight thread. And if you ever get pokies using, um, you know, like a 40 or 50 weight thread, you're going to notice that more as well. Whereas with the 80 weight, you don't really notice the pokies as much because it's finer. So it's a little bit more hidden as well. Um, we did use white embroidery thread as an example here. But what I always tell people is I actually don't love using white or black embroidery thread, because white and black are kind of like at the end of the color spectrum, if you can really consider them colors. So they're they contrast a lot more usually to what you're doing. So if you get pokies using white and black, you actually tend to catch those a lot more than if you use like a neutral color for your embroidery thread. So if you're buying your next color of embroidery thread, try out like a gray or a beige or a tan. You know, if you're using more warm colors, try those tan and beige colors. If you're using more cool tones, try using like a gray neutral color for your embroidery thread instead. So you can really see the difference using those lighter weight threads can make. And here is another 
close up and you can really see, like I mentioned, you can see those pokies. So obviously if you're using like a white, bobbin thread sometimes and we use white in both of these but i'm saying it would be even less noticeable if you use like a neutral color or if you used something that matched a little bit and for those of you guys that are worried about using like a different weight in the top than in the bottom it's totally okay to use different thread weights in the top and bottom they don't have to match completely to be able to work in your machine that's totally a myth because if you think about it Using a 50 weight top and bottom, obviously you wouldn't have any issues, but what if you wanted to use like a 12 weight thread, like a heavier thread, if you use that in the bottom as well, then I don't think your machine would be very happy with you using like a, a 12 weight top and bottom. I think you'd hear like a lot of clunking sounds in your machine. So of course you can use different weights in the top and bottom. And all the samples that I'm going to show you guys today is going to have the 80 weight in the bobbin and it's going to have whatever thread on the top. So you can assume every one of our samples that we show you today is using an 80 weight thread. And the reason why we recommend the 80 weight over like our finest thread, which is the 100 weight, is the 80 weight is like very strong actually, and you don't need to go as fine as the 100 weight for the bobbin. And with some of the new machines that have sensors in the bobbin case that tell you that the threads run out, um, at the very, very fine weight, the 100 weight, sometimes it throws the sensor off and thinks that there's no thread in there. So that's why we've always recommended the 80 weight and it's never been an issue. So I like to recommend the 80 weight for the bobbin. So yes, if you don't have a machine that can take a pre-wound, then yes, of course you can always wind the 80 weight onto your own bobbin as well and make that work. So let's keep going. So now I talked a lot about using the 80 weight in the bobbin, right? But 80 weight on the top as well for your embroidery is also amazing because you can see here, if you use 80 weight in the top and bobbin, you can really see, you can get very like detailed designs and it looks very like dainty and elegant and you can really make like especially freestanding lace, something so soft in the hand as well and that drapes really nicely. And you'd only really be able to do that using like finer weight threads. If you created the same design using like a 40 or 50 weight, you would get a different look. And of course, you can always choose what you prefer. Some people actually like the look of like a 40 or 50 weight thread um, for lace work. But I'm just showing you the possibility of using lighter weight threads. So it's not wrong to use different weights for even the same design. It all depends on your personal preference. Don't think that there's like so many rules to like what thread you can use here and there. I just love to like share what you guys can do. But at the end of the day, it's your work, it's your art. So you guys pick what you like the what you like the best for what you want to achieve. So it's always always thinking about like what you want your final thing to look like. So here it's all about, you know, the lace, the freestanding lace, you can really see the detail. And as well, the lettering is done with the 80 weight as well. So you can see we get really crisp, nice stitches using those that 80 weight thread and you can do really nice detailed lettering, um, even in like smaller sizes and stuff by using those lighter weight threads. So if you want like smaller designs or more intricate designs, you definitely want to use lighter weight threads for that. And so here are some um, close ups of that freestanding lace so you can really see the detail. And if you think about using a heavier weight thread, it would definitely affect how this looks. These stitches are pretty small and these designs are pretty like intricate. Using a larger thread would definitely make it look different. It's not wrong, it's just different. So I'm just showing you using the 80 weight, what kind of look and appearance you can see. And then this is going even finer. This is 100 weight um, in the top and 80 weight in the bottom. And you can really see again, a lot of thread, a lot of detail, but I really wish you could feel these pieces um, in person because they're super soft. They got a really soft hand feel and they drape really nicely as well. So you can see. And a lot of people are asking if we have like thread weight charts. I don't know if I have that picture up, but maybe I'll try putting it up later today on our website so you guys can access it. But we actually have hints and tips charts on all of our thread lines as well. And if you guys want to 
remember my sausage theory, we, we actually have an animated video on our YouTube page of the sausage theory to help you guys remember whenever you need that refresher. So now I want to talk a little bit about monogramming as well. So again, we're using different weights of thread here on the top, all 80 weight on the bottom. So you can see we can use tons of different types of thread for embroidery on the top, and it's not wrong. You can use whatever you want. It's all about like the final look you want your embroidery to have. So you can see here, let's stop, start in the top left corner here. We have our Silco thread which is a 30 weight. And you can see that the red lady on the very left hand side, she looks really, the colors are so rich. It actually looks really nice and like pops off the page here. And then, but you can see if we want to shrink that design even by a little bit, you start to lose a bit of the detail. The lines get a little bit muddled and it's just not as crisp as the larger size. And then we move down in the thread weight. We go a little bit finer. 40 weight is what you guys are used to. It looks really great um, in the larger size and the medium size. And again, when we try to shrink it down a little bit smaller, then you start to lose that detail again. Whereas look, now we go to the 80 weight in the bottom left-hand corner. You know, she still looks great in all the sizes. It's just like a finer line. So, you know, it's just what you want your piece to look like. And that's why we, we show you all these different types of designs, the same one, but using different types of thread, because now you can really compare and see what a difference just changing the thread makes to your your final project. And you can see we shrank her down to the same smallest size that we did in the 40 and 30 weight. And we actually continue, we actually keep all the detail. Whereas like with the 30 and 40 weight, it becomes like a little bit blurry in the lines. And then we try to push it a little bit smaller as well. So we can do that with those lighter weight threads. And you can see that even more in the hundred, in the hundred weight. So you can really see you know, the difference that thread makes in in your piece. So I'm showing you another lace design. So this is using a 50 weight. So I'm not really talking about, you know, utility weight or heavier weight threads today, but I wanted to show you guys this compared to that daintier 80 weight we saw earlier. So <clears throat> in this instance, it actually makes sense to use maybe like a heavier weight thread because we're doing this on denim as well. Denim is kind of like a tougher material. If, you, we, if we use like an 80 weight on this, it might not really match quite right because the lace would be so soft and delicate on like a jean and it might look a little weird. So in this case, it was actually nice to use that 50 weight but you can see um, you get a lot more texture and the detail looks a little bit different. So of course, like I mentioned, it's okay to use different types of thread for the same technique. It just changes how your final result looks at the end of it. And you can definitely play around and try different things. It's not wrong or right to use like only 40 weight or 50 weight. You should try experimenting and, and try different types of weights of thread and see how you like it against different types of projects. Okay. So let's continue. Now let's talk about quilting with lightweight thread. So I know a lot of you guys here must be quilters because there was already some questions about that. So first of all, let's break quilting down into like two segments. So let's talk piecing first and then we'll talk quilting as well. So for piecing, it's so awesome using a lighter weight thread. I actually highly, highly recommend using a lighter weight thread for piecing because it's kind of a game changer. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have um, used 50 weight cotton thread um, for your piecing so far, and that's probably what you've been used to doing. But if you think about using um, a lighter weight thread, what that can do is actually reduce the bulk in your seams because thread actually takes up room in your seams. So by using a lighter weight thread, you can reduce the bulk in your seams. You can get um, a more flat appearance. You get a crisper look as well. So you can see here on the far left, <clears throat> we use a 50 weight top and bottom. So that's probably what you guys are used to using. And so 
again, I don't think there's anything wrong with using a 50 weight versus using an 80 weight because, you know, you want to have fun sewing as well. So if you actually just prefer how 50 weight looks or if you like that, you can absolutely continue to do that. But I just want to show you how it can look using an 80 weight as well. So then we move to the middle photo and we have a 50 weight top and an 80 weight in the bottom. So you can see here already compared to the 50 weight top and bottom, you already see that seam come that seam bulk coming down a little bit, right? It's already getting a little bit flatter. And then you go 80 weight top and bottom. And oh my goodness, you can really see <laughs> how flat your seams look. And we sewed all of these with the same person using the same fabric, ironing the same amount of time. So this is like totally the same experiment. All we really did was change the thread. And the great thing, the great thing about using a lighter weight thread, like I mentioned earlier, is you can actually drop your stitch length down. So you can use something between like 1.5 to 2 even, and you get a really, really flat, but still you get a really strong seam because you're adding more stitches per inch. And um, you get a tighter seam as well. And if you're doing things like sewing curves or doing more precision piecing, you're actually going to find that you can get more accuracy in what you're doing as well. So because if you think about sewing a curve, every stitch is a small straight line, right? So if you shorten that segment of the straight line, um, you shorten your stitches, you actually get a rounder curve because you're going to have like smaller straight lines forming that curve. So it's going to be a lot rounder. And if you have a piece where you have like a, a lot of points or places where the seam meets up, then using a lighter weight thread, first of all, it, it eats less into your seam allowance. And second, where they all match, then you don't have as much of a big bulky spot. So it, it feels like super, super nice. And um, you can really, really see the difference by using this. And as well, the other thing is, you know, when you are choosing a thread for your piecing, a lot of people worry about matching the thread exactly to their fabric color, because when you open up or you um, you know, finish your piece and you're worried about the thread showing in your seams, right? But by using a lighter weight thread, the same kind of logic with the pokies, you're not going to see the thread in the seam so much. So it's not going to matter so much what thread you use for your piecing because um, you, you don't see that thread in your seams. So someone asked if we need to shorten the stitch length with 80 weight. I would say my general um, advice is if you're using a lighter weight thread, so what I showed in, in that category three earlier, like 60 to 100 weight, I would generally rec recommend like reducing your stitch length a little bit. So then you um, keep the strength by adding more stitches per inch. But don't worry about adding bulk because that thread is so fine. It's still going to be flatter than using like a a 50 weight at like a 2.5 stitch length or 2.2 stitch length, something like that. And then the same applies for if you're using um, a heavier weight thread. So if you're using like a 12 weight or a 30 weight, I would generally like elongate the stitches a little bit. So if it's like heavier, I would make the stitches a little bit better. And if it's a lighter weight thread, I would make the stitches a little bit shorter. So I'm just going to go through these um, pictures a little bit because I don't have a ton of time left. So you can see here, this is another example of using a 50 weight top and bottom. And for those of you guys that do foundation paper piecing, I love using the 80 weight and that shorter stitch length because it really perforates the paper well. And it's so easy to tear out. And with that tighter stitch length, you don't have to be worried about like pulling your seams out as well when you're, when you're pulling that paper out. And so this is like another closer up photo and you can really see how, 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 what of a difference that makes. And now I want to touch a little bit on applique because applique is a huge thing that everyone does in quilting and stuff as well. So there's different types of applique, obviously, but you know, for like needle turn or like the type of applique that you don't want to see using a lighter weight thread is going to be your best friend. Absolutely. So you can see here on the left hand side, we have hand applique and on the right hand side, we have machine applique. And you can see the pieces are going to lay flatter because like I mentioned, the thread's not going to add any like bulk into your seams. And 
with the machine applique, you can do really tiny stitches. Like I mentioned, you can like, um, you can lower that stitch length. And so we actually did a zigzag stitch on the machine applique leaf and it's not even a blanket stitch. So you can really see how well all of that thread hides. It's, it's actually insane. And so if you're like, nope, I never want to do needle turn applique, you can kind of cheat with the machine applique because it almost looks just as good as a uh, hand applique. Like you wouldn't be able to, to tell here that there's a difference between the two leaves, right? And um, I forgot to include a photo, but another thing you can use lightweight threads on, like the 80 weight or the 100 weight is English paper piecing. Um, using those lightweight threads, again, it's going to hide your, it's going to hide your seams are going to lay really flat and it's not going to be bulky. And so even if you're a beginner using like lighter weight threads, if your stitches hide, it almost looks like you're an expert because you don't really see the thread at all when you're doing your whip stitches and things like that. And so for quilting now, like quilting the three layers of your of your quilt sandwich together, you can absolutely use those lighter weight threads. So here the fabric in the background is that hexagonal chicken wire looking thing. And so obviously because that's part of this design, we don't want to interrupt it with a lot of thread and lines going over it. And then it's going to mess up how that chicken wire is going to look, right? So by using a lightweight thread, I don't know if you can actually see it here, we quilted the whole thing using a hundred weight thread. And you can kind of see the stitches really close up going through those black lines, but you can barely see it because that's what the lightweight threads can do. It really hides. You can quilt all over with one color and it totally blends. You just see the texture of the quilting, but you don't really see the thready look. So that's an awesome thing you can do. And same with this one. So this one, I pieced all of it with an 80 weight top and bottom because it's foundation paper piecing. And it was super easy and nice to do. And you can see this piece is a perfect example of when you want to use 80 weight, especially because there's so many points that come together. And like the pieces in the eye are so tiny. So using a smaller stitch length and using a smaller thread really helps with that. But what I really want to point out is because the piecing is like kind of like the star of this design, I didn't want to interrupt it with my quilting and really see a lot of thread on top. But you can also see here there's tons of colors running through this piece. So what I wanted to do was using a lighter weight thread. So I used 100 weight to quilt all of this. And I actually used only a single color of 100 weight thread, even though there's so many colors running through that whole thing. And it's actually crazy. I don't know if you guys would ever be able to guess, but I use this light gray thread here. And I quilted the whole piece and you see the texture of my quilting, but you don't see the piece get interrupted at all by any of like the thread or anything like that. And here's a closer up image um, of the quilting. So you can really see, um, you can really see how that thread just like blends in and like doesn't look like anything. And I love to recommend um, lighter weight threads versus using like a monofilament or something like that because mon monofilament is tricky to sew with first of all and it doesn't really age well and it's actually got a shiny appearance sorry that thread number was 718 if 718 so the monofilament doesn't age well it's kind of shiny and and things like that so uh, it's a little bit I wouldn't say like the best thread to use and because it only comes in clear and smoke, it actually shows on a lot of um, fabric and especially in the light because it'll reflect the shininess sometimes. So that's why our Invisifil um, actually is really awesome because of it carries a little bit of color. It actually ends up helping it blend in to the fabric a lot, lot more. And I, I wish I had more time to show you guys samples. Like this is another example of how um, using a lighter weight thread is awesome. This is Stitch in the Ditch. So you can see here using a 50 weight for Stitch in the Ditch versus 100 weight. And we actually purposely came out of the ditch in both examples. And we used really different fabric colors because a lot of the times you are dealing with a lot of different fabric colors. So what thread color would you use? Well, using a 100 weight thread, it's a game changer for sure. Like you don't even have to match it exactly. And like you barely see it in the seams. Even if you pop out of the ditch, you don't really see the thread. So, you know you can just, what we call it is just stitching in the neighborhood. You don't really even have to worry about staying in the ditch the whole time. 
And so, yeah, it's really, really amazing. I think I have to pass it back to, to Trisha now, but I hope I got you guys all excited about different weights of thread and trying something new, especially these lightweight threads. They're seriously a game changer, especially in your embroidery and in your, um, in your quilting and piecing as well. I didn't even get to sergers yet, but you can definitely use lightweight threads in your sergers for like lightweight fabrics like organza or, or things like that where you want to do like a nice fine rolled hem. But I hope you guys learned something new. I hope you guys feel threducated and now you're ready to try some lightweight threads and see how it's going to be a game changer in your next project. So... Trisha, I don't know if you're there. Let me stop screen sharing. <laughs> there we go. All I have to say, Callista, is wow, that was wonderful. <laughs> oh, should I wonder say Phil. wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink. Wink, wink. That's <laughs> no, right. We will definitely have to have you back on again to talk more about the serger and the stitch in a ditch. I mean, that was a lovely demonstration and I thoroughly enjoyed it and I hope our viewers did as well. I can't imagine that they didn't. <laughs> I know I get too excited talking about thread and I'm like, oh my goodness, like half an hour just flies by. <laughs> well, we'll definitely be having thread. you back because that was fantastic. So um, awesome. we did have a few questions here yeah. and I was scrolling through. I figured it might be easier just to write it down. So I grabbed my baby lock swag here. But um, one of them was, is the Visifil thread hard to wind? Uh, you wouldn't wind Invisifil onto a bobbin because like I mentioned earlier, I would recommend like Deco Bob being the light lightest weight thread because of those like, especially higher end models of machines that sometimes have sensors in the bobbin case. So uh, Deco Bob is not hard to wind and using a finer weight thread, you can actually get tons of thread onto your bobbin. So one thing I would say is actually don't wind them too full. Because you always, you already get a lot of extra thread by winding a lighter weight thread onto the bobbin. Well, we have some other questions too, but unfortunately we're not going to be able to get to them all today. So like I said, we'll have to have you back on again. But Sounds thank good. you so, so much for your time. And also we've got a couple of items that you donated for the giveaway. So we'll be giving those away shortly. So we appreciate those as well. For sure, yeah. Make sure, uh, I hope whoever's lucky enough to win them enjoys it because they're all of our lightweight threads. It's the full collection of our 60 Invisifil colors and the full collection of our 36 Deco Bob colors as well. So I hope someone, whoever wins it, has a good time sewing with them and seeing how lightweight threads are going to be their game changer. For sure. Well, thank you so much and you have an awesome day. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. All right. Well, that was wonderful. I'm still kind of in awe here. She's she's a pro at this. <laughs> so before we move on to the giveaway, I just want to remind everybody that the way that you get entered into the giveaway is by commenting. So keep on commenting. They're wonderful. And we'll be able to um, get you entered into the giveaway. Also, if you were the winners of the other prizes to claim those prizes, simply go to the link tree in the description hit claim your prize and fill out the form and we will get you your prize. So we can go ahead and move into giving away these beautiful thread kits. Take a peek at this. Let me see if the reflection, well, there we go. This is the um, Invisifil thread. And this is between the two here. Let me get these pulled up. Between the two, this is $400 worth of thread. So we really appreciate that donation from Wonderfill. Let me get that giveaway tool pulled up and we will go with the Invisifil first. And that is just the giveaway from the last one. So we're just gonna hit draw again and see who the lucky winner is. Let's take a peek, almost there. So close. Janet Pess, congratulations. You won number three, the Invisifil thread kit. All right, we'll move right into the Deco Bob. And we'll do this one. Actually, let me take this off for a second. There we go. How cool is that? Beautiful. We will draw again. And this is the number four Deco Fill thread. The reason I'm saying the number is because when you enter your form, you'll just have to include that. Suzanne Cubis, congratulations. 
How fun is this? Make sure that you go and claim your prize by going to our link tree, filling out that form, and getting the form sent to us. And let me go ahead and come on back here. All right. The next thing that I want to mention is uh, the giveaway. If you are, excuse me, let's back up for a second. If you are watching on YouTube, we're going to try it one more time. <laughs> if you're watching on TikTok or Instagram, come on over to Facebook and YouTube. I think I got it that time. Uh, Facebook and YouTube to comment. That is where we're pulling the names from the software that is doing the giveaway. So just make sure that you're commenting on from Facebook and YouTube. Okay, now <laughs> we can go ahead and get ready for our next segment. It'll take us just a couple of minutes to grab a few things. Wink, wink, some prizes. So make sure that you're commenting because we have several giveaways on the next segment. We'll be back in a few.
Welcome back, everybody. So next up is Rhonda with Schmetz. I'm excited for this one. I love talking about needles. Hello, Rhonda. Hi, nice Trisha. <laughs> I'm delighted to be here today. <laughs> oh, well, we appreciate you joining us. And you had sent me a little snippet of what you're going to be talking about. And I'm very excited to see that because we have a lot of questions regarding needles. Well, I'll tell you, Callista just gave an awesome presentation about uh, thread. So now let's talk about the needle because thread and needles work hand in hand, don't they? Or that machine to like machine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like a wonderful plan. I will let you take it away. Okay, fantastic. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Rhonda Pierce, and I represent Smets Needles in North America. That's Smets home sewing machine needles in North America. So what's my mission here today? It's threefold. I'm hoping to elevate your respect for the hardest working two inch piece of steel in your sewing machine, the Smets needle. I'm hoping to remove any mystery you might have about the needle and also elevate your confidence in your needle selection. So let's go ahead and get started. My presentation is about 45 minutes. It's in three sections. Um, and first I wanna talk about the actual physical needle. And I have my needle right here. This is 17 inches tall and anatomically correct. And uh, I used to travel with this needle. <laughs> now I'm just traveling virtually. But I always like to start with the physical needle because when you're aware of the parts and the function of the needle, it helps you make an informed decision on what needle type and size to use. So at the very top of your needle is a beveled edge. A beveled edge, this is referred to as the butt of the needle. And you might think, oh, so what, a beveled edge. Well, stop and think about it. When you go to insert a new needle in your machine, you don't have a lot of wiggle room. So the top of your needle is beveled for easier insertion into your needle holder. Our home sewing machines require a flat shank needle. A flat shank needle, again, for perfect positioning into your needle holder. We have a little transitional area referred to as the shoulder of the needle. And I hope you've noticed that your Smets needles are now color coded with either one or two bands of color. And we'll talk about those color bands shortly. We have the length of the needle. This is referred to as the blade of the needle. And what you might be interested in knowing is that Smets actually measures this area here of the blade to come up with the sizes that we're familiar with. They measure this area here of the blade and they'll get a measurement like 0 0.70, 0 0.80, etc. They take that measurement times 100 to come up with the sizes that we're familiar with. Sizes 70, 80, 90, etc. So that's um uh, uh, that is the size and it's based on the metric size of the, the needle. So now I hope it's easier for you to remember that the smaller the number, the finer the needle. So a size 80 needle will be smaller than a size uh, 100 needle. So it's just the opposite of what we learned about thread a few minutes ago. Okay. so. We've got the blade, the size is determined right here on the blade. And then we, how many of you have noticed this groove on the front of your needle? This is referred to as the groove of the needle. And the groove has a very important function. When your thread is moving down the length of the needle to the eye, your thread should not be flip-flopping back and forth. Your thread should move evenly and smoothly in the groove down to the eye so you get a nice clean stitch. We have the point and the tip, and these change according to different needle types. And on the back side of your needle, how many of you have noticed this little indentation? 
This is referred to as the scarf of the needle. And the scarf has a very important function. When your needle passes through your fabric and the throat plate, your bobbin hook has to come up and catch that top thread in order to create the stitch. So the bobbin hook needs passing room in order to create the stitch. And the scarf will change according to length, depth, and width. So those are your basic parts to the needle. Now I've got some slides here that I want to show you. And I think that will demonstrate even better the parts of the needle. And I hope you can see that. It's kind of small on my screen. There we go. Okay, so um, at the very top of your needle, you've got that beveled edge, the butt. You've got the sh uh, shank, the, the shoulder, the blade, the groove, the point, the tip, the scarf. And I haven't mentioned the eye yet. And I consider the eye to be one of the most important features to your Smets needle. Your everyday needle, the universal needle, the eye is 40% the width of the blade. But look at the eye of the embroidery needle and you can see that the eye is wider. And when you look at the eye of the top stitch and the metallic, you can see that the eye is not only wider, but it's also elongated. So when you're sewing, what does a larger eye mean to you? A larger eye means there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. So if you have problems with threads that are breaking or shredding, what do you do? Well, you need to change your needle. You might need to move up a needle size or change to a different needle type that has a larger eye. So I hope I've solved a little situation we sometimes encounter, threads that break and shred. What do you do? Yeah, you're going to have to change your needle. And you might even have to change to a different needle type or a different needle size. Okay, let's scoot along here because next I want to talk about the Smets color chart. You can kind of um, date some of your Smets needles just by the color bands. The two color bands were instituted in 2014. So I want to make sure you're comfortable reading the chart. So on the left-hand side of this chart, you see the column is labeled needle type. And you can see that many of the Smets needle types are assigned a color. On the right hand side of this needle, we see the column is labeled needle size. And every Smets needle size is assigned a color. Now look at the needle between the two columns. The needle has two color bands. The top color band identifies the needle type. The lower color band identifies the needle size. So what needle type and size is this? Well, the top color band is yellow. So we look off to the left and we find yellow is a stretch needle. Back to our needle, that lower color band is rose. So we look off to the right and we find rose is size 7511. So this is a stretch size 7511 needle. But let me walk you through a couple other examples. My favorite go-to needle for all kinds of sewing, piecing, quilting, etc., is a Microtex needle. Microtex. So what would the um, Microtex size 8012 is my favorite needle. So what would the two color bands be? Well, we look off to the left under needle type and we find Microtex is purple. And for size 8012, we look off to the right and we find size 8012 is orange. So Microtex size 8012 has a top color band of purple and a lower color band of orange. One more example would be what needle type and size would you have if you have two bands of orange? Two bands of orange. Well, we look off to the left under needle type and we find orange is a jersey needle. We look off to the right and uh, orange is that size 8012. So two bands of orange is a jersey size 8012 needle. 
Now, there's one more thing I need to point out about the Smets color chart, and that is under needle type. The very first needle listed is universal, and there's no color. In fact, the color block is actually X'd out. So what does that mean? Universal needles will have only one band of color, and that's to identify your needle size. So if you have a universal size 8012 uh, needle, well, you have just that single band of orange. If you have a universal size 9014, you have just a single band of blue. So I hope these color bands help, um, help you identify your needle, especially after you've taken them out of the needle pack. So that's a lot of information, but I've got something else that I want to cover with you, and that is the Smets Needle Pack. There's a lot of numbers and letters on your Smets Needle Pack, um, and I want to make sure you're comfortable um, uh, reading the Needle Pack. Okay, so at the currently at the bottom of your Smets Needle Pack, you find the needle size. So on this sample here, we have assorted needle sizes. We have sizes 7010, 8012, and 9014. I think most everyone recognizes needle size, but what about that number above the needle size or sizes 130/705H? How many of you have looked at that number and wondered what the heck does that mean? <laughs> Well, 130705H is the needle system. It's like a model number. 130-705 means that the needle has a flat shank for our home sewing machine. The H translates from a German word that means scarf, that little indentation on the backside of your needle. So needle system 130705H is a flat shank needle with a scarf that we can use in our home sewing machine. Above that, we've got um, the Smets needle type spelled out. Above that, we've got the Smets name. And above that, you can see through the clear packaging, you can see the color bands. So on this sample here, we have assorted sizes, and they are universal needles. So there's only one band of color to identify the needle size. So the two needles on the left-hand side have green bands. So we know that these are universal size 7010. The next two needles to the right have orange bands. So we know these are universal size 8012. And that needle to the far right has that single band of blue, so we know it's a universal size 9014. So lots of information here, but let's look at one more needle pack. Again, at the bottom of your um, Smets needle pack, you find the needle size. So this is size 90 slash 14. Above that, you've got needle, uh, needle system 130705H. That's a flat shank needle with a scarf that we can use in our home sewing machine. But look a little closer on this sample here, because on the needle system line, there's an additional letter. On this sample here, there's a dash E. E for um, embroidery. On some of your other um, needle packs, you might find a dash Q for quilting or M for microtex or J for jeans, etc. So 130705H is a flat shank needle with a scarf. That's what that H means, scarf for our home sewing machine. And on this sample here, we've got the E for embroidery. Above that, you've got the needle type spelled out. So these are embroidery needles. Above that, even today, you'll still see, sometimes still see the, um, the German word for needle. You've got the Smets name above that. And above that, through the clear packaging, you can see the color bands. So on this sample here, um, the top color band on each of the five needles is red. Red for embroidery. And on the lower color band, you've got blue for size 9014. 
So lots of information and actually it's redundant information on your little Smets needle pack. So I hope that um, that uh, removes some of the mystery about your um, your needle pack and the parts of the needle and how to use the Smets um, color chart. Now I see Mary has a question here about um, the needle sizes. The European um, size. So yes, um, the needle size 9014, the 90 is referred to as um, the Smet size or the European size. It's based on the metric um, measurement of the actual physical needle. But Smets is not the only needle manufacturer in the world, right? There are other needle companies and they use um, a system that's referred to as the Asian, the international, or the Singer sizing system. So that would be that second number. In this sample here, that's the size 14. So many years ago, many, many, many decades ago, the needle manufacturers got together and said, hey, let's standardize our sizing so that a size 80 will always equal a size 12 or a size 14 will always equal a size 90. So sometimes when you look at your books and patterns, it'll just give you one number. Maybe it gives you a size 90. Well, that's the same as a size 14. So um, lots of information on your, your little Smets um, um, needle pack there. Okay, so um, can I go back to my full screen now? Um, I'll come back to my slides in a couple minutes. So thank you for your comments. I'm trying to keep my eyes on comments, <laughs> but it's so hard. But let's just scoot along because, um, wow, I've only got uh, 35 minutes and a lot of information I want to cover. What do you think the most popular needle type is? And I would guess that most of you would um, answer that the universal is the most popular needle type. Universal needle has a slightly rounded point. It works well with both woven and with knit fabrics. The universal needle, I consider it to be the workhorse of all needle types. And I always suggest that you have sizes 8012 and 9014, the two most popular needle sizes in Universal in your sewing stash. Universal needles are available from in the finest size, 60 slash 8, all the way up to the largest needle, 125. So Universal needles are also available in twin and triple needles. So, well, that's a lot of needles, a lot of choices. So I want to talk specifically about um, piecing and quilting. And there are five needle types that are popular for piecing and for quilting. So one of those needles is the universal needle. Lots of famous quilters use the universal for both piecing and for quilting. But I always like to say with Smets, you have options. So let's look at a couple other options that you've got for piecing and for quilting. We've got the jeans needle. Does that surprise you? The jeans needle. Well, how many of you like to make denim quilts or flannel quilts, or maybe you like to make those heavy duty raggy quilts and you need a hefty needle for those projects. So what's so special about the jeans needle? The jeans needle has a reinforced blade, a reinforced blade so that when the needle passes through your heavier fabric and your throat plate, there's less movement of the needle, less needle deflection so you get an, a cleaner stitch. So the jeans needle has a reinforced blade that's great when you're sewing with denim, maybe you're making um, flannel quilts or those heavy duty raggy quilts. The jeans needle, also known as a denim needle. Another popular needle for piecing and quilting is the top stitch needle. The top stitch needle. Well, as we saw earlier in that diagram about the eyes of the needle, the top stitch needle has an elongated eye. 
So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. The top stitch needle has a slightly rounded point. Just as the name suggests, for piecing and quilting, we've got the quilting needle. The quilting needle. What's so special about this needle? Well, the quilting needle was specifically designed with a special taper, specifically for piecing and for quilting. This needle also has a slightly rounded point. The quilting needle has a special taper specifically designed for piecing and for quilting. So you'd probably use the smaller size 7511 for the piecing of your project and the larger size 9014 for the quilting of your project. And that leaves one other needle type popular for piecing and quilting. Maybe it's a needle that you use. And that is the Microtex needle. The generic name for a Microtex needle is a sharp needle. So when your books and patterns say use a sharp needle, well, they're not suggesting you get a file out and, <laughs> and sharpen your needle. No, no, no. They're referring to a Smith's Microtex needle. So what's so special about the Microtex needle? The Microtex needle has a very slim, acute point. Very slim, acute point. So with the Microtex needle, you're going to get the most precise stitches. And because the Microtex has this very slim, acute point, guess what? Your Microtex needle is going to dull quicker than any of your other needle types. So you will need to replace your Microtex needle more frequently than any other needle type. Now, the other thing I want to say about the Microtex needle is how many of you like to sew with batiks? Even if you pre-wash your batiks, oftentimes they're still kind of tightly woven and there's still maybe some dye residue. But the Microtex is a wonderful needle to use when you're piecing and quilting and sewing uh, with your batiks fabrics because that very slim acute point can just penetrate right through that batik fabric beautifully. So if you're taking notes here today, Five popular needle types for piecing and for quilting. We've got the universal needle, the workhorse of all needle types. We've got the jeans needle, which has that reinforced blade. Um, uh, the reinforced blade. So you can work through those heavier fabrics like denim, uh, raggy quilts, and flannel quilts. We've got the top stitch needle with a slightly rounded point and an elongated eye. So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. We've got the quilting needle with that special taper specifically designed for piecing and for quilting. You'd probably use the size 7511 for the piecing of your project and the larger size 9014 for the quilting of your project. And last but not least is the Microtex needle. The Microtex needle, also known as a sharp needle. Use the Microtex on your batik fabrics. Use it for piecing and for quilting. The Microtex has that very slim, acute point, so you're going to get really clean, uh, clean accurate stitches. And again, because it has that very slim, acute point, you're going to um, have to replace the Microtex more frequently than any of your other needle types. The Microtex is going to dull quicker. So five needle types. And you know what? I know that our friends here at um, Sewing Parts Online has these needles all bundled up for you. You get a card of each of these needles. This is the quilting and piecing bundle that comes with the little luggage tag and also the handy little um, Smets um, ABC pocket guide, which I consider to be the Bible of everything about needles. So I'm sure they'll be providing that um, link for you shortly. So keep that in mind. Okay, so let's just scoot on because I want to talk about sewing with knits. I know there's a lot of quilters out there, but if you like to sew with knits or you haven't um, sewn with knits in a while, I want to encourage you to do that because 
when I started sewing, um, I started on double polyester. How many of you remember double polyester? <laughs> well, there's a lot. Fabrics have improved so much um, over the years. And now we've got a huge array of beautiful knit fabrics um, to, to choose from. And part of the success of working with knits is using the appropriate needle. So there are two needle types that you must have when you're sewing with knits. One is the jersey needle. The jersey needle, when you're sewing with knits, the jersey needle has a medium ballpoint. The other needle that you need in your stash when sewing with knits is a stretch needle. And guess what? The stretch needle also has a medium ballpoint, but unlike the jersey needle, the stretch needle has a smaller eye and a deeper scarf. And those two differences make a difference in how your, your um, machine, your thread, your fabric, your needle all play together. Yes, so the needle does make a difference. So if you're sewing with, with knits, well, how do you know? Do you use a stretch or a jersey needle? And there is a rule of thumb that works about 80% of the time. If you have just a regular knit fabric, you're going to use the jersey needle. But if your fabric has lycra, spandex, or elastic, you're going to use the stretch needle. Sometimes jersey and stretch are interchangeable, but not always. So again, the rule of thumb is if your fabric has lycra, spandex, or elastic, use the stretch needle. If it's just a regular knit fabric, use the jersey. So it wasn't so long ago that I made a cotton t-shirt that had 3% lycra. So what needle did I use? Yeah, I used the stretch needle. That's what I always choose. But guess what? <laughs> that one time I didn't really like my stitch quality. So what did I do? Well, I tried another stretch needle and I still didn't like my stitch quality. So what did I do? I just switched to a jersey needle and I got the quality of stitch that I really expected from my needle. So don't be afraid to change. Sometimes stretch and jersey are interchangeable. So again, um, two needle types popular for piecing and quilting, stretch, or I'm sorry, for sewing with knits, um, jersey and um, stretch needles. Okay, well, let's just scoot along here because how many of you have used the most, um, the newest needle, the newest needle that Smets has come out with. It was actually introduced in 2019, right before the pandemic hit. <laughs> so maybe you haven't heard about it yet. And that is the Smet Super Nonstick Needle, the Super Nonstick Needle. And I think even virtually, you can see that these needles are a different color. They're kind of a gunmetal color or charcoal gray. And that's um, a finish like you will find in your pots and pans at home. I can't use that T word, but it's a finish that resists stickiness. <laughs> But there are two other characteristics to this super nonstick that I want to point out to you. This needle also has a reinforced blade, so there's less um, needle deflection when the stitch is created. And the eye is extra large, so there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. So three great characteristics to this needle. Um, when are you going to use it? Well, how many of you like to do machine embroidery or machine applique? And oftentimes you're working with a stabilizer. And what happens with that stabilizer? Oftentimes you're stitching at really high speeds, right? And what happens? The stabilizer has a tendency to warm up and then gum up your needle. So with the super nonstick, you can get more stitches before you uh, have to change out the needle. How many of you like to sew on oil cloth or splash fabric or vinyl? What happens when you're sewing on vinyl? Yeah, the vinyl gets warm. And then what happens? 
the vinyl hugs your needle. Now you can't see where you're sewing. <laughs> <laughs> so the super nonstick will resist the vinyl from hugging your needle. And there's one other application, and that's uh, when you're working with hoop and loop tape. Hoop and loop tape, yeah, it's fuzzy on one side, it's sticky on the other, and kind of crispy in between. Yeah, that sounds like a candy bar, right? Hmm, <laughs> makes me hungry. <laughs> anyway, if you're working with Velcro or hoop and loop tape, the super nonstick can um, works beautifully with your um, with your hoop and loop tape. So give the super nonstick needles a try. So uh, there are four sizes available, sizes 70, 80, 90, and 100. And all of these needles are available over at Sewing um, Parts Online. So you can, um, I think if you just search for Smets and then bundles, you'll find all four bundles that I've just mentioned here. And all of the bundles come with the um, handy little luggage tag with the Smets color chart and the um, handy Smets ABC pocket guide. So fantastic. All right. Oh, you know what? There was one more thing I wanted to um, mention. How many of you like to sew with cuddle fabric or minky? I'm a huge cuddle fabric fan. And if it was cold out, I would probably be wearing... Um, a cuddle vest or a jacket that I've made. And there is a specific needle that you want to use with that cuddle fabric or minky. And that is um, stretch size 9014. And yes, needle type and size makes a huge difference. So stretch size 9014. If you're working with minky or cuddle fabrics and even Shannon fabrics that manufactures cuddle and minky, what needle do they suggest? Yep. Uh, Smith Stretch 9014. So I'm oh, glad I, for, I remembered to, to tell you that. Okay, so we've just covered a lot of territory here. So if you as you have questions, go ahead and just put those in the chat, in the Facebook chat, and I'll try to come back to them because now I want to share my screen again. And um, because I always like to... Um, I'm always pleased when people are curious about the most frequently asked question. What do you think that is? The most frequently asked question that I get. That is, how long does a needle last? How long does a needle last? Well, here's the easy answer. <laughs> they don't last forever. Yeah, you need to change the needle. Your needles should never, ever look like these. These are really super nasty looking needles. That needle on the far left hand side looks like it has twin mountain peaks. The needle on the far right looks like a cutting blade. What are these needles going to do to your fabric? Yeah, these needles are just going to eat up your fabric. Not a good thing. So this so yeah, you need to replace your needle. It's a repair that you can do yourself. Even at one or two o'clock in the morning, you should have a little stash of needles there when you're ready to change out the needle. So, yep, be prepared to change out the needle. This slide here is one of my favorite slides. It's the same needle in every frame. This needle has been used and, uh, and abused. But to our naked eye in the left-hand picture, you can't tell that. To our naked eye, it looks like a sharp needle. But as we move to the right with increased magnification, you can start to see how nasty this needle is. That needle on the far right-hand side is dull. It's got that super burr right there on the tip. Look at all those burrs and striations on the tip. So it is a nasty looking needle. It needs to be changed out. And actually, you should change out that needle before it gets this bad. So keep that in mind. So yeah, needles get dull with use. You need to replace the needle. So if you would come back to me and I let's talk about um, clues to change the needle. Clues to change the needle. How long does a needle last? I don't know. It could be three seconds if you hit a pin right away. 
When you hit a pin, your first thought is, oh my goodness, I'm, I bent the needle. And yeah, it's possible that you bent or even broke that needle. But what you may not realize is when you hit that pin, now you have just dulled it. You have compromised the point and the tip of the needle. So you're not going to get the prime time stitches that you really expect from Smith's needles. So what do you do? Change the needle. So how long does the needle last? Hmm, three seconds. Maybe you can get 20 hours of sewing time. I don't know. <laughs> so I think what you really need to do is uh, reframe that question to while you're sewing, what are the clues to changing the needle? And we kind of changed, we kind of touched upon one of those clues already. And that's when your thread is breaking or shredding. What you may not realize is when your thread is breaking or shredding, if you're not changing out your needle frequently enough, the thread will actually create a groove in the eye of the needle. And that's not a good thing. A groove in the eye of the needle, what's it going to do? Shred and break your thread. So what do you need to do? What's the solution? Yep, get a new needle. Replace the needle. When you're sewing, what's happening to your fabrics? Are your fabrics puckering? Is the needle leaving a hole in your fabric? Maybe um, in a really bad case, when your needle hits your fabric, it's actually pushing it into your throat plate. That's not a good thing. Those are clues that you need to change the needle. What's happening to your um, stitches? Are your stitches skipping? Are your seams uneven? Or maybe you're sitting at your machine and you're going, well, Rhonda, I'm sewing in a straight line. How come my stitches look kind of wiggly squiggly? Well, guess what? Your needle is dull. So what are you going to do? Just change the needle. And then there's one other clue that people often overlook. Hopefully when you're sewing, you're in that bubble, right? All is right in our, our world. You are just humming along. Your machine is humming along. And then you start to hear that little click, click, clicking sound. What is it? Well, it's your needle and it's saying, hey, I've been working hard here. Change me. If you ignore that clicking sound, it graduates to a pop, pop, popping sound. Now your needle is yelling at you. Hey, I've given you my best. I've made beautiful stitches. I want to continue to make wonderful stitches, but you need to replace me. And if you ignore the clicking and the popping, what's happening now? Your machine is going clunk, clunk, clunk. <laughs> How many of you are familiar with that? those clicking, popping, and clunking sounds? Yes, yes, you need to replace your needle. So I'm not here today to just sell you more needles. No, 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 no. I'm here to help elevate your stitch quality. And that includes changing out your needle. If you stop and think about it, you spend a lot of money on your machine, right? You spend a lot of money on your curated fabrics that, hmm, let's see, where are those fabrics? They're in the closet, they're in the garage, they're in the trunk of the, <laughs> of the car. Yes, curated fabrics. You spend a lot of money. You spend a lot of money on your beautiful threads. You spend a lot of money on your books and patterns and classes and retreats. And let's not forget your time. Your time sewing is an investment. So you need to maintain that investment from your machine, your thread, your fabric to your time right down to the hardest working two inch piece of steel in your machine. This needle, it's working with your machine. It's working with the thread. It's working with your <laughs> your fabric and it's working with your technique. And yep, the needle is going to get dull. So you need to um, change out that needle. So how long does a needle last? I don't know. Three seconds, 20 hours, but you need to be aware of the clues to change the needle. So I, help, I hope that helps you out. Um, needles don't last forever. Um, oh, and the other thing I want to say is, uh, well, let's, let's scoot on. Let's go um, to the next slide. 
the, this will be the last set of slides that I've got. It looks like I've got about 12 minutes with you. Okay, so we've covered a lot of information here today. And there is a free app that you can download on your phone. Just go to Google Play or to the iStore, type in SMETS, S-C-H-M-E-T-Z, and the free app will pop right up. So that app uh, we are currently updating. And um, so you might be seeing a change in, oh, I don't know, the next month or two, let's say six to eight weeks. Um, um, so you be, be aware that there will be a change going on in the next six to eight weeks. But download it. There is no charge and there won't be a charge later either. So one of the things I like about the app is that um, all the images that I've shown you here today are in that app. So you can remember how to read the needle pack. You can remember that diagram about the eyes of the needle. But one of the, my favorite features is that it has a list of over 80 fabrics. So now you can click a fabric and it'll suggest what needle type and size to use. So in this sample here, chambray was clicked and it's suggesting to use a universal size 80, 12 or 90, 14 needle. So just to help you out, because how do you remember all those different uh, fabrics and what needle to use? So it's quite helpful. Okay, so my name is Rhonda Pierce. I, um, I represent Smets Home Sewing Machine Needles in North America. Yep, I do have a, a, a blog, sewmorestitches.com. I'm not selling anything, but I do document what I sew and the shows that I um, attend. So you can go over there. You can see what I'm sewing right now. I'm actually making, um, uh, I call it my little red riding hood coat. Uh, out of Shannon Fabrics. Um, so yes, I've been using Stretch 9014. So you can see the construction of that. I've got the shell of the coat done. I've got the lining coat of the coat done. And so I just have to um, combine them. So um, you can come back to me now. And I've got a couple more things that I just want to point out. Um, for those of you who are oftentimes juggle, because that's what we do, we sometimes juggle um, projects. Maybe you're working on a quilting project and then, oh, yeah, I want to make um, a birthday T-shirt for my um, for a young person. So you, you're going to have to use a different needle. So you take that original needle out and you set it aside. You finish that T-shirt and now you need to put that original needle back in and you wonder, huh? Is that needle still sewing worthy or should I have thrown it away? <laughs> well, here's a little trick for you. You can take that slightly used needle and you can run it across your fingernail. And if it leaves a scratch on your nail, guess what? You've got a burr and you need to toss it. Or if you've got a pair of old hose and I am never wearing hose again after this pandemic, um, so I've got old hose or maybe I've got some Jersey fabric. You can run the needle tip across your fabric. And if it snags, you know, you've got a burr and you need to toss that needle. So keep that in mind. But if um, you've got some slightly used needles, there is a product that you can keep in mind um, to keep your uh, slightly used needles organized, and that is the Grab It My Pad. And yes, you can find this link over on um, Sewing Parts Online. Um, just in search for My Pad, and you will find it. What is it? It's a thick piece of felt. And then we updated it last year so that all the different Smets needle types are listed. Um, using the Smets color chart. So blue for jeans, red for embroidery, et cetera. Then within each needle type, there's a cell for each needle size. So now you can organize your slightly used needles in an organized manner. Um, the My Pad comes with a little flower head pin. And this is to be, um, you use this for those older Smets needles that don't have the color coding. So once you take that needle out of the package and you put it in your machine, use the flower head pin to identify the needle currently in your machine. So again, you'll find this, um, the Grab It My Pad right over on um, uh, Sewing Parts Online. Oh, okay. And Rachel just posted the link there for you. 
So fantastic. Um, okay. Uh, I see uh, C. Lombard is asking about sashiko needles. And no, Smets does not have sashiko needles. Um, that is a very specialized needle. And um, it's not a type that we currently um, we currently offer. So um, let's see, I can take some questions. Looks like I've got seven minutes left. <laughs> we've carried, we've covered a lot of information. So again, um, so, uh, Sewing Parts Online carries the, the bundles. There's the piecing and quilting bundle that comes with a little um, luggage tag and the um, ABC Pocket Guide. And actually, the ABC Pocket Guide is the foundation to the Smets app. So again, you find the images that uh, we saw earlier. Here's my favorite image about the eyes of the needle. So you don't have to remember that the top stitch and metallic have an elongated eye or the embroidery also has an, a whiter eye. The um, ABC Pocket Guide also has a reminder of how to read the needle pack. You know, what do those numbers mean? <laughs> so 130705H is your needle system. And I see a question just popped up. It's going back. I can't see who asked it, but somebody just asked about serger needles. So oftentimes, often, but not always, sergers require a certain needle system. ELX705 or ELX705CF is a popular needle system for sergers. Um, needle system ELX705 is similar to a home sewing machine needle, 130705H, but ELX705 has not just a front groove on the needle, but ELX705 has a second groove on the backside of the, of the needle. So keep that in mind. You cannot use needle system ELX705 in your home sewing machines. Sometimes you can use a regular um, home sewing machine needle in your serger. You have to be aware of... Um, well, you need to talk to your dealer, talk to a uh, sewing parts online um, if you can use a regular home sewing machine needle in your serger. And um, sometimes you have to use that ELX 705. Okay. Um, yes, looks like they've got links up there um, for sewing parts online. The other thing I'll just mention um, about your needle system is if you use a long arm machine, um, oftentimes they use a different needle system. So those are different than our flat shank needle for our home sewing machine. So just to give you a couple examples of long arm um, needle systems would be a 206X13 or a 134R or 135X17 or 135X5. Uh, so there's there's about five different needle systems that are used primarily by long arm, um, long arm machines. And I know that um, Sewing Parts Online has a vast array of those different um, needle systems um, on, their, on, their, um, on their website. So you can check that out. Christy's asking if you can use Smets need needles on Jukies. Yes, absolutely. Smets home sewing machine needles work with all the brands. I would say that Smets home sewing machine needles work with 99% of all, um, all models of the different sewing machine companies. Now, there's always a little exception. Every once in a while, Janome will have um, a specific model or Baby Lock will have a specific model that does not um, use 130705H, but those are really far and few between. Um, between. So again, 99% of all of your home sewing machines use needle system 130705H. That's a flat shank needle with a, a scarf. And yes, Stacy uses um, her Smets needles with Bernina. Absolutely. Um, Mary's asking if Smets has nonstick needles for industrial needles. Well, yes, they do. Um, you would need to know specifically what um, needle system um, to, to find that find that out. And you could ask um, 
uh, sewing parts online, they, they would be able to help you. Um, Laura is saying that her Janome uses an H-LL, and that is a leather needle. So yes, you can use um, the Smets leather needle in your um, Janome um, machine. Um, let's see. Oh, oh, okay. A couple of people are asking about the serger system uh, for sergers. That's E L X seven o five. So, how do you know? You know, if you've got your serger, open up that front cover, and oftentimes there'll be a sticky label or even an imprint that will say E L X seven o five. ELX 705 CF, which just means chrome finish. Some of the newer um, sergers uh, will say 130 705 H, which is your home sewing machine um, needle. My machine, I have a baby lock serger and it says use ELX 705 CF. But I know from working with my dealer um, and my baby lock friends that I can use a regular home sewing machine needle in my machine. But when I start having problems with my stitches, then yes, I will do what the manufacturers suggest. I will use that ELX 705 and the machine will sew beautifully. So just to bring that to, to your attention. Robin, well, thank you. Robin's been using Smith's needles um, on her Singer machine for over 30 years. So, yes, thank you. Okay, let me see. Woo! I'm back. I, I didn't want to interrupt you because there was so much good information. <laughs> it was lovely. Well, who we knew there was so much to know about Smet's needles? But here's the deal. I hope that um, I've removed some of the mystery about the needle, that the size is actually based of a measurement on the actual blade of the needle. And I hope I've removed some of the mystery about all those numbers on, on the needle pack because you know what? I realize that needles aren't glamorous. They're not sexy. They're not romantic. So I appreciate everyone who spent the last hour here learning about needles. And where are you going to buy your needles? Yeah, you're going to go to soulpartsonline.com. They make it really easy for you. So that, thanks for inviting me here today. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Rhonda. We appreciate you. And you did a great job answering the questions as we went along. So I think if we're good, we'll let you go on with your day. And hopefully you can tune on in with us next time. Okay. Well, thanks for including me. And thanks, everyone. So Smets. Have a great day. That was such a great presentation. I know I learned a lot. <laughs> in customer service, we had a lot of questions regarding needles and she just answered a bunch of them. That app, I'm totally gonna be getting that app because all of that information in one place is really awesome. Speaking of information in one place, so I wanna show you this needle chart that we offer. You can just type in needle poster on our website. It helps you decide what type of needle you need to use in what situation. So if you're sitting there going, I have no clue, you know. It'll ask you questions, very simple questions. Is the fabric stretchy? Go this way, pick through here. Is it leather? Go to the leather needle. It just goes through, asks you all the questions that you need and it will give you the result and you'll know which needle to use. And also regarding those bundles that Rhonda had mentioned, we currently are adding them to our site. We have a vast array of the Schmetz needles already, but we are going to get those specific bundles that she mentioned so that you can order them as the bundle. We do, however, have several of these bundles available to give away for prizes. So the one that she did is the quilting. So it comes with the universal needles, and then you've got the jeans needle, a top stitch needle, quilting needle, and the Microtex. It also comes with the adorable color-coded chart, the little luggage tag that she was talking about. Super cute. And then the handy dandy ABC pocketbook. So this has a bunch of information in it as well. The anatomy of the needle. And it also has several pages regarding specifics of each type of needle. So these are great. These value around $25 a piece. So we are gonna give away, I believe nine of those. And we'll do that here shortly. 
Uh, the other thing, I was going to show you that needle chart on the back, but you can hardly see it. It's, it's hiding back there, <laughs> but it's pretty cute. You can add it to your sewing room. It creates a, a great decoration. All right, well, let's go ahead and pull up that giveaway tool. Before we pick our first winner, I just want to remind everybody that the way that you get entered into the giveaway is to comment. You guys are doing fantastic. Keep that up. Everybody's getting entered into the giveaway. If you're over on TikTok or Instagram, please head on over to Facebook or YouTube. That way you can comment there and you'll get entered into the giveaway as well. So let's pick our first one. We're going to do nine of these, so we're going to keep on going. So let's go and draw the first one right now. All right. See what the first one is. And I'm just going to hold these up again. Okie dokie. Nancy Richards Connolly. Congratulations. You get one of these needle bundles. Let me get my little mouse here. All right, so you just need to claim number five. That's gonna be yours. Number five is your needle pack. So now number six, also a needle pack. Here we go. This is the fun part, right? <laughs> Keep commenting if you wanna get in on the drawing. You still have a chance. We're doing nine of these. Carolyn Fields, congratulations. Number six is for Carolyn Fields. Okay, number seven. We're just going to keep on going. Here we go. Who's going to be next? I love this little tool. Pick all the winners for us. Beth Mecco. Mecco? <laughs> it's all together, right? <laughs> all right. You are number seven. All right. And stick around, guys. I will tell you how to claim your prize here in just a moment. We're going to get through and select the names. Number eight. Spinning, spinning. Chris Yost, congratulations. You have number eight needle bundle. Here we go again. I love giving away stuff. <laughs> These bundles are great. Emily Dugan, you are number nine. Number nine, congratulations, Emily. Got a few more to go. Let's draw again. A little bit longer. Elizabeth F on YouTube. Thank you, Elizabeth. You are number 10. Thanks for commenting. Keep it up, guys. Here we go. Let's do number 11. This is going to be for the needle, the quilty needle bundle. Mundy Miller, congratulations. You have number 11. Two more to go. Let's draw again. Keep on going. Look at all those names. You guys are doing awesome on commenting. Becky Ryan Kelvin, congratulations. You are number 12. You won another one of these quilty needle packs. All right, we've got two more. Do we have two more, Brian? One, one more. One more. One more. <laughs> Pamela Tinkle. Pamela follows us on Facebook. Yay, congratulations, Pamela. You won number 13. All right, I think that does it. We are doing nine of them. I think that's nine. It sure is. All right, let's come back over here. So that is fun. It's so nice to have an assortment of needles. I don't know about anybody else, but there's those times where you're doing a project and it's a really small one and you're like, ah, I don't need to change my needle. It's okay. I'm just sewing a little bit of knit. I'm not going to change my needle. And then you don't and you have issues and you could have solved all those issues by changing your needle. <laughs> so now I have a bunch of needles and now you're going to have a bunch of needles as well. But needles are important. Rhonda did a fabulous job talking about why they're important. If you have any questions about needles or you need to know the type that fit your machine, just give our customer service a call. They are more than happy to look it up for you. 
We have it on our website, but we also can look it up in manuals as well. So we can help you out. But now, um, up next, we are going to do some pre-recorded videos for lunch. We're going to take a brief break and we will be back. Make sure to grab a cup of coffee or your notebook so you can take notes during this fun live. And we'll be back after lunch. Today I'm going to show you this really cool presser foot that you can use to get similar results that you would get with a serger, but you can do it on your sewing machine. Hey everybody, Trisha here with Sewing Parts Online. So let's talk about this overcast foot. What it does is it produces a stitch that wraps around the edge of the fabric that's going to secure the edges and prevents unraveling gives you a really professional look and you can do it all without having to buy another machine. Like how cool is that? Please go ahead and like and subscribe. That way you'll get notified of any future videos that we have. The overcast foot can be known as an over edge foot. The style of the foot may vary depending on the manufacturer, but essentially they work the same way. This foot has a little bridge or a bar within the stitching area. This allows more thread into the stitch. The needle will go back and forth over the bridge. Also, there's an extension off the front of the foot. This is a guide for your fabric. Once you select the proper stitch on your machine, when the needle swings to the right, it will be positioned just off the edge of the fabric. And when it swings to the left, it will be on the left side of the bridge. Most machines from basic to advanced can use an overcast foot unless your machine is a straight stitch machine. If it's a straight stitch machine, your needle doesn't have that option to go back and forth over the bridge, therefore it can't form the stitch. This is what the overcast stitch looks like on a basic mechanical machine. You can also use a zigzag stitch and a multi zigzag stitch when using the overcast foot. Just make sure to double check your manual so that you select the proper stitch and setting. Now this is how it's displayed on the advanced computerized machine. Completely different machines, but yet they both can use an overcast foot. My manual describes several different overcast stitches, just depending on what fabric I'm using. I went ahead and selected a couple of different ones. Um, the first one I want to show you is the overlock stitch. Um, this one is going to give you the look similar to what the professional overlock machines would give you. So let's go take a look. Once you've installed the foot, slowly rotate your hand wheel towards you. Make sure the needle will not hit the bar or the foot. Now we're ready to use this presser foot. Another favorite is the knit stitch. This one is recommended when you're sewing on synthetic knits or stretch velours. It's going to provide you elasticity and strength. Please comment below. Let me know how you're planning on using your overcast foot. I highly suggest exploring the different stitches that you can do with this great presser foot. You'll find that it really makes a difference on your projects. You can use this presser foot to produce other neat results, such as fringe or even the look of a rolled hem like you would get on a serger. Make sure to check out our other video on the overcast foot so you can see all those cool ideas. Until next time, happy sewing everybody!
Don't you just love it when an accessory has multiple purposes? This little foot will not only help you do stitch in a ditch or edge joining, you can also get beautiful top stitching. Stick around and I'll tell you what it is. Hey everyone, Trisha here with Sewing Parts Online. So let's talk about the stitch in a ditch foot. Or is it an edge foot? You may have even heard it called a top stitching foot. I know it can be confusing, but don't worry. It's the same foot, different name. Let's see what it can do. As with many presser feet, there are different styles. For example, here we've got a couple of snap-on options. Whereas this one and this one, those screw on. This one here is an attachment for the AccuFeed system. They may look a little different, but they work the same way. Each option is going to have a guide coming off the center front of the foot. You can use it as just a guide or in other applications it's going to spread the two pieces of fabric apart so you can sew just in between. Please take a moment to like and subscribe, that way you'll get notified of any future videos. To do stitch in a ditch sewing, set your needle to the center needle position. It should be aligned with the guide at the front of the foot. The guide can be used to follow the seam line. As previously mentioned, it'll hold apart the fabric just enough to sew in between. I've used a contrasting thread so you can easily see, but if you use a similar thread color, it's essentially invisible. When edge joining, you're doing exactly that, joining two edges together. To use this foot for edge joining, place the fabric so that the edges are touching the blade. Instead of a straight stitch, you'll need to set your machine to a zigzag stitch or a multi-zigzag stitch. You can also use decorative stitches and different widths, but as long as it's wide enough to catch both fabrics, you should be good. One example where I love to use the edge joining foot is for using up leftover quilt batting. There are often times when you've got like just leftover scraps that you don't have enough to complete a project, but if you combined them, you'd be able to make a whole new piece. In this case, I used a triple zigzag stitch. It keeps it flat and the center doesn't want to protrude up because it's got that extra center stitch. If those applications weren't cool enough, I think my favorite has got to be the top stitching. I love doing doll clothes and sometimes it's really hard to get those really narrow top stitching, so this foot has been a game changer for me. Go ahead and place your fabric next to the guide. I like to start at center needle position and then in small increments move my needle over. When I think I've moved it over enough, I slowly lower my needle and just double check how far it is from the edge of the fabric. When I get the distance that I like, I begin sewing. You can go back and increase your needle distance and do a second row of stitches. This gives a professional clean look to your work. Getting inspired? Please comment below. Let me know your ideas. I'd love to hear them. You can also easily attach your binding to your quilt with this presser foot. Just know that in order to do this on your machine, you do have to have the option of a right needle position. I've pre-made some quilt sandwiches so you can see what I'm doing. I used a two and a half inch strip for my binding. Fold your strip in half and press. Place the raw edge of the binding next to the raw edge of your quilt sandwich and sew a quarter inch from the edge. Flip and press. Turn your work and flip your binding over and cover your stitches. Now we can go use our presser foot. Once again, I'll utilize my handy dandy guide just force of habit, I start at the center needle position and position my fabric, then I move the needle over to my liking. How beautiful is that? As you can see, there are so many different ways to utilize this presser foot, and I didn't even share all of them. Head over to our other video on this presser foot and we'll share even more ideas, including pin tucking and using it for applique. Thank you for joining me. Until next time, happy sewing everybody.
Hey everybody, Trisha here with Sewing Parts Online. Have you ever been walking through your sewing store and you see one of those fancy machines with the laser and you think to yourself, man, I wish my little machine had that feature. Well, guess what? There's a notion out there that will give you that experience. And it not only works well, but it won't break the budget. Stick around and I'll tell you what it is. It's the three-in-one rechargeable laser system by Vivilux. Let me say that again, rechargeable. I don't know about you, but I really dislike buying batteries. So that alone had me looking at this product. What do you say we unbox this thing? So let's see what goodies we have. We've got the actual laser. The little light box measures two and a quarter inches by one and a half inches. The little flexible gooseneck is approximately seven inches long. Just a little side note, this may be white or black. You get your USB charging cord and your wall mount. Place that in there. And then this end would just plug right into your laser and you'll be able to plug it into the wall and charge your laser. Now I know that you're going to want to use your laser right away, but when you get it, please make sure to charge it for at least three hours. While charging, there's going to be a little red light on the back. Once it's completely charged, that will go away. Next we have our little interchangeable caps. These are going to adjust the laser beam. On the side, it shows a little picture showing you which one it is. You've got a dot, the line, and the crosshair. I'm sorry if you can't see this on camera, but in person they're, they're very convenient. Next, depending on the laser system that you select, it'll come with hook and loop tape, which I will affectionately refer to as Velcro, since that's how I know it. <laughs> you also get your alignment guide, which we will be discussing more further on in the video. And you get 100 alignment stickers. We do sell more of these um, individually if needed. Lastly, it comes with a little instruction packet. All of that in one little box. There are several different options to choose from when it comes to these lasers. So the first thing that I wanna mention is the color of the actual laser. You've got a red option and you have a green option. So with the red option, we found that it works really well on light colored fabrics. Also, it's a great choice if you're just getting into using a laser system since it is a little less in price. Now with the green, a um, couple of things that I really like about the green option. Um, although it is a little bit more, it is actually intended to reduce eye fatigue. So we all know sitting at your machine for a long period of time, that can be a real issue. So that was a huge benefit to me. Also, I find that the, the high, like really bright green beam is very easy to see on an assortment of fabrics. So I just think all around, it's the better choice for myself. What do you think you would use? Comment below. Here are several different fabrics ranging in color and pattern so that you can see how the different lasers look on each one. So let's talk about how we're going to attach it to our machine. We've got the Velcro attachment or the magnetic option. Now the magnetic attachment is intended for sewing machines with a metal body. Most of the newer machines are made with a hard plastic shell. Those will require the Velcro option just because metal, magnetic, plastic, magnet won't work, right? So you do have to get the Velcro option. I myself prefer the Velcro. I found that the magnetic one wasn't quite strong enough for my liking, but the Velcro, super easy to install in your machine and it has the hold that I'd like. As for where you put it on your machine, that's really a preference. Um, some common places would be up top, on the inside, or right here. So I am going to be installing it on the top just because I like it out of my way and I think that will work very well on this machine. I'm going to install it and show you how it works. Just a quick note, I did decide to install it on the side of the machine instead. Now let's take a closer look at the interchangeable caps. The one millimeter dot is used to mark the point on your fabric where you want your needle. 
The line is to mark a straight sewing line. It works as a perfect visual for a seam and a cutting guide, and it will work with any seam allowance. The crosshair helps you locate the center on an embroidery project, a quilt block, or a pocket. Let's do a close-up view of the alignment guide. This little tool is great. You've got your quarter inch increments on the one side and some of your standard measurements on the other. Let's say you wanted to do a 7 8 inch seam. You would place your needle in the little hole and then you would center your guide on your machine and then you would line up your laser on the side of the guide. Let's go see how it works. Since I chose a 7 8 inch seam, I did lower the needle into the 7 8 inch hole. Now I can freely move around my guide. I'm going to use the lines on the needle plate and the grid on the alignment guide to straighten it out. Once I've found the appropriate spot, I'm just going to lower my presser foot to help it from moving. Now I can turn on my laser and just bring it over to the edge of the alignment guide. Once you have it appropriately positioned, then you can just lift up your presser foot, lift your needle, and remove the guide. Now you can just move through your project with ease. And that is just one example of many. Please make sure that you comment below. Let me know how you would use this awesome product. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Although this product has been around for a little while, it's just too good not to talk about. Got to give credit where credit is due. Until next time, happy sewing, everybody. Thank you.
Have you ever found the Thank you. 
have those times that you're trying to begin to sew and the corner of your fabric gets sucked into the needle plate? Oh my goodness, it can be so frustrating. Stick around and I'll tell you how to solve this issue. Hello lovely people, Trisha here with Sewing Parts Online. So as I mentioned, I'm gonna tell you what that solution is to avoid that pesky situation where your fabric gets sucked into the needle plate. Do you know what it is? It's a straight stitch plate. I'm going to tell you all about it, but before I do, please make sure that you like and subscribe. That way you'll get notified of any future videos. Let's get started. To understand this better, I wanna show you the standard needle plate next to the straight stitch plate. So on the standard needle plate, you've got a wide opening. This will allow you to do a variety of stitches where your needle will have the ability to go back and forth. This is a great plate, but as with any great accessory, there's a time and a place for it. Now with the straight stitch plate, see how that's a very small opening? There's only enough room for your needle to go through. This single hole has support all the way around as the needle stitch is being formed. This is going to prevent distortion in the fabric and it helps reduce puckering. And best of all, it prevents crying. <laughs> Just kidding. It prevents your fabric from getting sucked into your machine. They're both wonderful plates, but I absolutely love the straight stitch plate. So when should you use this needle plate? Honestly, any time that you're doing a straight stitch, in my mind, is a good time to use this plate. But it is especially helpful if you're working with delicate fabrics. Pair it with a straight stitch foot and it's a game changer. I'll include a straight stitch foot video at the end of this video. Also, it's great when you're doing piecing for your quilt. When making your quilt blocks, you start sewing at the very edge of the fabric. Because you have that support around the needle hole, you can start right at the edge with no problem. If you're quilting specifically, I suggest using the quarter inch foot in conjunction with the straight stitch plate. I will also include a link for that video. Make sure you check both of them out. Sadly, the straight stitch plate isn't available for every make and model of machine. If you need help determining if there's one for your machine, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We are more than happy to help. Some machines will have a sensor that will tell you when the straight stitch plate is on your machine, and then it'll do the thinking for you. It won't allow you to select any stitches that um, until the needle moving back and forth because the opening's not big enough. Um, also, some will either gray it out or like this one, they won't even be available. It's only letting me select stitches that I can use with this particular plate. This is a really nice feature and will help you um, keep from breaking needles. This is what it looks like when the zigzag plate is attached. See how many different stitch options you have? Just note that not all machines have this feature, so it's really good practice to just double check that your machine is set to the straight stitch and that your needle is in the correct position. Also, I like to use my hand wheel and slowly bring down the needle and ensure that it is going to go in the hole and that it will not hit the plate. We don't want any broken needles. Please leave me a comment. Let me know if you've had to dodge a flying needle. I've gathered a variety of straight stitch plates so that you can see they come in different sizes and different shapes and have different markings on them. But do you see what's similar on every single one of these? you've got a very small opening where the needle goes into the plate. I do absolutely love my straight stitch plate on my Janome machine. It not only has the one small opening, but it gives you three options, left needle position, center, and right. That gives you more choices. Also, it has a lot of different markings on the plate. Just be sure to check your manual. It's going to cover those specific markings for you. Just a little reminder, don't forget to check out the quarter inch foot and the straight stitch foot video. Can you think of a circumstance where this needle plate would be handy? Or just make your sewing experience more enjoyable? Until next time, happy sewing everybody.
No one should have to throw away the sewing machine that their grandma taught them how to sew on. Those memories are priceless. Our family-owned business started in 1997 and has since grown to amass one of the largest inventories for sewing machine parts. Say goodbye to the big box sewing stores where you wander the aisles with unanswered questions. Our customer support is an extension of your sewing room, ready to help you with all of your sewing needs. Our consistently released tutorials help you master your craft. We're always sourcing new products that will help you sew straighter, more accurately, and with greater confidence. Whether you quilt, embroider, or sew your own clothing, we're here to empower your sewing journey. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed your lunch. Before we move forward, I just want to go over a couple of things again uh, to get entered into our giveaway. Make sure that you comment. If you are watching on TikTok or Instagram, head over to our Facebook or YouTube so you can comment there. That way you don't miss out on getting into the giveaway. Also, to claim your prizes, if you have one, just go to the link tree in our description, click claim your prize, and then there's a form that you can fill out and you can submit that form. All right, next up, Trevor from RNK. He uh, recorded a video for us and we're gonna go through and see some information on some Floriani thread, quilt and design, and the Total Controls U software. So Trevor's up next. Thank you very much for having me. I'm so excited to be part of So Creative Live. And thank you, Trisha, and everybody from SewingPartsOnline.com for inviting me and hosting this very special um, presentation. So yeah, um, today I'm going to be telling you guys about some of our cool new thread products. We've got new variegateds. We have new glow-in-the-dark thread. Um, I'll tell you about a cool free embroidery software from Floriani that I'm sure you'll want to look into. And then we'll wrap things up with a cool presentation of our new design and quilt software that was inspired by Alex Anderson. And so if that sounds good to you guys, then sit back, relax, and enjoy the next 20 or so minutes with me, Trevor, from r &K Distributing. And so let's go ahead and get started. I'm so excited to be here today on behalf of r &K, distributors of Floriani, Quilter Select, and Embellished Products. We make the products that take your embroidery, quilting, and crafting to the next level. In today's presentation, I'm going to show you some brand new products and ways to use them to enhance your creativity. For ongoing inspiration, be sure to visit our Create with RNK blog and follow us on Facebook. Who doesn't love new threads? You know I do. Just in time for the holidays is an assortment of five glow-in-the-dark threads. By day, each is a soft shade of yellow, purple, blue, pink, or white. When the lights go down, these threads come out to play. They're perfect for Halloween projects, for your Halloween swag or the holiday swag, and they would be special touch in the windows. Imagine stitching on pillowcase cuffs or sweatshirts, even for decorative stitching. These 40 weight threads are a glowing replacement for any project where you would use your normal embroidery thread. I believe that there are some awesome specials available for you today. I absolutely love variegated thread. There's something just very special about it. I love that it's so forgiving when doing free motion quilting if your quilting's not like 100% perfect. And um, it's so visually interesting when used in quilting or in decorative stitching. And for embroidery, wow, the sky's the limit. It's great in lettering, monogramming, outline style designs, red work style designs. Um, variegated thread colors elevate simple embroidery designs to a new level. And you're going to want to check out all of these cool fall, fall um, color combos. Um, or these two brand new colors that are perfect for your holiday stitching. Anyway, we're just sure that you're going to want to collect all of the new thread from r &K. And for that person that wants it all, there's a special bundle where we have one of each of the new variegated thread colors, as well as one of each of all of our cool new glow-in-the-dark thread colors. Thank you, Trevor. I am loving that variegated thread. And don't even get me started on the glow in the dark. I am so excited for Halloween now. Floriani thread is just so pretty. Shoot me a comment. Let me know what you plan on doing with your Floriani thread. Here's a cool pro tip. 
You can use the Floriani Creative Express software to open and view the sewing sequence of an embroidery design and you can even select the threads and change their colors and I'll even show you how you can interact with the new cool variegated thread colors using this cool free software that's right Floriani Creative Express is a hundred percent free software um, you can learn more about it by visiting our website rnksoftware.club and um, you can download it and install it and use it today. Um, there's lots of great things and you'll get to join our RNK Software Club where you can watch videos about the Floriani Creative Express software as well as all kinds of other amazing videos that are all found from within our RNK Software Club. And so let me take a moment and show you a little bit about our cool Floriani Creative Express software. This is the Floriani Creative Express software that you can download for free from the rnksoftware.club website. Um, I don't have time to show you a lot of things about it today, but you can learn a lot about it with the cool videos on the rnksoftware.club website. Uh, what I will show you today is how you could use the browser on the right hand side to point to you know any folder in your computer and then hover over designs to see all of the designs that are in that folder and you can scroll through and it makes it very nice and visual um, if you find a design that you want to open you can just click and drag to bring it onto your workspace um, so as that design is opening up one of the things that's really amazing is that um, down at the bottom these are the Floriani colors and I could easily select you know the color blue and choose any color blue from the Floriani color palette um, if you wanted to use a different color palette maybe you have some new cool quilt or select thread um, what you can do well first of all you can click on this button right here to choose match palette and it pops up a list and these are all of the different thread palettes that come in the software and basically you can color match from one thread brand to another um, very quickly and easily and so I'll just scroll down find the perfect select pair of cotton poly that cool 80s weight thread and instantly the design is converted and all of the colors are now matched to the pair of cotton poly and maybe you bought some of that cool variegated thread that was on sale today well now let me show you down at the very bottom I can change the color palette to any color palette that was comes with the software and so just click on the list and you'll see in here that we actually have the Floriani variegated and mixed thread palette in here and so for example if I click on the color red that's all of the part that becomes highlighted wonder what it would look like in kind of a cool orange and yellow variegated you click right here and it recolors it and now you can see what it would actually look like with the variegated colors um, you can get more of a realistic look by clicking on the 3d button over here and if you want to see how the design stitches you can just click up at the top to simulate the sewing and so there's a lot of really great reasons to get the creative express software and first of all it's absolutely free and so just visit our website download the creative express software and look in the software club for all of the great videos to teach you all of the things that you can do with the creative express software um, of course floriani has some amazing software that you can purchase uh, for example um, use the help menu and go into demo mode and try any of the different Floriani software that's available for purchase and that way you'll know before you buy it just how much you're going to love it here's some breaking news there's an amazing special on the Floriani FTCU software this is a limited time offer and if you purchase the Floriani FTCU software today, it comes with some amazing special bonuses with over $3,000 worth of value, including the Floriani Lettering Master software add-on, which basically gives you the professional um, capabilities to create your own fonts, uh, just like a professional would. Um, another thing that's super cool is if you buy the Floriani FTCU software today, 
you get 15 you design it embroidery collections and let me tell you a you design it collection is a ton of fun because they're like interactive stock design collections each one of these includes dozens and dozens of designs that when combined together create unlimited potential and so imagine sitting down with your grandkids to make cool little monsters or robots or assemble your own little train engine um, there's monster trucks and you know vesna jars and spring flowers there's 15 different you design it collections that you'll get um, completely free when you buy the software and um, probably the best of all is the big beautiful box of a hundred spools of thread you guys this is the most beautiful floriani polyester 40s weight embroidery thread you'll ever stitch with and it's just so amazing when you get a whole box of a hundred of them all put together it's one of my very favorite things to get and anyway you guys um, now more than ever is the best time to purchase the Floriani embroidery software. It's called FTCU. Um, if you've downloaded the free Creative Express software, you can use the demo mode and go ahead and check out the cool FTCU and all of the different Lettering Master or any of the Floriani embroidery software. But wait, there's more. And we've saved something very special for last today because we have our new designing quilt software that's inspired by Alex Anderson and I'd like to tell you guys a little bit about it today. Um, first of all, it's a program that you would use to plan, you know, preview and prepare for your quilt. You're going to still quilt the same way you always have. It's just an additional tool to help you in the planning stage. And one of the benefits is being able to know before you sew. And it's perfect for traditional piecing, foundation piecing, um, capable for doing applique. Um, it's got all kinds of capabilities um, for other types of specialty things like embroidery quilting or long arm quilting, but really even just for the everyday sort of traditional quilter you'll love using designing quilt as part of your process to help you to plan your quilts and decide before you buy the fabric do you like it better in the red colorways or the blue colorways and so um, without further ado i'd like to pop over to my software and give you guys a short demonstration so this is the new Design and Quilt software inspired by Alex Anderson. And one of the cool things is it includes all of the different blocks and quilts that Alex has created for Quilter Select. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and close our Quilter Select Today page and um, just show you that here, these yellow tools are our block library and our quilt library. And so if I click on block library, it would allow me to browse through and choose a quilt block. Um, there's different categories of blocks and you just scroll through to choose, you know, whichever category that you want to choose from. And then the options become available. And basically once you click to select your block, it opens up. And one of the big sort of, I guess, payoffs to using the software is the ability to access the information in the print preview. Um, so I'll go ahead and click on print preview now and just show you that um, basically here you have uh, little check boxes of all the things that will be included and you can choose to not include them or include them as you will. Um, I won't go through all of the different options, but the idea is if you don't want the uh, foundation paper piecing instructions, you can uncheck it and it won't get included. Um, if you wanted actual size, you know, templates to cut, maybe you want to choose that instead. And then that's what will get included. And you get to tell it which seam allowance you're going to have and what kind of fabric size you're buying. And based upon the information that you tell it, all of the results are um, provided. And so basically I told it 44 inch fabric and the minimum cut was like four and a half inches. And so basically when I say, okay, that 
information is updated to whatever you chose. And so the first page is a picture of my block. Um, it has numbers for the different fabrics. The second page is a piece analysis, kind of showing us all the pieces that we're going to need to prepare to make this block. The next page would be the fabric summary, telling you how much of each fabric you would need to make this block. Um, and when you're doing an entire quilt, this page becomes really valuable because it tells you, you know, exactly how much fabric you need to buy. Um, if I go to the next page, now you start to see the actual sized piece templates that you could then um, cut out to piece that together. And essentially, this is kind of just one of the big benefits is, um, you know, if you have a whole quilt laid out, so I'll click on the quilt library and maybe open up one of Alex's quilts. This is one of my favorites. It's called Flower Pops. And now I've got an entire sort of quilt that's been prepared. And if I click on the print preview, instead of giving me, you know, just that one block, it'll actually give me all of the pieces for all of the blocks. It'll also tell me all of the applique pieces, um, all of the border pieces, all of the information that basically you need to make your quilt will be included. Um, and then you, again, sort of choose what you want, which pages you do or don't want to have printed and set your seam allowance for the project. And then when you say, okay, that updates. And so um, now you can kind of page through and essentially print out the pages as you want them. Um, but this is the kind of instructions. And so here's your fabric uh, list, you know, to do this sort of flower pops quilt. And you can see how it tells you how much of each fabric color that you're going to need. So um, the design and quilt software has a lot of really amazing tools to help you create your own custom quilts and so i'll plan to come up again another time and maybe show you how to create your own quilt box and um, also how to design your own quilt layouts and that kind of stuff and how to change the colors and how to add your own fabrics and so there's a lot of cool things that we can do and so i know that we have kind of only so much time today but you've got me booked to come again and so i'll plan to show something kind of different each time but um, one of the things that i really love before i let you go today is the ability to take a snapshot of your quilt so it's like this is what it looks like now and um, I think I love it but I'm just gonna take a snapshot so there's a button here create a snapshot and essentially it makes whatever format you want but it's things like JPEG or PNG or BMP and so if I say to make a JPEG of this and maybe just save it onto my desktop or something and give it a name you know I'll just call it number one to be you know make it simple but when I click Save it'll actually create an actual size image. It's gonna be a 48 inch image of our quilt. You could literally take that and print this quilt if that's what you wanted to do. Um, but I don't generally print them as much as I like to email them to my mom and be like, what do you think mom does it look better in white or you know maybe a different color you know and you want to try different things and so we'll learn more about swapping colors but just as an example if you um want to try a different background and, and white's your background color and you have a color palette at the bottom i could just click and drag to put the pink kind of over top of the white and recolor the quilt to pink and then, you know, that might be like, oh, that's okay, you know, not too bad. Um, you know, then maybe you want to try something really different like black. And it's, you know, you can just try different kind of colors on. Um, like I said, we'll come back and learn how to add fabrics and do fabrics to your quilts. Um, but each time that I did that, I could take a snapshot, you know, and say, well, here's what it looks like in pink and here's what it looks like in blue etc etc and then like i said email the whole lot to your mom and say um which one do you like better and that way you know before you go to the store to cut your fabric guys and so um you're gonna think design and quilt is amazing it's a very um, easy to use modern software and one of the coolest things is the training um oh my goodness um, there's over 80 videos currently in our training list and we're adding new videos um, as great ideas and new tools come available and so um, we know you're going to want that in fact even before you buy it 
you can uh, visit the rnksoftware.club website, watch the training videos, learn all about it. Um, but I know that you're going to want to take advantage of the extra special uh, pricing that we have available uh, at the event today. And so, yeah, thanks so very much for having me today. And um, I'll look forward to seeing you guys again. Awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed my presentation today. And I just want to remember to say thank you to Trisha and everybody at sewingpartsonline.com. Um, I'm so happy to be part of um, So Creative Live this week. And thank you for having me, you guys. And so um, until I see you again, thank you so much. And I'm going to hand it back over to you, Trisha, and you can tell everybody how they can take advantage of the special opportunities. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you, Trevor, for making that video for us. Sadly, he wasn't able to make it live this time, but next time he will definitely be with us live. As you can see in front of me, I have a lot going on, but <laughs> we want to talk about the specials going on, the special special pricing, excuse me. So I'm going to pull up some information for you. Uh, before we move forward, though, just a reminder, we are doing a giveaway at the end of this segment. So make sure to keep on commenting so you get in that giveaway. If you're on TikTok or Instagram, head over to Facebook, or YouTube, comment there. That way you get involved as well. So first one I want to talk about is the Floriani, Floriani Total Control U software. So let me pull this up here and I'll show you. With the purchase of this software, it retails for the $4,299.99. And it is on sale on our website right now for $2,999.99. That is not the special event pricing. So make sure to call the number at the top of the screen to get the So Creative Live special event pricing. Because with this purchase of the software, you are going to get the uh, thread pack that is a hundred thread pack. And actually, let me pull that up really quick. Take this off. I want to show you. I've got to grab it. Here we go. I was trying to pick it up. It was a little heavy, but look at this thread pack. It's a hundred pack of thread of the beautiful 40 weight embroidery thread. So with that purchase, you get all of this thread and then you get the lettering, um, the lettering master, and then also the U designed software as well. So it values over $3,000 of extras when you get the Floriani Total Control U software. So talk about a great deal if you've been thinking on getting this, perfect time to get it. Again, just call for that special pricing. Our customer service team is waiting to secure that awesome price for you. And again, beautiful thread, heck yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's look at the second one. I'm gonna set that here for a moment. So let's talk about the design and quilt. The design and quilt, with the purchase of that today, you're looking at, it normally is MSRP of the $769.99. We have it on sale for $639.99. Again, that is not the special event pricing, that's just our awesome sale pricing. So give our customer service a call and they will help you secure that. But with this purchase today, you're going to get the bonus pack that values over $150. So. Let me show you that with the design and quilt you are going to get. Now, let me make sure I'm getting the right thing here. $150 pack. So you're going to get the 18 by 24 quilter select mat. It's going to come with the quilter select um, air erasable marker. This is one of my favorites. Set that down. You're going to get seven quilt patterns. USB stick with some preloaded information on it for you. And you're also going to get a ruler. And then the lovely Quilter Select Rotary Cutter. If you guys follow us on Facebook, I recently did a giveaway and did a short video on this particular rotary cutter. This thing is awesome. It is ambidextrous and it has like a nice grip on there. It's really nice for holding. It just feels really good in your hand. It has a fantastic weight on it. There's a magnetic section up here, so it's really easy to swap out the blade. It's a, it's a really, really cool rotary cutter. So again, with the purchase of the design and quilt, 
you get that $150 value pack. So now let's take a look at the thread. All of that thread was so, so beautiful. The new Floriani thread is gorgeous. You've got the variegated thread here first. It comes in assortment. You can either buy it individually or you can buy the new nine spool thread collection. Just go to our website and look up Floriani thread and you will be able to see that. I am a huge, huge, huge fan of the glow in the dark thread. How cool is this? I mean, Halloween coming up looks awesome. It's going to be fantastic coming up with creative ways to use that Floriani glow in the dark thread. So once again, we can go ahead and move into our giveaways. We've got several here. Actually, we've got two this time around. So let me grab these. Set that over here. So again, just to get involved in our giveaway, make sure to keep on commenting. Special pricing, anything that you're seeing here today, give our customer service a call and they will help you out. But we're gonna go right into giving away the first pack of Floriani thread. This is a 30 pack. It's a little smaller than that 100 pack that you could get with your bonus, but this one is awesome as well. This values, I believe, $135. So this is a pretty awesome prize. I hope you really enjoy this. Let's get our little giveaway tool pulled up. And that was our previous winner, Pamela. So let's see, we're gonna be doing number 15. Is that what we're at, Brian? Awesome, we're at number 15. So let's do the winner for number 15. Here we go. We've got Betsy from YouTube. Congratulations, Betsy. You are the winner of the 30 pack of Floriani embroidery thread. Let's do another pack. I guess I could keep the same one. <laughs> They're the same thing. <laughs> All right, let's draw again. Here we go. Who's it going to be? Almost there. Mary Jo Carlton. Congratulations, Mary Jo. Thank you for commenting. For both of you to claim your prize, just go to the description or link tree in the description. Click claim your prize and then there's a form to fill out. Just submit that and we'll get you your prize. All right, let me just set those aside. Next segment, we are going to be doing giveaways. So it's going to take us just a second to get set up with those giveaways and we will be back momentarily. Just make sure to keep on commenting so you're in.
Welcome back, everybody. Are we all excited for some giveaways? I love this segment. So before we scoot on into the giveaways, I wanna go do an overview, just in case you weren't here this morning. Um, I wanna just talk a little bit about our event and what to expect. So throughout this event, we're doing 28 awesome educators. They are coming on, sharing their information. As you can see, as we scroll through the schedule, it's jam packed with some awesome, awesome events. So as you come through, um, we're going to be streaming from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. We are doing over $26,000 worth of giveaways. At this point, it's over $26,000. <laughs> but the last thing I really want to talk about is our sponsors. Without our sponsors, we would not be able to do this. So I just want to take a moment to say thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your donations. We greatly appreciate it. So we are going to move into the giveaways, but I gotta say it again, in order to get entered, you need to comment. So please, please keep on commenting. Anybody that's watching on TikTok and Instagram, please head on over to YouTube and Facebook and put your comment in there. That's where our software is pulling from and that's where we'll be able to select the names. So without further ado, we can talk about what we are going to give away today. We've got this adorable little blue fig case filled with some goodies, which I'll show you in just a moment. We've got this Juki HZL 355Z uh, sewing machine. And we have the, of course, the cutie frame and the cutie legs are gonna be included and the Juki TL2000, or excuse me, the TL2000QI machine. Grace also included the bungee clamp, so you are going to be completely set in order to start doing some long arm quilting. If you missed the segment this morning, you might want to go back and watch that later. Grace, it was Jana Matthews and Melinda Romero with Grace, did an excellent demonstration on the cutie frame, and it's we're pretty excited to give this away. That's all I got to say. We're like super excited because it's a it's a really awesome bundle and. We're going to go through and I'll show you a little bit about the Juki machine and also a recap on the cutie frame. So, whew, a breath, right? <laughs> so let me go ahead and get to get this pulled up. So the first one that we are going to do is number 17. So the case, of course, you can see is absolutely adorable, but we have some goodies in here as well. Let me get this pulled up here. We've got the Quilter Select Air Erasable Marker in here. If you were on just a moment ago, one of my favorites. I absolutely love this marking tool. Adorable little case for Christmas. This is Bowen Pins, super cute. And how many spools of thread, Brian, did we say? 10? Let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Ha ha, 10. And they're beautiful assortment of Floriani thread. How cool is that, right? I'd say that's a pretty fun package if I do say so myself. Plus this little carrying case would not only work well for your thread, but you can also use it for a really big makeup bag. <laughs> I think it'd be perfect. Or art supplies or who knows? I mean, you could put so many things in here. All sorts of goodies. Okay, so that's gonna be the first one. We might as well go right on in and select the winner for that one. And again, that's going to be number 17. Let me pull up our giveaway tool. And we are going to click draw. Who's the lucky winner of the blue fig bag, the marker, and that thread? Oh, and the Bowen pins. Joe Womack, congratulations, Joe. You get this wonderful package. And stick around and I'll tell you how to claim your prize here in just a moment. Next, we have the Juki HZL 355Z sewing machine. Let me get this here. And you know what? Actually, I think I'm going to share my screen and show you a little bit about this particular model. So let me get that pulled up because I want you to see some features on this little model. Let's do this. Gotta love technology, right? Just another moment and I will get that pulled up. 
There we go. Let's share my screen and you'll see what I'm seeing. One more moment. I'm so sorry about the wait. I should have had this pulled up beforehand. There we go. Can you see me, Brian? Yes. All right. So let's talk a little bit about this little HZL355ZW machine. It is a fantastic mechanical machine, but it's got a few things in here that are really, really awesome. So let's scroll through and look at some of the built-in stitches. You've got 26 built-in stitches, so you can do a lot with that. Whether or not you're doing clothing or crafts or anything along those lines, it also comes with a button holder, so that's really nice as well. Free arm is always great because that's going to give you the ability to sew in the round. So let's just say you were doing your cuffs on your pants or on your sleeve and you had a little area, lets you sew in the round, super, super easy. Not every machine has that option of a free arm. And of course, your little accessory table turns into a storage case, so that's great. We all love the automatic needle threader. Sometimes very, very hard to thread that little needle, but the needle threaders make it super easy. And the built-in bobbin winder, fantastic. Over on the left-hand side, you'll be able to see some features of the machine, including the 750 stitches per minute, the built-in stitches, LED lighting, super awesome. And you've got a presser foot lift of nine millimeters, so it lifts a little bit higher, so you have um, the ability to put a thicker amount of fabric underneath the presser foot. Maximum stitch width of seven millimeters, stitch length of four millimeters. That's perfect for doing basting. All all good. You can do drop feed for free motion sewing, super easy. Drop your feed dogs and then you'll be able to do free motion sewing with just changing a couple settings on your machine. There's also optional accessories that you can get and um, a variety of feet, which if you ever have any questions about presser feet, you can always give us a call here at Sewing Parts Online. Anybody would be super happy to help you find compatible feet for your machine. So a little bit about that machine. Let's give it away. <laughs> All right, so let's come back over here. There we go. All right, so let's get our tool pulled up and we will pick our winner and see who's lucky today. And I need to share that screen, don't I, Brian? You do. <laughs> I X out of stuff, I was like doing my thing. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. <laughs> Okay, we are doing the giveaway tool. All right, are we up? We're up. All right. Let's do this. Who's winning the little jukey? What prize number is this? This prize number is number 18. Teresa, congratulations, Teresa. I would attempt your last name, but I'm very bad at pronouncing. <laughs> so congratulations, Teresa. <laughs> you are the winner of the Juki machine. We're going to be giving away more, huh? We are giving away more. Of these Jukis, there's five still, right? We will be giving, I think so, Brian, you're right. That is a good thing to mention. We are going to be giving away five more of these throughout this event. So. So Creative Live is so much fun. <laughs> All right, well, we can move on over to giving away our Juki bundle, our Grace bundle, Juki bundle. We'll go over it one more time. <laughs> so let's get rid of this. Okay, can you see the Grace cutie? Are we pulling it up or am I clicking the wrong button? I cannot see it. All right, let me X out of this and we'll share my, my other screen here. Okay, so I want to show you once again what the cutie frame looks like and the Juki machine. So let's start with the cutie frame. I can click buttons. I promise you I can. <laughs> there we go. So we're going to start with the cutie frame. There we go. Okay. So the cutie frame is a tabletop quilting frame. As I mentioned before, if you didn't see the segment that Grace did earlier, I would highly recommend going back and watching it. Super awesome, especially if you don't have a lot of space to do quilting, you can put this directly on a table. However, we are going to pair it with the legs. So 
the legs, see how it goes on the table right here? You can have it like that, or you can get the legs. And actually, Brian, do you mind putting that video back up again so they can see what the legs look like? Yeah. Thank you. See, just like that. So you could take a look and put it on the table, or you can have the legs. The bundle that we're giving you includes those legs. All right, so we've got the frame, and then we're gonna pair it with the Juki. So let me get that pulled up for you. All of the buttons, here we go, there. We are going to pair it with the Juki TL2000QI. This is a fantastic machine. Now, it's labeled as a quilting machine, but you can use it for so much more. I'm a huge fan of making purses or bags, and it is fabulous for sewing over bulky seams. I mean, wonderful. I cannot stress that enough. It's just like, it's seamless. So you can utilize this package in so many more ways than just using it as a long arm. So you can be like, I'm done with that. I'm going to take it off, use it for piecing, move it over again, and then you can make a purse. So many options. I love it. It does come with that extension table, which is pretty fabulous because oftentimes those are an added accessory. So that is pretty cool. Look how many layers you can sew through. And as I said, it sews through bulky seams like butter. So if just so you're aware of that. Um, the needle up down is awesome. You're able to easily pivot when your needle is down, you stop and it stays in the down position. And then you can use the knee lift, which I'll show you here in just a moment. You can use the knee lift to lift up your presser foot, have your needle down, move your fabric around the way that you need to, and you don't lose your spot. Works great and you don't have any issues with your fabric sliding and causing skip stitches and like just a mess. So. Looks really, really good. Again, with the automatic needles, needle threaders. We like those needle threaders, super helpful. You've got the L-style bobbin and it's a side loading bobbin. And then the thread tension. Now it's a, considered a semi-industrial machine, but it's lightweight enough that you would be able to bring it to a class or you know easily move it around your house if like you're like me and at Christmas time, you convert your dining room into your sewing room. <laughs> move it around. <laughs> you can bring it wherever you need to. Super easy to move. And then you've got an automatic thread trimmer on your foot control. Now this is really awesome. You're able to hit your pedal, make your machine go. And then when you need it to cut the thread, you just tilt your foot back and it automatically cuts your thread for you. Now I do recommend trying this um, on some scrap fabric beforehand because you don't want to do it on your actual project when you're not used to it because then they're done that where I <laughs> click back and I cut my thread. But it's a great feature when you get used to it. It is pretty awesome. Oh, and we even have a picture. I should have just brought this up to begin with. <laughs> Brian will know that for next time, right? All right, so it shows that you can use this particular machine with the cutie frame and the lovely legs down below. So I am thrilled with this. Okay, let's get rid of that and we'll try it again. Thank you all for your patience with my clicking and my, my sharing, but I wanted you to see it because it's pretty awesome. Okay, are we ready for the giveaway? Okay. I clicked out of my giveaway tool for a very short amount of time. <laughs> We are on day one. All right. Okay, so now we're going to share again. Everybody is so patient. Thank you all. <laughs> we did say this is our first ever virtual sewing event, right? <laughs> We've got our little bumps along the way, but you guys are fantastic. Okay, so we are going to click draw. Here we go. All right, who's it gonna be? Deborah Poe on YouTube. Deborah, congratulations. You have the Grace Cutie Frame, the TL2000QI, the bungee straps, and the Cutie Frame legs. 
Yay, that was my big one. I really wanted to give that one away. <laughs> Congratulations. To collect your prizes, guys, all you have to do is go to the link tree um, in the description and click claim your prize and fill out the form and we will get you your prizes. What time do we have, Brian? I think we have time for a couple more prizes. What do we think? So. All right, everybody's being patient. We're going to grab a couple more. It'll just take a second. What do we have going on? I'm going to set this aside for a moment. We have a goodie box. <laughs> do you want to do some more Floriani thread? I would love to do more Floriani thread. We all saw how beautiful that was. Thank you. Oh, should we should we get Brian in here? Come on, Brian. <laughs> everybody say hi to Brian. He's in the background hi. helping me. <laughs> hi, I'm Brian. Nice to meet everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Here's another blueprint kit. All right. So we'll see what's in there, too, because that feels like it, it has some goodies in there. So the first one that we're going to do, we've got number 200. Okay. Let's do number 200 is going to be the Floriani 30 pack kit. Are we ready? Ready, ready. All right. Here we go. Get an extra prize here. Natalie Monique, congratulations on you follow us on Facebook. Thank you so much. You win the 30 pack of the Floriani embroidery thread. This is a 40 weight thread. Fantastic kit. And that was prize number 200? That's number 200. Yep, Brian. Looking good. Gonna scooch that over here. That's going to fall on me. We're going to set that down. Let's see what we have at this on this one. Okay, this is going to be 201. This is considered a notions case. Again, you can use these cases in so many different ways. I mean, you could use them for presser feet. You could use them for notions. We filled it with more Floriani thread for you, but there's these cute little zipper pouches and you're able to store what you need. Couple zippers over here. And how many spools of thread did we put in here? We put eight. So you've got eight beautiful spools of the Floriani thread. And I think we put some more goodies in here as well. Yep. Uh, scrappy squeeze pouch. So if you're making a purse, you're able to do where you squeeze the edges together and then they snap. That's awesome. Uh, okay, so if you do the hand embroidery, this is for your floss. They're just these cute little tags that you can label them and tie your floss on those. And we also threw in a couple of cards. So that is a wonderful kit as well. Thank you to everybody that donated for these prizes. Okay, set that right there and we will pick our winner. Again, this is number 201. Make sure that you keep commenting, guys, so you can get entered. See who we have. Anita Gilbreth. Congratulations. She is watching on YouTube with us. So thank you so much for watching. And we appreciate you all. Again, to claim your prize, go to the link tree that's in the description. Click claim your prize and fill out the form. And we'll get you your prize as soon as we can. All right. Well, up next with us today is Stacy with So Steady. So it's going to take us just a couple of minutes to get set up and get ready for her segment. So we will be back in probably about two minutes.
Welcome back, everybody. I am super excited for this next segment. We have Stacy with so, uh, so Steady, and she's going to show us some of her awesome products. Hello, Stacy. Thank you so much for letting me come on and be part of this event with you guys. So well, it we appreciate like this you is joining a, us. Yeah, absolutely. We here at So Steady absolutely love doing virtual education. So. Anytime I get an opportunity to share, I am happy to jump in. Um, so I'm ready to start and just kind of take it from the beginning. And then we'll go through all of our amazing tools, which there are a few guys. Um, there's going to be an awesome giveaway at the end, it sounds like. So just stay tuned as we share all of these great tools and how you guys can use them and what you can do to improve your sewing and quilting experience with everything. Love being part of National Sewing Month. So let me know and we'll go ahead and get started. All right, sounds good. Before we give it over to you, I just want to remind everybody to get entered into the giveaway. Keep on commenting. If you're over on Instagram or on TikTok, go to YouTube or Facebook and comment there. That way you will get entered into the giveaway. But now we'll turn it over to Stacy. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. And again, I'm excited. I'm just, there's probably people out there that aren't super familiar with our products. So I thought I would just take it from the top and share with you a little bit about our history um, and kind of go from there as far as some of our best selling tools. We have a saying here at So Steady um, and Westerly Design, and we call it our Ready, Set, Go tools. Um, our Ready, Set, Go tools kind of take you from what you need to get started doing any project. And then we drill down down to what you can do to really get going with our ruler quilting, um, which is one of the things that really has bloomed in the last several years, uh, being able to quilt um, your home projects using your domestic machine and quilting templates. And we've got a lot of those. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of take you through that little history lesson. And I'm going to do that by showing you some of these tools right behind me. So um, I thought I would show you, we have this really cool thing that you might find in um, some of the stores as you go in. And this is called our quick buy guide. So this is a tool that you can use um, maybe if you're at a show or you're at a store and you're looking for how to get going with doing ruler work um, on your domestic machine. And again, we're going to tell you all about what that is today. Um, but our Ready, Set, Go tools start with having a so steady extension table. And I've got, um, I've heard from a little bird that there might be one in a giveaway today. So I'm gonna tell you all about those um, and then some of the other essential tools to get started with ruler work. So I'm gonna actually walk you over to my machine and in order to save you from any kind of visual um, craziness, I'm gonna cover up the camera while I walk you over there. So let's go ahead and go over to the machine now and then we'll go ahead and show you all these amazing tools and how you can use them. Okay, so as we walk you over there, we are um, going to go ahead and get you set up right at our So Steady Wish table. Now, So Steady has been making um, extension tables and cabinet inserts for years. That's actually what our claim to fame is and how we got started in our company about 25 years ago. We developed an extension table that you can set up on your sewing machine to be able to get you going with doing um, any kind of sewing project. And that's what you're looking at right here. Our extension tables um, start with our basic large table that's 18 by 24. It comes with five of these legs. Um, one of the things that's nice to note about these legs is that they pop on and they pop off. And what's really great about that is that you never take a screwdriver to our So Steady tables. These legs literally, and I'm gonna actually move this a little bit so I can show you 
just how simple this can be. These legs actually, you lift this leg up and you just wiggle it to pop it on and pop it off. And then you can put it into our travel bags or um, into the drawer of your table if you have one of our fancy wish tables and that's a great option and you're able to go ahead and store it that way but that's one of the really neat things about our so city tables is that versatility um, and functionality of just being able to um, kind of transport them so easily so a lot of people will have maybe cabinet inserts um, or cabinets in their home sewing room and so in that scenario they would purchase one of our cabinet inserts and what are our cabinet inserts well those are um, these acrylic pieces that drop into your cabinet space to fill that extra hole that maybe your machine isn't filling and the whole goal there is to give you a smooth flat sewing surface so when you're sending fabric through the needle area, there's nothing that's going to hold that fabric up from maybe drag or keeping it from wanting to flow smoothly. So we have a whole bunch of other tools that we use for that purpose as well. Um, but when we speak about the table, our goal is to be perfectly level with the needle area. That's number one. Our number two goal is to have your table fit so smoothly and snugly that it's really not going to wiggle. We call it a so steady for that reason. Sorry, I'm wiggling your camera now. But we call it a so steady for that reason because we want your table to fit so snugly around your machine that you're not going to have any of that wiggle movement from machine vibration and so on. So that's another big piece. And that's why actually here at So Steady, we make tables and inserts for machines that are 60, 70 years old. All of those old featherweight machines or some of those Singer 201, some of those machines that were built you know, a hundred years ago, but are still amazing machines because they were built with really high quality product, you know, uh, tools, those machines we make tables for and insert. So really, I would say probably 99% of the machines in the market, if they're domestic sewing machines, we can make a table for. So why would you choose a so steady table when maybe some of your machines come with an extension table that already um, it has? Well, um, a couple of the reasons why people still love to get the so steady I showed you that pop on pop off leg system that's super easy to go ahead and convert uh, you know when you're traveling um, but some other reasons we have beveled edges on all three sides of our wish table and on the front side of our basic large table and some of our basic tables what does the beveled edge do well it makes it when you're doing a project that that project will flow easily up onto your sewing surface because of the beveled edge and off of the sewing surface so when you're bringing the project back on it flows easily without any issues so that's one reason why you would want beveled edges in addition to that we put a 16-inch metric ruler on the front edge of our tables you can kind of see that metric ruler right there but that's um, a 16-inch metric and inches ruler that we have right there on the front edge so you have easy measuring when you're doing any projects and then finally we've taken some of these amazing features and we've added them to our tables so we went out to our customers about five years ago we said what else do you want to see in the table you know we've got this awesome bevel we've got these metric markings but what else can we do to make your table even better for you but a lot of people tell us they loved the drawer they want to be able to store items in a drawer and have it easily accessible so you can see i've already got some of my my necessary tools right here in the drawer um, I've got some stitching line discs, some of my stable tape. These are all tools that I would use predominantly for doing ruler work. But these are really, really cool to have. At home, I have all of my sewing pins saved there. Um, I've got my extra bobbins. So having a place that you can easily store this stuff and it's super accessible to you is amazing. Um, the other feature that we include in this table is these circle sewing holes. This allows you to place a pin through the table and be able to go ahead and create circle sewing designs using your Sew Steady table. It's super easy. You have the feed dog 
dogs up. And by using that pen in this in the placements here, you're able to go ahead and form circles like the, the project we have right here. So that's how we created this project is we just use our circle sewing tool and we were able to get all of these designs. So not only are you able to create circular projects with our circle sewing um, holes in our table, but you can also use the decorative stitches in your machine and you can create some really cool uh, stitches using the circular uh, uh, features on this table. So this is called our wish table. This table is actually 22 and a half by 25 in size. And those are some of the bonus features that you can get when you get um, the Sew Steady tables. Another thing that all of our Sew Steady tables and cabinet inserts um, have a lot of appreciation for is the fact that they're clear. So that means you can see through them. You can store items underneath them, um, which is something that a lot of customers really, really appreciate because they might be doing a bigger quilt project or sewing project, and they want to be able to go ahead and have their uh, fabric blocks or their extra tools stored underneath the table and easily accessible. So that is another really, really popular um, item about our Sew City tables that people absolutely love. So as we grew in our company, we started creating some new tools. One of those new tools um, was our polish kit. This was probably one of our first accessories that we created for our Sew Steady tables. Now our table polish kit, oh, you can see it a little better there, is um, a way to be able to get your table really, really slick. Now we've already said that our tables are smooth, but they're not necessarily slick when you uh, get them out of the box. So our table polish kit is a great way to do that. You can also do this at home with any basic car wax. Um, but basically what we've done is we've, we have taken um, what we have found is one, some of the best wax for acrylic and we've gone ahead and put it into our polish kit for your tables. And you just do like the old Karate Kid thing, wax on, wax off. Go ahead and get that and use the little um, cloth that we provide in the polish kit to go ahead and wax that off all the way. And it does kind of clean it up a little bit, clean the table up. What it's not going to do is it's not going to fill any scratches. So if you get scratches on the table from use, maybe, you know, pen scratches, that sort of thing, it's not going to fill those, but it is going to make your table extremely slick. And I love showing people this when we're in a live demo, like at a show, because what you really see in that scenario is we let you feel it. We let you feel the difference between moving the fabric on something that you've just polished and moving the fabric on something that you haven't just polished. And it does make a difference. It actually really, really helps. So this is our Sew Steady Polish Kit. And that's something we highly encourage. We've even seen um, some of our dealers that we work with sometimes polish the bed of the machine at the same time. Because again, it's just an amazing polish that really gets your fabric flowing super easy. So that's one of um, our first accessories that we created for so steady tables. Now, since then, we've created a lot of great accessories for our tables, um, including our Sew Steady spinner tray, which unfortunately I don't have one of those today. But if you don't have one of these amazing wish drawers, our spinner tray allows you to go ahead and attach the drawer to your, actually I do have a spinner tray I can show you guys really quick. It allows you to attach it to the leg of your machine, um, of your table, and be able to go ahead and store little tools in this instead. So this is something you can add to an existing Sew Steady table that you have. It's called our Sew Steady spinner tray. And again, all you do is you pull that leg off, you attach it to the table, and then you can spin that accessory tray in and out and be able to go ahead and you can kind of see me attaching it over here. You can spin it in and then store it back under there and be able to have all of those tools right there. This spinner tray even has this cool little um, pin a magnet so if you drop pins into it all of them will kind of gravitate towards the magnet that you see right there so this is a really neat little tool that was one of our original accessories for our so city tables as well 
And then since then, um, we have developed probably one of our best-selling accessories, and that is called our glider. We have a few different gliders today. We have um, our grid glider, which was our first glider that we developed, and this is the one that actually has all the markings on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you our grid glider. This does come in this handy little tube here. I pulled it off so I could show everybody the, um, you know, the demonstration with the polish and how you can see through your table. But normally I keep my grid glider on because it is such a great little tool for being able to just um, have all of these markings right at your sewing machine. So when you pull it out, there is a plastic piece on the back side of it. And that plastic piece basically allows you to go ahead and um, kind of restore it. So I always recommend to keep that plastic piece on the back side of it after you peel it off and put it in the back of the tube when you're not using it. But our grid glider is, has a pre-cut hole. It is a square or rectangular pre-cut hole, so you can have your feed dogs up. And the goal of that is that you're able to do all types of sewing with this, right? This is National Sewing Month, so we're talking about all types of sewing. And when we uh, show off what you can do, I will tell you that during the pandemic, at the very beginning when we were all at home making masks, this became a popular tool that I saw in all kinds of mass videos out there from people I never even heard of that saw this as an amazing tool for being able to make their mass super quickly at home. But imagine all of the different tools and, and projects that you can do at home using this tool. So it's got a center line. You can see that that's that thick line there. We're going to line that center line up with the needle area. So we just simply slide this onto your uh, machine underneath your needle. And I'm just going to line up that thick center line with the needle area. And then I'm going to go ahead and just level it off, place that down onto the machine. You can see how easy it is. And notice all of the markings that we've got here. So I've lined up the center with the needle, and now we have quarter inch on both sides of the needle area. Um, we also have a three quarter, a three eighths inch, and a five eighths inch. So you can do all kinds of those tiny seam allowances. Now the other day I was making a pillowcase, and I wanted to get a nice thick um, uh, edge on my pillowcase, so I used the three inch seam allowance for the pillowcase I was making, and I just used that as my guide as I was uh, sewing through it was amazing but that's what it is is it's you've just got these easy guides when you're sewing that are right there um, and really really visible I know a lot of times we have this needle plate that has these markings on it with your different angles but this one is going to give you even more because of how it's just right there at that needle area. So notice we even have our 30 degree, our 45 degree, and our 60 degree markings right here listed on the grid glider. And then again, we have seam allowances going from a centering out from one to eight inches on the right side of the needle and from one to 11 inches on the left side of the needle. Overall size of this grid glider is 18 by 12 so uh, actually it's 20 by 12 sorry um so really really nice size of uh, uh, material but we call it a glider because it's also very slick so we showed you how we have we can add that polish to go ahead and give you your fabric really easy movement well you can also add this amazing glider and it really helps your fabric move so this is our grid glider, and this might be another one of those things that you have the opportunity to win later today. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, there is going to be someone that's lucky enough to have this and the polish kit. Um, and so this is one of our best-selling accessories, like I shared. But since then, we have developed a few other gliders, so I thought I would show you one or two more of those. So this is actually called our ruler work glider. And I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit about the ruler work side of things today so I thought I would share you uh, show you off this amazing ruler work glider so what this is is it has all of the same qualities as the grid glider super slick uh, 12 by 20 size but what we've done is we've taken instead of that rectangular cutout 
we have the circular cutout. And why would we do that? Well, because when we do ruler work, we actually don't need, um, you, we don't, we want to cover up our feed dogs. We drop the feed dogs and we want to be able to cover them up because again, we really want that fabric moving smoothly um, around that. And we don't want anything to hold our fabric and our templates from moving around that needle area. So by doing a circular cutout, we're covering up the feed dogs, we're making it so nothing is going to get caught in them as we're doing our project. And um, then we don't need all of those other markings when we do free motion, because it really is when you're doing ruler work, you really are putting your machine into a free motion mode where you're stitching left to right, front to back, anywhere you want. And so you really don't need all of those additional markings for seam allowances and so on. So that is our ruler work glider. And the main difference is uh, for customers that are primarily going to use this for ruler work and free motion, that's why you would want to have that amazing tool. One of our most recent developments that we came out with was actually a clear ruler uh, glider. And the clear glider was developed, again, because we have lots of customers that said, oh my gosh, I love the So Steady table. And I love the So Steady table because it's clear, because we love to see through it. But we really love the idea of having a glider as well. So we developed a clear glider so you can continue to see through your table and be able to have that glider experience at the same time. Now, the clear glider that we developed, we actually made it so this is one where you get to decide where your hole placement is. So we actually give you a little cutting guide with it. Um, and that's a great way to be able to um, have your placement of your um, of your hole wherever you'd like. And so that's just a new product. Again, it's in the glider world. Why we developed it is because we have lots of people that wanted to be able to have um, see through their glider still. We had lots and lots of suggestions for that. And so when we hear suggestions and we have people saying, we want this, we want it this way, we listen. And that's how most of our products are developed here at SoSteady is by listening to what customers want and trying to make it happen for you. So um, the other thing that we had a lot of requests for is being able to um, have, you know, have a different location for where that cutout was. And so that's why we created the cutting guide so you can really have the cutout wherever you wish. Maybe you want it to be more on this end because you don't have a very deep free arm area on your machine. And so having the cutout move this far so you can really have more of that glider experience is. To the left of the needle is an option with that clear advantage glider. So that is all of our fun with our gliders. Um, we, I'm going to show off another cool tool that we've developed recently, but I thought I would go ahead and start diving into uh, what we brought to, to market and we started really sharing with the world. Um, and that was about six or seven years ago, we had the opportunity to team up with a company by the name of Westerly Design. And Westerly Design creates quilting template, designed uh, rulers and patchwork tools, um, and then a ruler foot to be able to do quilting um, on domestic sewing machines. So we were super excited to be able to bring this product to market about seven years ago. And since then, we actually now own Westerly Design. So So Steady is the owner of Westerly Design. And with that, we have over a thousand different styles and sizes of quilting templates available. Um, we have over 200 plus classes on our So Steady University. We have 20 educators that work in creating amazing content with all of these awesome tools for you um, on the daily basis. We've got education happening, showing you how to use these tools, how to create these amazing designs and really be able to start quilting your own projects at home. So that's what we heard a lot when we started uh, bringing this product to market is, yeah, you know, I um, I want to be able to quilt at home, but I just, I don't free motion quilt. That's not my thing. I don't like free motion quilting and I will never be a free motion quilter. And so we, um, we like to remind people that this is not free motion quilting. Yes, you're going to have to put your machine into free motion mode, um, which every machine might be different. Um, a lot of times it just starts with dropping the feed dogs on your machine. Um, or if, if you can't drop your feed dogs, then we ask you 
you to put your stitch length to zero and that's how you're going to be able to move your uh, fabric um, left to right and really be able to stitch in any direction. But this is not free motion quilting. This is guided free motion quilting, guys, because you're able to go ahead and guide your ruler foot um, around that quilting template and create very precise designs. So this is the time where I like to show off a little bit of inspiration. Um, I showed you on the package there, that was our ruler work kit. That's our ultimate get started kit. Um, that is the um, package that has all the basic tools to get started quilting with templates. It starts with having a ruler foot, of course. You need to have a ruler foot because you need to be able to um, have a foot that goes around the designs to create these amazing shapes. Um, and then from there, we have what we call that kind of our get started set. So it, um, our 12 inch arc is one of our most essential rulers that we recommend everyone get started with and that's our 12 inch arc ruler right there um, and that comes with our ruler foot but if you already have a ruler foot that came with your sewing machine a lot of machines come with them now we highly recommend you use that ruler foot because they've got um, a lot of newer machines actually have settings built into the machine now for ruler work. So then you just use their ruler foot and then you can use this um, amazing starter template to be able to get started. And then from there, we actually have a six piece sampler set. And this is a sampler of different designs that allow you to create just an assortment of different designs. We have inside designs, which we call like our circle designs and our spinning wheels designs. And then we have outside designs like our 12 inch arc. And all of those allow you to create really, really neat designs designs and be able to finish your projects. That's the most important thing, right? We want to be able to finish our projects at home. And then with this, you also get this cool little tool called the crosshair square. And the crosshair square tool just looks like this grid, if you will, that has all these cutouts in it. And I'm going to show you how to use that next and why that's so valuable, not just for being able to mark your project for quilting with rulers, but also consider marking it for when you're doing embroidery and that type of thing. Being able to center the block really easily is super helpful in a lot of different functionalities. And that's what that tool is for. And then we have another new template called our Bloom template that we also have available exclusively sold through resellers like Sewing Machine Parts Online. So we highly encourage you to go ahead and um, purchase directly from them when you're buying packages like this. This kit also comes with the amazing quilt as you go class series this is a class series developed by the creator leone west it's 10 plus hours of video based education where you learn how to do 24 different block designs using just these rulers guys so 24 different block designs 10 hours of education um, and it's a guided education it's got eight different lessons through it where you learn how to create these awesome designs i'm going to actually do a few of these designs for you today just so you can really kind of appreciate how it works um, and so this is our get started uh, bag as well. So you get all of these awesome tools with this bag um, at an amazing price of $175. It's actually over $400 of value that you're getting in this package with all of these amazing tools. Um, but that is an awesome way to get started with Ruler Work. So this is our, uh, our amazing Quilt As You Go quilt. We had a whole bunch of educators go out and create a bunch of different um, variations of this quilt for us because we wanted to be able to really show off how you can create these designs on fabric and be able to um, finish your projects at home. So this is just one of our pieces of, of inspiration. We have another piece of inspiration hanging right behind me here. This is more of a free motion project. If, I'm sure many of you have seen this amazing dream panel before, but this is using only Westerly rulers to finish it, guys and it's just stunning. So I love having that hang right here in my office so I can show it off in all of our lives and really get people excited to do some of this quilting at home. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do ruler work quilting um, and quilting with templates 
on your domestic machine. We're going to talk about some of the basics, how you get started, what's important. And then I'm just going to show you some of our basic designs that you're going to find in this project right here um, using some of the tools that are, are part of our Get Started set. So here are some of the designs that I'm going to show off. And so let's get started. And then we'll do a little bit of inspiration here. We've got about a half an hour left. So we've got lots of time to do this. Okay, so in order to go ahead and get started, I am actually going to go ahead and just quadrant off this block. So an easy way to quadrant off a block, just fold it in half. We're just going to fold it in half. We're going to fold it in half again. And... I'm just going to make some seams here so I know what I'm dealing with. And a lot of times people ask, oh, do you need to spray baste? You can spray baste these, but this is just for practice, so I don't spray baste. I just have uh, one piece of batting and one piece of fabric on both sides, and that's all I'm going to do to go ahead and kind of quadrant off and get started with this. So I've just created um just a, a quick little scene here sorry again for bouncing and now i'm going to take my crosshair ruler and i'm just going to go ahead and quadrant off this using my crosshair ruler and one of these cool tools called a choco marker now this is something you can absolutely find at, um, um i'm sure sewing parts online has this but this is just a really cool little uh, chalk marking tool um so it's not going to leave marks i do recommend Staying away from some of the brighter colors on this, especially if you haven't tested it on fabric. Um, but this white color, we've never had any problems with. And then I'm just going to go ahead and quickly mark off my quadrants. So, and I'm just doing that because I'm creating a few designs for you today. So I want you to be able to go ahead and see those designs in themselves. So now once I've marked off my fabric, I'm going to go ahead and create some markings on this block. So notice here, guys, that this, um, this tool has markings from two to seven inches right here. So what I'm doing is I now I have a six inch workspace. I want to create a block design with my six inch space. So I'm going to go ahead and line it up on the six. I'm going to use the square of the six all the way around because that's about this I actually the block is actually a seven inch so I'm going to line it up on the seven so notice the seven is the outside line all the way around so I'm going to put that down I'm going to lay that down and now I have center in this block right there so I'm going to move it over slightly because I am seeing that it's actually closer to about a six and a half in width so I've just moved it over slightly and now I'm just going to go ahead and mark my crosshair rulers. So I'm marking a crosshair because I'm creating a design that I'm going to go ahead and use these crosshair markings to go ahead and um, align up as I move around the design. So this is my crosshair ruler. Again, this is part of our Get Started package. It comes in multiple sizes. We sell it in that Get Started package in an eight and a half inch size. Another really popular size for that is going to be a, um, at a 12 and a half inch size. And um, again, this is our A point. We also offer that crosshair marker in um, multiple points. So if you wanted to create um, maybe a six point design, like a hexagon, then you can actually buy a six point. Um, we also have it in a five point that oftentimes people that are creating star designs and that sort of thing uh, will end up using. So lots of different options when it comes to crosshair. But we really recommend everybody get started with the A point. And then as they get a little bit more into the designer land of ruler work, they will probably jump into some of those other options. Now, notice I just went ahead and created that center marking so I know where to place my pen. So what I'm going to start with today is the first template I ever ruler quilted. And it's called the spinning wheel number 36. And why I love to show this off is because I actually did very, very little sewing or quilting before um, we uh, started teaming up with Westerly Design. And so I, um, when we were when we were kind of in the beginning stages of learning what we were going to be uh, sharing with the world here in the United States, because they're based out of Australia, I went ahead and um, started playing around a little bit. And this was the first template that I played around with. And what I've 
found that once I pulled this template out and I used it is I found that it was the, I created the most amazing design and I did it with just using the edges of the template. Now I'm just using this pen and what we're doing with this pen is we're just going ahead and putting it in the center of the block. We just found center and we're placing that pen. A lot of our templates come with a pen hole and that's because we're gonna actually be spinning the design on that pen hole placement to be able to create it. And that's another reason why using um, the ruler work glider is really helpful because we talked earlier about um, getting things caught up in those feed dogs. Well, sometimes when you're using a pen like that, it can get caught up in the feed dogs. So we're hoping it doesn't today. Um, another really important thing that we like to do when we get started with ruler work is we like to go ahead and um, pull that bobbin thread up. And that's important because one of the goals with ruler work is that you can go ahead and quilt and quilt and quilt and finish your projects with very little tie off. And so our goal is to help you do that. And we do that by going ahead and getting that bobbin thread pulled up and then um, be able to finish designs, potentially finish whole quilts with just a few different tie off zones that you need to have. So we're going to pull that, bo that bobbin thread up. We're lining up this template with the crosshair markings that we place in the, um, into the fabric. And now I'm going to go ahead and stitch from A to B. So I'm going to go ahead and just stitch around, go to the top, come back down, and stop at B. And then I'm just going to spin this design. And notice the markings on the templates again, guys. The marking on this template actually tells you where to stop on the previous stitch line. So technically, I could do this without marking the fabric at all. I mark the fabric because we have found a little bit more accuracy with marking the fabric, and that's more just um, the guide of our eyes. Um, but it, the template actually has it built into it. And then I'm going to spin the design again. You can see just how quick this can be. I'm going to come around, touch there. Come back to B. And again, we're just stitching from A to B to create this amazing stitch design. Another really important thing to note when you're doing any kind of ruler quilting is how important it is to have your needle centered in the foot. If the needle isn't centered in the foot, then you're not going to be creating an accurate design for what, what this uh, template was designed to do. Because it's assuming that your needle is a perfect um, quarter inch away from the edge of the template at any given location. And that's what the marriage between the ruler foot and the template is. So if you're using the wrong size of ruler foot, like sometimes there have been other sizes of ruler foot predominantly in the long arm world in the past, but if you're using the wrong size of ruler foot, the template design will not come out correctly. So that's important to note. Having the needle center and having the correct size of ruler foot is really important to create the design that um, this was intended to be. And so I'm just coming around, guys. I'm making my final petal right now. Again, I've lined up the markings on the template. I've lined up um, with the crosshair markings that I placed. And now I have officially created my first design using this flower. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. In the sake of what we're doing here today, I'm going to cut the thread, but keep in mind, you don't have to cut the thread. You could stitch to the top of this and then create another design. But that is the design I just created using this um, using the quilting ruler and the guided free motion. We've got some other um, designers that like to refer to it um, as um, quilting um, on the edge because you're quilting your designs on the edge, which is kind of fun too. I love to, to hear quilting on the edge. Um, I love uh, bumper uh, quilting. So bumper quilting, if you think about, um, you know, when you're going bowling and you're using um, you're using the uh, the bumpers on the bowling um, alley to go ahead and get a straight line and get that, you know, in a strike mode. Um, that's another fun way to refer to it as well. 
So next, what I want to do is I actually wanted to go ahead and um, do a parabolic curve. Now, a parabolic cu curve is a really, really cool design, and it starts um, with basically using the edge of a ruler to go ahead and create kind of this consistent design that way. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, create a straight line right now, and then we're going to create a box, and then we're going to go ahead and use our spacing gauge, which is another essential tool that comes in your starter kit um, to go ahead and create kind of this parabolic curve kaleidoscope design. And again, that's one of those amazing designs that you learn how to create in that beginner step. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring it down. I'm going to create that straight line there. And usually we like to start with a um, just kind of a box and I'm using the markings on the fabric again um, and the markings on the ruler to go ahead and stay in a straight line as I go across which is important to note because it can be easy to get off and um, so knowing where your markings are is really helpful. So this ruler design is technically, this is called our 12 inch arc ruler guys, but it's kind of got a funny story behind it because it's really not a 12 inch ruler. So this is actually a ruler that is more like um, probably seven inches in size, I'd say seven inches. And um, so a lot of times people question why we call it our 12 inch arc. Well, because technically, if you were to take a 12 inch circle, this would be, it would ultimately form, um, come out of a 12 inch circle. So it's an arc that would come out of your 12 inch circle. And that's why we call it the 12 inch arc. So I'm just creating my box. And now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and start using the markings on my ruler to create my one inch spacing for a, a parabolic curve or kaleidoscope design. So I'm using the third marking in because technically the ruler, the needle is a quarter inch from the edge of the foot and that each marking is a quarter inch apart. So I'm gonna get one inch spacing. So I'm gonna go ahead and come down and I'm just putting that down on the third marking in. I'm gonna touch that line. And then I don't have to spin the fabric, guys, but I'm going to for the sake of your visi uh, visibility, but I could just move the ruler. And again, when you think about big projects, you don't want to have to spin the fabric around the free arm. You want to be able to just go ahead and have that uh, fabric be able to, um, you know, move the ruler as opposed to being able having to spin the fabric. So again, I'm going to go ahead and move it for the sake of you being able to see it easily, but that is um, always an option is to just move the ruler itself. So I'm just going to do one inch markings all the way around. And because I'm doing a one inch, this is not going to have as spectacular of an outcome as if I were to do quarter inch. Um, when it's a quarter inch, you really see that kaleidoscope or that parabolic curve. It just pops. It kind of looks like this multidimensional um, design. But you can kind of get the gist of it with the one inch, which is what I really want to be able to show you guys today. And it's just a really cool ruler design. So this was another one of the first designs that we like people to learn because it teaches you how to use your straight ruler. Um, it teaches you how to go ahead and use the guidelines on your ruler to get different spacing. And then um, one thing that we haven't talked about yet that's really important to keep in mind is that we actually have this stuff called stable tape. And those are those little squares that you see on the ruler. That's how you keep the ruler from moving. And what I'm doing is I'm placing my fingers exactly where I place the sable tape and it's gripping the fabric. Had I decided that, oh, I just want to have a couple pieces of stable tape in the middle, well, then I have to keep my fingers where that stable tape is to really make sure that the ruler doesn't slip and slide underneath me. And that's really important because again, we're trying to create really precise designs and stop right on that stitch line. So if you're using a ruler that's slipping and sliding, it's going to be hard to keep it straight and be able to keep that precise design look that you're, you get with rulers. And again, that's one of the benefits of using rulers and why a lot of people that don't love free motion were initially scared away from the idea 
of doing ruler work because they've just always sent out to long armor. They said, no, it's not my thing. I don't want to have to be able to um, free motion. I've seen what I do and I don't want to finish my quilts. But the good thing is, is that those people looking for those precise professional designs, you can do that with these rulers. You can do it at home. So I'm almost done showing you the amazing parabolic curve. Again, this is the one inch spacing. I challenge you, if you have these rulers sitting at home, maybe you haven't pulled them out, you've bought them at a show, or you saw them online, you saw a demo, and you said, I have to try this because I need to start doing some of my own quilting. Um, I encourage you to use this ruler and go out and start with the parabolic curve. In fact, we have 24 or 25 free classes on our So City University, and one of those classes is the Amazing Parabolic Curve by Helen Sullivan, who is another one of our amazing educators, and that um, she gives you all different types of parabolic curves to try out. So check that out, guys. I just did a parabolic curve using one inch spacing with my straight ruler. So you see that design there? We did that design. There's our parallel curve. We did our spinning feather or spinning flower design called our spin effects um, number 36 spinning wheel design. And now I want to do one more design. I think we have time. Yep, it looks like we've got um, about 13 more minutes. And so I thought I would show off our simple circle. So how many of you have tried free motion circles? Free motioning circles, it's kind of impossible. That's my experience. Very, very hard to create a really accurate circle when you're doing free motion. So I love showing this off, um, especially when I'm demoing at shows and whatnot, because you really appreciate just how you can make precise designs with rulers using this template. And there's all kinds of fun things you can do with a circle, guys. I showed you some of those in the inspiration I showed you a little bit ago. But um, the circle allows you to create really cool border designs. You can create um, what I love to call the Olympic symbol, symbol <laughs> by just doing interlocking circles. So I'm going to show you how to do a couple of those today using the simple circle. And then I'm going to do a little bit more inspiration. And then I think at the end, we might have a pretty big giveaway to share with all of you. So again, I'm going to go ahead and um, drop my needle right in the center of the block, which I just established. So I'm going to go ahead and put needle down, <clears throat> needle up. Again, we like to pull our bobbin thread up. So we're just going to grab that thread if we can using whatever usually if you have tweezers at your workstation that's a great way to do it so now i'm going to drop the needle again in the center and then i'm lining up my template and this template actually has um eight different markings on it so you get your angles your um your and your vertical and your horizontal markings so i'm just going to line up my ruler with the um vertical markings right there and i'm just going to stitch a circle and again this is a perfect lurking circle, guys. And that is the difference between ruler work um, with a versus free motion. So guided free motion. Oh, this is another fun one, guys. How about free motion quilting with training wheels? You've got your training wheels on right now. And what I love about that is it actually speaks to the idea that you're in training for free motion. And I say that because there is this thing called muscle memory. And I know a lot of you have heard it, but the muscle memory idea of, of using rulers is that you're teaching yourself as you're creating, doing this motion, how to do this free motion in the future. So by doing enough circles over and over again, you're going to learn how to move this fabric without the ruler and create a pretty accurate looking circle. So there I've just done four interlocking circles. Now I'm going to go ahead and do... Um, eight interlocking circles by just using the angle markings on this ruler to line up with the angles that I put on the fabric in advance. So I'm going to go ahead and get my thread out of the way and then we're going to go ahead and do our angles to get an eight interlocking circle design here. So I'm just going to go to the top, line up those markings again, and I get eight different interlocking circles. So we always finish center. So sometimes there can be a little bit of buildup 
of extra thread in there. I'm going to get this out of the way. Um, and so sometimes you'll see maybe um, a, if you're doing this on a block or maybe a bag, you can finish all kinds of projects with these amazing designs. So when you do that, sometimes you'll see maybe a button placed right in the center, and that can um, kind of uh, cover up any excess thread buildup. All right. Here we go. So I've gone ahead and done my eight interlocking circles there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the thread, pull that out, and show you that fun design. Look at that. All right, so we have got so many different designs that you can do with these rulers. Again, I mentioned we have over a thousand different rulers. A couple of our newest designs that we've rolled out, um, this is called our Coral Fern Guys, and this template is amazing. So you look at that, you hear the name Coral Fern, and you think, what would I do with that? Well, imagine a block or an Oliver quilt design where you can create that look just stunning so this is the ruler to do it with but we have so many different rulers in our lineup you you know just have to kind of dream it up and then we can give you all kinds of different ways to make it happen so these are called our artisan templates again when we talk about getting started we try to focus on some of the basic rulers um, but there are so many different rulers out there that you can use now what i thought i would do is i'm just going to show you a couple ways to do some um what i would consider border designs with these rulers. So I thought what I'd do is I would go ahead and just create a straight di diagonal line and I'm just gonna create a border across that diagonal for you guys to be able to see and appreciate uh, what you can do with some of these rulers creating borders as well. Because we want to have some border, um, sometimes you know there you want to add a little border action to your project. So this is going to be one way that to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just drop my needle again, pull up my bobbin thread, and again, I can do that just by using tweezers or something like that really easily. Get that out of the way, get my extra thread out of the way, and we are ready to go. All right. Now, I say it's so easy, but it's actually causing me a little extra today. There you go. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and drop the needle, and we're just going to create our border design. I'm just going to come this direction so you can see it okay. Let me see if I can move the needle from the camera a little bit better there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm creating a, oh, so this happens at home too, I'm sure, but I've gone ahead and lost my thread. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring this around. And we're going to re-thread the needle real quick here. Hopefully it's really quick. You never know. And I haven't mastered the um, automatic threader on this machine. I have a different machine at home. So bear with me while I do it the old-fashioned way. Putting it right through the needle eye. And... Before automatic threaders, this is really common, right? <laughs> I think that there's probably quite a few of us that still just do it the old-fashioned way, but it is nice. I have to say one of my favorite things about my sewing machine at home is how easy it is to thread. And um, so here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and do that um, border design for you now. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch all the way around in the circle. And then I'm actually going to stop at the end, and that's where I'm going to build my circle. But first, I'm going to create some eyelashes. So notice that I just spun the template in, and you can spin it in so um, to a certain point each time. Like you could go ahead and line up where that straight line is um, or one of the other markings to that previous line and be able to create consistency that way. So I'm going to go ahead and start there, go up to that um, Two lines up and then I'm going to spin it in a little bit more and I'm going to go up and I'm going to start a stop a little bit shorter this time and again my goal is to just create some eyelashing and then I'm going to spin up and maybe one more eyelash just for good measure and a little bit shorter coming back down so again we're just coming back down to center each time 
And then we're going to line it up and do our next row. And this is a super fun and easy border design. That's the other thing to really important to note about ruler work is how easy it is to go um, and stitch over your previous line and have consistency. A lot of people worry about stitching over or back tracking, and it's so easy to do that consistently with rulers. They, it's actually a really common thing. Again, one of our goals is to do all of this quilting without breaking thread, especially when you're doing bigger projects. So having the opportunity to do that with um, back tracking is really, really helpful. All right, I'll do one more so you can get the true effect of a border design. Look at that. And we're coming all the way around, stopping on center. You know what's really neat to think about too is the opportunity to quilt some of your own projects at home and do it with, with actually really little cost. You know, uh, when we talk about quilting and we talk about finishing our projects, there's some expense in it. I know all of you could admit that. Like taking it to a long armor, it's usually not cheap. Well, think about this set. Um, it's a $175 set. You're getting eight different tools. You're getting the ruler foot, the crosshair ruler, the spacing gauge to be able to create those tools. And you're able to do that for $175 and finish um, an unsurmountable number of quilts once you learn some of the basics. So when you think about the cost versus the value, you've got a lot of a lot of value in what you can do and what you can finish with just um, using that set of rulers to be able to finish some of your home projects. So I'm going to do a little bit of inspiration. And then if there's some time, I'll do a little bit more quilting. Um, but I did want to show you our next project that um, we um, or next product that we brought to market that we're going to have one of you win today. So the product that we brought to market is called our Sew Steady Suspension System. And the reason why we brought this to market is because we had so many people say to us for years, you know, oh, I love the idea of it, but you know, you're quilting these little blocks. How can you really do a big quilt using um, your Sew Steady extension table on your domestic machine? And so what we did is we um, worked really hard to come up with an option that allows you to go ahead and attach your projects um, and kind of suspend them, if you will, um, using um, maybe a, a tabletop surface or your so steady table or your countertop at home. When I was working with this and kind of creating this option, um, I was working on a t-shirt quilt and I was on my counter, um, at my kitchen counter at home. And I pulled out um, the kind of a floor model to be able to suspend my quilt. And what I found quickly is that it was gonna take me more than a few days to finish my quilt. And I was going to have to take it down every time Time if I wanted to access my kitchen cabinets because it was covering up all my kitchen cabinets. So I had these cool tools ready to use um, right here and you can kind of see one of them in the background here but I had this uh, ready to use and so I tried it out to by attaching my uh, project to it and suspending my project in the air. So I'm going to go ahead and show you I'm just going to tilt this up a little bit and show you how I attach my project to this to be able to use it and suspend the project in the air so I could quilt different sections of my t-shirt quilt. So what I did is I took this tube here, uh, we call it our spacer tube, and I just kind of put it underneath the project itself. And then I went ahead and um, brought that up to the clip and I just clipped that into place. And by um, by having that tube in there, it really just kind of grips your project, but it doesn't like put any unnecessary extra crimps in it or anything. And then look at that guys, it's holding that project up. This is a smaller project, so I'm actually only using one clip, um, but you're able to use more clips for the bigger the project. And now I have it suspended and it's able to go ahead and move the fabric with ease right on my so steady table. So because this is a smaller project, I can go ahead and use the so clamp it to the so steady table with ease. But if I was doing like my t-shirt quilt, I actually had it clamped to the edges of my countertop, which these clamps actually do go up to three inches and they're super easy to use. Um, what you do is you go ahead and it comes kind of ready to go ahead and, and form like that. And so um, in order to get it going, you just kind of roll this out a little bit. 
And actually for bigger projects, I like to keep a little bit of a roll in it because it helps secure that fabric even better. And then depending on the thickness of the counter, you just go ahead and secure it up and then clamp it down using that. So it's so, so easy. And then in order to go ahead and clamp, um, get the clamp on, you would go ahead and just place this little ring onto that ball and then you secure it like so and then tighten it on. So it's a really, really easy uh, product and uh, we call it our So Steady Suspension System. You can get it in a two-piece set or a four-piece set, um, but again, um, pretty inexpensive for what it's doing for you in being able to help you finish bigger projects, patchwork projects, and all the extras um, in between right there on your home sewing machine with ease. We've had lots and lots of people that have really appreciated adding this to a necessary tool in their home sewing room, and we hope you guys do too. I feel like I'm just about out of time. Um, I'm not sure if Trisha wants to come back on and do the giveaway, but um, if you guys wanted, I could show off another design, Trisha. You just let me know. <laughs> I like to do this. <laughs> well, we could watch you all day long, Stacy, but we do have to move on to the next segment here in just a moment. So I think if we move on to that giveaway, it would be awesome. Let's do it. All right. And we are going to do, you guys uh, donated the grid glider and you did the polish kit and the two-piece suspension system. So thank you so much for that. Uh, we are going to throw in the 18 by 24, ex or the 18 by 24 inch extension table as well. So you're going to be totally set up to use one of these beautiful so steady tables. So I think we're ready to go in and pick our winner. So let's see who we have. Are we ready, Brian? We are ready. All right. Prize number 20. Prize number 20. Let's see who gets that amazing package. Let's see. Almost there. Robbie V, watching on YouTube, you are our winner. Congratulations. So to claim your prize, you'll be able to go over to our link tree. Excuse me, that's in the description. Hit claim your prize and fill out that form and you'll be able to get your prize. All right. Well, thank you so much. And Stacy, I think we're going to let you go today. So Sounds we appreciate good. you being here. Thank you so very much. Thank you. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. All right. Well, I've got a couple special pricing here. I know that Grace is waiting in the waiting room for us. So in just a moment, we'll get them pulled up. But I just want to show you a couple of things for so steady we have if you get the wish table this thing is wonderful with the purchase of the 22 and a half by 25 and a half wish table you get that two arm suspension system for one dollar and that's all automatic when you add the wish table to uh, your cart on our website it'll show that two-piece suspension system in there so that's a fantastic deal and Stacy told you um, and showed you how fantastic that works so that one is pretty awesome that wish table normally is 229 and it's on sale right now for 199 the other special that's going on right now is with the purchase of the four-piece Versa set you get the Versa bag free so that's a $49 value um, you're able to get with that adorable little so steady bag. You can also find any of those extension tables. Let me share my screen here for you. It'll be just another second. One more. Sorry, guys. Get that pulled up. Which one am I pulling up here? Oh, well, what I'm trying to tell you is all you have to do is go to our website and type in So Steady Tables. We have a large variety coming up for those different options. All right, well, we are going to go in with the Grace Company. They are back with us today. We have Mark this time along with Melinda again. So thank you guys for joining us once again. I think we can't can't hear you. I can't hear you. No. <laughs> no. There okay. we go. We hear you. Okay. 
How are you this afternoon, Tricia? Fantastic. It's nice to see you again, Melinda. Thank you. Hello, Thank you. <laughs> How are you doing? Good. We're so happy Good. that you're here. Yeah, we're so excited to be here. I'm, I'm excited. Melinda was telling me the first one, and it's just great to be able to be in front of you with your customers to talk about the Grace products. And, and no exception today, we have a wonderful product that we'll be talking about today, so we're very excited to do that. All right. Yes. Well, we'll let you take it away so you guys can give that awesome demonstration. All right. Thanks, Trisha. Thank you. So, Melinda, today we have our CUNY 21X Elite. You know, Mark, I'm going to say this is like the creme of the creme uh, of our, our products. It's uh, the top of the line. It has the most uh, and best features uh, of all of our machines. I love using this machine. I love showing it mm. off uh, at shows or, you know, talking about it on the phone uh, with customers. It's just uh, a dream machine. It is a dream machine. And before we get on, I mean, let's say hello to everybody who's watching. So thank you for being a part of Swing Parts Online in the video that they're, or this wonderful event that they're putting on. Uh, we have a lot of people coming on. Um, it's great to be with everybody. And because we're doing it live, if you have any questions, Melinda and I will get to them um, as many as possible. So please put in your comments, put in your questions, put in your thoughts and we'll try to get them as, as, as many as we can. We have a screen right over here that we could uh, look at to make sure we get all of them. So don't hesitate, put in all your comments, all your thoughts, because um, we have a nice product we'll be talking about, and I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of questions, so don't hesitate, type in your questions or your thoughts, and we'll be happy to get to them. All right, Mark, I wanna start this segment uh, with uh, a question uh, of the audience. I want to see uh, kind of, uh, a number uh, of how many UFOs uh, you have waiting. Uh, I know we asked this question uh, in our earlier segment, but how many UFOs do you have waiting uh, that uh, you, you know you, you've worked uh, on your quilt tops and you, you know you just haven't gotten to those quite yet? So go ahead and put a number in the comments. Tell us how many of those UFOs you have. I love to see the number. I don't know if I love seeing a high number or a low number, but nonetheless, I love seeing people come in. We got five twos, uh, six 24. UFOs, 24, yeah, five. There are so many UFOs that needed to be 49 um, wow. by Ollie. So uh, Paula says two, Susan says 12, almost two from Bev, uh, two, 11, 11. over 30. Wow. So. What do we know from those numbers? That there's a lot of unfinished objects that people are working on. Um, another question with that is, why do we have so many? Yes. You know, um, is it the maybe tools we have, the process we're working on, or, or maybe the we, cost of sending it out to be finished? Yeah, the cost because that can that can add that up too. Especially up. if you have over sixty and you're sending them off, you're like, I don't want to keep sending them off. <laughs> So I'm curious too, from all these um, coming in, what's really stopping you from finishing? And I know time, right? Family, time, jobs. I get all of that. Life. Life, <laughs> yes. I get, I get all of that. But is it also with the machine? You know, what machine are you using? Do you sit down to quilt, which can really wear down on, on our body if we're doing large quilts? And so put in the comments, maybe some of the reasons, a short, couple words on as to why that these unfinished objects are not being completed um, and you're not the only ones you're not the only one in that group who has all these projects that are not finished that there's a reason as to why they're not finished so i'm just curious i'd like to see some of those comments so scared to free motion that could that's a big yeah. one scared yeah. to free motion is a big one um, we hear that all the time with free motion they don't want to they just don't know where to start, right? And you know, uh, Mark, we're going to be our own worst critics mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to any project, whether it's quilting, what, any other type of crafting or anything, parenting, you name it, we're going to be our own worst critics. Uh, but at the same time, you, you know, we can't really get better uh, unless we have the proper tools to do so. Uh, put forth the effort to do so uh, and want to do so. So I, I think with the products uh, that, that the Grace Company has to offer, uh, we can help overcome those challenges for so many people out there. Absolutely. Um, some of the comments too, one of them was, um, let's see, UFOs sometimes get too big for my, my little machine. 
which is also another big another big reason. You have a little machine and you have a lot of UFOs and large projects, and it's just not as convenient to do those large projects on a small machine. You know, kids, dogs, horses, yeah, so life, um, time, um, how to choose a design, um, getting, getting distracted, you yeah. know, that's a, you know, you get started, you get distracted, you know, life comes in. Um, but going back, you know, I want to probably, we're going to touch I love upon. The comment mark, progress is better than perfection. Yes. That, that's at, like head on the nail, that that's it. Uh, and that, I think that's with anything life throws at us. It is. Um, there it is right there from Gigi's progress, you know, um, let's see, can't wait, um, can't sit too long. Um, so yeah, I mean, it depends on what system you have. So yeah, sitting, uh, if you have a sit down, um, the one that our machine is on now, you can actually, if you want it, you can sit or stand. And with that comment, I would, you know, you can stand and, and quilt or um, some of those quilting chairs that almost like a bar stool that you're not really sitting just enough to where your feet are hitting the ground. That's yeah. always a, a good one. Um, don't make me count on Linda's probably how many, so she probably has a lot. Um, so really, as we're seeing all these comments come in that everybody's seeing, we get it. We know it's, it is tough to challenge and, um, having definitely a bigger machine, um, helps with those projects. Exactly. Exactly. And, and you know, earlier Jana uh, and I, we talked about, uh, the cutie frame with the domestic machine the cutie frame uh, with the 15 Pro, uh, the 21 X Elite, this machine right here, as I mentioned, it, it really is like uh, the cream of the crop. It, it's our best product. I'm super excited to show everybody about it. So Mark, let's go ahead uh, and jump right in and yeah, get let's talk going about, with yeah, all the absolutely. features. And... Um, as we go over the features too, there are a lot of videos you can find um, with some of the stuff that either we don't cover. Um, like for example, when we talk about this, we won't get too much into free motion quilting, uh, but there are videos out there to help you free motion quilt, get started. So uh, I suggest that you go watch those videos because they're really good and that would help you get started. With this one, we want to talk about all of the wonderful features our 21 has to offer. Uh, we'll do some quilting so you can see how easy it is. Um, but there are so many features like you said. And let's just first start out, I'm going to start out talk with talking about the handlebars. So with the handlebars on our 21X Elite, um, they adjust for your quilting, right? You can adjust them in, you can adjust them out, you I can would, move them. Yep. I, I, sorry to interrupt, Mark. I would compare our handlebars uh, to like the steering wheel uh, in our cars. Uh, you can tilt it, uh, bring it down, you can move it up, uh, you can pull it out towards you so it's telescoping. Uh, really, you can make your steering wheel or the handlebars on your machine uh, as comfortable specific for you. That's right. And that's what we want, quilt and comfort, you know, outside of the other things that stop us. But if you can start being comfortable, then it makes your job much easier. So let's start with comfort. So yeah, they can be adjusted and I'm going to just come up here. I'm going to pull open the tab and you can see our handlebar can come down. So if you want a micro uh, stippling, you want to um, just really get close to your work. That's one way to do it. Um, it can come up. If you want to move to the other side, you can actually move this where you want it to be. And then also, if you are vertically challenged, That's I know I said me. that <laughs> as he looks right at me. <laughs> yeah. Always look right at Melinda standing right there. Um, you know, you have the, at the 21, you have a big area that you're working in. And, and normally when you're quilting, you don't want, we talk about comfort, right? So I'm gonna stand to the side here. You don't want to go all the way forward with the machine and you're stretching to come all the way back towards you. And then when you go back, you're kind of stretching. So you're leaning kind of forward. So you look uncomfortable. Uh, we don't want that. So we built in adjustable handles that can pull out. So you can actually pull these handles out. You can, I'm gonna go ahead and do that a little bit. So you can pull these out and you can probably get another about two inches. You can see the distance uh, from here to here. You can get about two more inches of throw space. I'm um, sorry, not throw space, but of, of reach. So you're not stretching forward and backward. So the adjustable handles is a big thing. Yes, yes. And, and again, uh, when we have our bigger projects, comfort is kind of uh, at the utmost importance because if, we're, if we can't be comfortable quilting, we're not gonna quilt for very long 
uh, uh, the number of times that we're going back to a project, that number is going to continue to grow because we keep stopping and then coming back. Uh, and, and I think there's quite a few projects that sometimes get forgotten about because they've had to stop and come back so many times. At that point, they're ready to move on with the new project. That's so right. there's uh, another UFO to add to the stack. That's right. With the 21 inch throw, another question I like to ask is, you know, how do we get qualified for what machine we want to buy? And since we're talking about our 21X Elite, and, and I know so many parts online, as they get back on, they're going to have wonderful prices that fits in your budget. But with it, you know, think about the patterns that you're doing. Are you quilting bigger patterns? Do you want to quilt bigger patterns? Uh, are you, I guess, held to a standard of like, I could only do so much of a pattern because of the machine we have or that you're working with that's preventing you from going bigger. Um, so some of these questions as you ask yourself go, yeah, I want a bigger workspace. I want to do bigger patterns. Um, the standard size pattern is roughly around like 10, 11, 12 inches of, of pattern size. And with our 21X Elite, you can accomplish that with no problem. Oh, definitely. But uh, on kind of that flip side, Mark, we also have to, to make sure we have enough room uh, in our sewing area, having a dedicated space, having the correct frame, a, you know, all those different factors to make sure all the conditions uh, are going to be right uh, yeah. for anybody to, you know, in a sense, really determine what machine is going to be best for them. That's right. Okay, so that's one feature about the 21X that I, that I really love is, is the um, ability to adjust the handles so you, again, are quilting in comfort. Um, obviously, we have our 21 inch throw space. That's a big one. Um, lighting is another big one. And I like that this has lights underneath the needle that can be adjusted um, to make it darker or um, you could dim them. And this right on the screen is as you are going through. So. so right now we have our needle area. It's the brightest. Mm -hmm. We're going to go ahead and dim that light all the way until we actually even turn it off. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're, for, uh, you know, here in our studio, we have tons of extra lighting. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that light off for now. Uh, and we can, you know, come back and turn that on later if we need to. Yep. Since we're on the screen, um, and uh, yeah, so some comments coming up from, from uh, Rachel. Um, but since we're on the screen, let's go ahead and continue on the screen and what comes with. So this is a seven inch touch screen. Um, it is a touch, so you can go from feature to feature. Um, and so let's talk about some of the ones. I'm just going to start off by talking about the different stitch modes that this machine comes with. So right now you see it says precise with the drop down menu. These are the modes that you can select. So we have precise, cruise, manual, and based. Precise and cruise, they are regulated modes and then manual shuts off that regulation and you're quilting, um, keeping up with the machine speed as it's, as it's quilting. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about precise. Now on precise, you can start it, start the machine by hitting this start, uh, play button right here, or you can on the handlebars, we also have another um, really a start button on the handlebars, which I love. I love that I can go from either my screen or down to the handlebar at any given uh, time. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to use precise as we're quilting. Now what precise is, um, is really as it sounds precise. As I start my machine, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to start quilting and I'm not going to pull the bobbin up. I'm just going to hit this um, button right here. That's a play button. I'm going to go ahead and hit it. Now, once I do that, you're going to notice that the needle won't start until I move the machine. So I already pushed it. So it's ready to go. So if I move it, you see that it's moving. So if I stop, it stops. It is very precise. I can go as slow as I want, and I can go as fast as I want as I go around. It's very easy, and you can see I'm just moving with a couple fingers, and so it's very smooth, um, very be uh, the beautiful stitches. Uh, outside of free motion quilting is scaring is how heavy is it for me to move the machine, or you're just not used to moving a machine around because we're used to moving the fabric onto the machine that the proper way is moving the machine on top of the fabric. You know, we always yes. talk about like writing your name, right? If someone were going to hand you a, a paper and a pen, you're not going to hold the pen and start moving the paper to write your name. 
That's just, that's just weird. You're going to yes. hold the pen and write your name that way. It's just more, it's, you're more comfort, uh, comfortable. Um, you can finish a lot more at an at a, um, amount of time that's reasonable for you. And so it's really easy with our 21, the movement of the machine with our ball bearing carriage uh, wheels, it makes that really um, smooth and easy. And that's on precise again. So precise again, when I start it, it doesn't do anything until I move the machine and it is regulated. So it doesn't matter how fast or how slow I go, you're gonna get those same stitches, the same length every single time. Now we have other modes on there like cruise. I know a lot of people like cruise. What is cruise mode? So cruise, uh, if we go ahead and open up that drop down menu, we'll go ahead and select uh, the cruise option. Uh, with cruise, think of it just like, uh, back to the, the car analogy, but just like in our cars, when we turn our cruise control on, we're not, uh, you know, pressing on the gas where we're... You're going at the same speed, it's, pretty much. Right, clear of the gas, but we're just going. We're going to continue to go regardless. So it, again, uh, when we go ahead and start, uh, and again, we can press the start on the screen or go ahead and press start on the handlebar, but we can see that needle, it's, it's going, whether I'm moving the carriage or not. And again, regardless as to how fast or how slow we move the carriage, we're going to have that same stitch size. Uh, when we stop moving, we can see the needle is still going up and down. I'm gonna go ahead and stop that. Um, but it, I would say the cruise mode, it's great for if you have those small areas mm -hmm. that you're trying yes. to fill in. Um, you know, doing uh, very precise uh, needlework on your project. Those are the times you really want to use that, that cruise mode. Absolutely. And I love what you just said there from filling in the work. And I know, a, I know a lot of quilters, when they're stippling or they're moving around, they want to fill in small areas. If you were to do that on precise, because it's so precise, you're moving the machine that slow, it would be a you little be more challenging. Forever. Yeah. <laughs> um, so with cruise, and that's when you can move the handles down. So now we're talking about cruise mode. Go ahead and move your handles down, right? So I can get in. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate this. I'm going to go ahead and move those down because I want to get really close. Perfect. So now once on cruise, I can really get in here and I can get really close. What you don't want is when you're obviously quilting and the handlebars up here in your heads between your between your two hands, because then all the blood and everything's going down. And then again, quilting in comfort. So as you can see with my handles uh, straight down, I can then get in close while my hands and my arms are still straight. And I can go ahead and move that around and then fill in work. And I can go as small and as slow as I need to go ahead and get very precise quilting as I'm doing micro stippling um, in that area. Um, and that's really, really nice. And so um, I know it's um, hard to see. I'm looking right at it and I just, I just love it. I, can, I love how, how precise crews can be to fill in your gaps. And I yes. love that, how, how it could be just what you want it as you're filling in those small little gaps. I'm gonna go ahead and move the handlebars back up. It's really simple there. All right. All right, so our next, uh, if we go back to our screen, uh, the next stitch mode uh, that I do want to talk about is our manual mode. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Mark, uh, for the longest time, being uh, a newer quilter, I could not wrap my mind around why somebody would want manual on a long arm. Mm -hmm. uh, so g go ahead, uh, let's uh, explain that to our audience. Yeah, what well, manual does. So manual, to your point, to wrap it around why because stitch regulation is what we want if you slow down or speed up you want to be able to see the needle reflect your speed so the stitches stay the same length now with manual what you're going to find is when you hear the regulation um, when you slow down or speed up you're going to hear you're going to hear the um, speed of it right you're going to hear it almost like an engine slow down and speed up you're going to hear it back and forth if you have been quilting for a while or you already know a pattern and you just you can keep up the machine speed having it on manual is really fun and easy to keep up and you can see the stitches. I'm gonna go and turn it on right now. I'm at about 25% of, of the machine speed. And so when I turn it on, it's gonna go that fast. And so all I'm doing is moving it around and I'm just doing small stippling. And the stitches are staying the same length as it would have been if it's being regulated. 
And if I go fast, you're going to have the inconsistent, inconsistent stitches. So manual work is just really easy um, on your patterns, um, quilting around. Uh, if you're a quilter that you can keep up with the machine speed and keep the stitches the same length, manual is, is what you want to use. And not everybody, to your point, uses manual. So you have to be that quilter that can keep up the machine speed. Um, I actually like doing manual work because if I'm going around and I'm stippling, I, can, I, don't need, um, I don't need the machine to kind of slow down and speed up for me. I can just go through it at the one constant speed. Now this is at 25%, and so you can go down all the way to five, all the way up to 100% of the machine speed. Speaking of speed, 2,600 stitches per minute. I never thought we were gonna get there, yeah. Mark. I, yeah. I was waiting, I'm, I'm waiting, hold, I was waiting. holding on to that, and I was like, no, let's just bring, bring it out. So 2,600 stitches per minute, our 21 X Elite, um, and you can go from five up to 100%. So if you are a slower quilter just beginning, you can set that speed wherever it is comfortable for you. Yes, uh, and earlier again, uh, I'm referencing back to when Jana and I were on this morning uh, with the 15 Pro. Uh, the 15 Pro stitches 2,000 stitches per minute. So coming up to 2,600 stitches per minute, that is mm, fast. It is fast. It's <laughs> super fast. It is super fast. And let me, let me, I know I get a lot of comments like, oh, that is fast. You know, some people say, oh, I don't need a machine that fast. Well, let me share with you when the opportune moment is for a machine that goes that fast. You know, if you think about coming in out of a point and out of a point, you want to be able to ramp um, out pretty much when you come at, um, in a point and out of a point that those stitches stay the same length. And if you have a faster machine, it doesn't matter when you come to that point and then you kind of stop and bring it back out, you, the machine will keep up with you. So it's easier for the machine to keep up with you um, if you're a speed demon quilter and you like to go fast, get a faster machine really helps with that. And so 2600, it seems like a, it's really fast and it is, but I've seen a lot of quilters out there when I go to shows and a lot of them move the machine really fast. And so you want to be able to have that machine to keep up with you. Yes, yes. So we have one more uh, stitch mode. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that would be based. Uh, so it, again, uh, there are times, you know, we do need to make those based stitches uh, on our quilt, uh, and this is the perfect mode to be able to go ahead and do that. That's right. We have small, medium, and large. So when you go ahead and base it, pick which one you want. Um, we don't need to spend a lot of time with there because I know a lot of quilters know what base mode is, and so you have that option to base your quilt if you choose to do so um, at any given time. Okay, so keeping it on the screen, we have over here these other buttons that we can go ahead and um, use. And this top one is a jog, and that is a wonderful feature to move the needle um, up and down. And going back to my vertically challenged comment, when you're quilting- He's and talking about me. No, not just you, sometimes <laughs> even me. Like right now, if my machine is stopped where it's at, for me to reach the hand wheel, I, I mean, I can't even reach the hand wheel uh, myself. So, no matter where you're on your quilt um, and you want to pick up where you left off, you know, your thread broke, uh, your bobbin broke, and you want to go back to where you left off, go ahead and bring that over. And what some people will do is needle, needle down. They'll go ahead and, and press that needle down to see if they're right, right there, or a laser pointer will be really good as well. Uh, with the needle jog, once I go ahead and press it and you can go backwards or forward, you're going to see that needle is going to jog down towards the top of my fabric. And let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go back. Okay, and as we look at the needle, let's look at the needle here, and you're gonna see that the needle is moving up and down. And right now I'm pressing the buttons, if we can just get that needle picture. Um, and then you'll see that the needle, there it goes. So you can see the increments, how nice that is to bring that needle down, and I can then pull it back up. So I don't need to reach the hand wheel. I don't need to, uh, do needle needle down, I have that needle jog feature so I can get right back on where I left off. And so that's just another nice feature built into the 21X Elite. Yes, and, and I wanted to touch uh, on the comments. Marsha has a great question. What kind of maintenance would a machine like that yeah. need? Uh, we'll get to the, the yes. maintenance schedule here in just a few minutes uh, because it is everything you need to know about the machine, tutorials, settings, mm -hmm. Uh, how to's, maintenance, everything's built into uh, the settings uh, and the screen on the machine. So we'll get to that question here in the next few minutes. Yep, that's a great question. So needle jog, again, wonderful feature. Okay, 
Now, keeping on with the screen, again, there's a lot of features that's coming with this machine that's built into your fingertips right at the screen. The other one is um, Toolbox. Now, Toolbox, Melinda, brings up five icons that every single one of these icons, quilters would love to use. And there's one on here that we brought to the market um, that is the edge warning. I know you bring that up a lot, but edge warning is a fantastic feature that the 21 XLE has. Let's talk about the edge warning. Okay, so I'm the quilter, Mark. Uh, I will oftentimes kind of get in the zone uh, and I, <laughs> I'm quilting, I'm in my zone, uh, and before I know it, I've crashed uh, mm -hmm. into the front rail, into the back well, rail. You do that? You you crash in and, and to the side? I know. Where, I don't, where, I don't think you're the only one, by the way. Where's my long arm insurance? You're not, you're, not the, yeah, you're not the only one that happens to. <laughs> yes. So it, again, uh, and then I'm, you know, probably have a few choice words to say, and then I'm back uh, unpicking my stitches and, you know, making sure I, I'm back on track and fix my, my pattern and have to move on. So my favorite, absolute favorite feature about this machine is the edge warning. So again, if we're looking at our toolbox, uh, we can easily go ahead and select the edge warning. Uh, and we're going to, in a sense, measure uh, our quilting space. So we'll take it up to the top left corner uh, and we'll go ahead and set that area. Then we're going to come all the way back down to the bottom right corner uh, and set my safe zone there. Uh, now, I can set the edge warning to warn me at a half inch or one inch uh, away from all sides of my quilting space. I'll go ahead and set that uh, just at the half inch now it's set, uh, and I do want to make sure just really quickly uh, that my edge warning sound is on with the light, which it is. So we'll go ahead uh, and show you exactly how that's going to work. So we'll go ahead and start uh, our pattern. Uh, and as I'm getting closer to the edge, we can hear that beep. There's a faint red light that will show up on your fabric. So you can see that it's warning me as I'm getting close to kind of my outside area where I don't want to go. Yeah, I love that feature. To your point of quilting, when you said you get in the zone, we all have done that. We get in the zone and we come forward. So have an edge warning. You won't bump into the side of your frame or forward. So going back to like free motion scares me or you hear about people or stories when you're quilting and you just like your pattern is not a full circle or you're getting cut off because you're hitting the sides of the frame or coming forward the 21 x elite has that solved with that edge warning and with the light there you can also make that light brighter just with dimming the needle light you can make it brighter or you can make it um, as dim as you want so you if you turn the beep on, you can turn the beep on, on. yep off. Yep, so if you just want the red light and only the red light, then or you can turn you the beep the off. Beep yep. Only the beep. Yep, you can turn the beep off or you can turn the light back on. And that's right in the features. And so there it is on the edge warning, which is wonderful um, on, on, the, on the side in your frame. Okay, we also have bobbin estimator. We have a calculator. We have a measuring tool. And we have uh, projects. You can go in there. So let's talk about the bobbin estimator right now. So bobbin estimator, you can go in there and you can see on the screen, you can add as many bobbins as you want and different ones and you can put in the yardage. And so typically on the M class, which this one has on the, on the um, machine has an M class, you'd want to set your yardage typically around 80 yards is what, what it comes with. Um, and then you can go ahead and hit um, the plus or the minus to increase that. And then thread estimating. So when you get lower, you can see how much thread we have uh, remaining um, so it will go out. And so it won't tell you when you're out. What will happen is on your main screen right over here, you have a little bobbin icon and that would light up, let you know that your bobbin is running low. Um, at any given point, you can go ahead and wind your bobbin, which we'll talk about here. It has a built-in bobbin winder right at the top. So you can wind those bobbins during your projects, after your projects, or before, before your, your projects. projects. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's a bobbin winder that you can set um, and then also a, a calculator or a measuring tool. Now, those two are, are small features, but they're, they're nice to have if you want to measure the length of your quilt 
if you want to measure your quilt block, um, you can do the calculations so you're not trying to find a calculator either on your phone or trying to find one. It's all built into the uh, screen right there. You know, Mark, one, one, one challenge I have, uh, I can lay out my fabric, uh, I can cut my backing, my batting, everything. Uh, I can cut it where I think everything's exact and precise. But as soon as I get my fabric loaded onto the frame, there's always something that's off. Uh, and I just want, want to throw this out there. Uh, I, I don't think I'm the only one that this happens to. So let's put a two uh, in the comments uh, if that also happens to you. There should be a lot of twos coming in, right? Again, I, we're not the only ones. I mean, unless it's just me, but <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, there always seems to be some sort of measurement uh, that is off. And, and I, for the life of me, I can't figure it out. Uh, but going back to uh, the different options uh, on the machine, the measure tool, mm -hmm. that's phenomenal to, you know, once I have my fabric loaded onto my frame, I can quickly and easily measure my quilting area. I can make any adjustments to my quilting pattern because I automatically know that area on my frame. That's right. And, and you're right, there, there were quite a... Quite a few, Quite a few too, twos. so yep. thankfully I'm not the only one. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're all with you, uh, Melinda. Um, some of the questions came in on the bobbin. So yes, it is the M class bobbin. So you do have that larger uh, bobbin. And again, we talked about uh, briefly the bobbin um, um, winder at the top there, and you can wind it at any time uh, during or before or after your projects. It is a separate motor, so you can just wind your bobbins uh, up and get enough ready for your projects. All right. so. Easy to use, fun to use. Let's talk about the maintenance part of it, right? I know there's a question that came up. Maintenance of the machine, that's one that could, that's one that we hear a lot of. How easy is it to maintain? What do I need to do to maintain it? Um, so there's a couple ways, and Melinda will get here on the screen, but it does come with a manual to help you, um, you know, where to oil, how do I maintain, what do I need to do to keep the life of my machine running perfectly? But those manuals, they, they can, go they in, move. in a yes. drawer, they go in a box, they, you know, go in a tote. They are anywhere but available when we need them. That's right. <laughs> so with the 21X Elite in our screen, it has built-in um, video or tutorials, yes. uh, maintenance, troubleshooting. And let's go ahead and show them how easy it is to get there. So if we go ahead and click on uh, the little hamburger menu on the top right, uh, we can go to our settings uh, and, and that's uh, where we show yeah yep, so I let me go back mm -hmm. so back to the hamburger setting and then go to help so here we have preparing to quilt quilting maintenance troubleshooting using the touch screen so let's go ahead and click on maintenance uh, so here this is going to tell us uh, at the start of the new project after 20 hours of use uh, after sitting uh, with no use for more than 30 days. Um, it, you know, this is the time we want to oil our machine. Uh, and then after every other bobbin change, that's when we're going to oil our hook assembly. Uh, so right at the very top of the machine, so again, right behind uh, where our uh, screen display is, uh, we have a little opening to go ahead and oil that needle bar. Uh, if we move our machine all the way over, that side will be easiest to kind of get to. I just want to show how easy it is uh, to get to our bobbin area. So if we do need to change our bobbin, uh, if we need to oil uh, the hook assembly, this is exactly where to do it. Uh, there's no door. Uh, easily moving your fabric aside. Just move the, your machine to one side or the other, and then all the way forward. Easy access, uh, again, whether we're changing the bobbin or oiling. That's right. Um, I'm gonna add a little tidbit on the, on the maintenance. You know, that the maintenance of a machine is, is very crucial. Uh, we wanna be able to have a machine that is um, that really- last us. Yeah, last us, but little to no maintenance. Um, you know, we, we built the machine so that the, uh, the quilter, you guys who, who want to continue to quilt, can maintain the machine within, within your home. And so that's why we gave these wonderful features so that within 
within your time, you can uh, know how to ma maintain it um, if you need to. Even time the machine. The tool come or the machine comes with all the tools needed, so you can time your own machine. But more importantly, the machine is sealed and ball bearing. And so as we um, as we talk about the machine down here by the bobbin, uh, where the bobbin is, the machine is sealed. And so lint and all that stuff will not drive into the machine or as you blow or try to clean it out. And it's all ball bearing. And so it's just gonna last for a long, long time. Customer service is one that is also, we hear a lot, you know, if, if we do have issues, how easy is it to, uh, to get fixed? We would love to say that not only our machines, but whatever machine that we already own, I'm even sure your machines, right? Your, your own machines, your, your domestic machines have problems that you got to take it in and get right. fixed, right? It's not one machine is going to have no, um, no problems whatsoever, because yes. that would be really nice. Just like us, say, you know, we're not exempt from being worry-free, trouble-free, yeah. that there's always going to be something uh, that, that needs to happen uh, to be cared for, to be looked at. Uh, so it can just, with that being said, our machines, we make it very simple, uh, easy tutorials, things that everyday people can do at home themselves, uh, or you know, giving us a call, uh, our tech, uh, technical support team, uh, and we can walk customers through uh, any of those uh, you know, things that, that need to be done with their machine. That's right. All right, so a lot of comments coming in. Very nice, yes, perfect, love, need, you know, like wish I had or dreams. Going back to the question that you had asked at the very beginning, right? How many UFOs are um, that you have or still need to work on? Um, if you've been watching this segment and you've been staying with us, we appreciate it. I know there's a lot to cover. Um, now is the time to buy. You know, we, we keep putting off because of some of the the, the points that people are making with, you know, free motion or I'm, or I'm scared, or I don't know what to do, you know, get started. You want a machine that gets you to the next level. You want to transition your quilting. You want to continue to grow in your hobby and the 21X Elite would help transition from your smaller machine to the long arm. That transition, that transition period, sure, there might be a little, um, but the machine itself, you can see on this one side, there's no electronics at all. Same with this other side. And so as we're going to quilt, and thread your needle. Um, it is pretty much like you would on your domestic machine. And so we wanted to have um, at least that feel. So you're transitioning, it's not a scary transition. It's gonna be an easy one as you, again, look to move on from your smaller throat to, to a larger throat machine. Uh, the 21X Elite um, also um, has instructions on how to thread the machine as well. Um, also, let's talk about the magnifying glass that the machine comes with. All right, so Mark, uh, I, I'm gonna throw this out there. I'm getting to that age where I'm noticing slight, slight changes uh, in my vision. Just last night, my husband looked at me, he's like, why are you holding it like that? <laughs> and, and I was like, so I can see it, leave me alone. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, you know, being able to see things up close, it, they're getting blurrier and blurrier. I don't think terribly bad, but I, I can definitely notice those changes. Uh, and with our 21X Elite, we have our Magnifique uh, lens, uh, and there's three magnifications uh, or three different discs that you can install on your machine uh, and really bring, you know, whether it's the needle bar, uh, threading the needle, or if you're looking at your stitches, you know, to be able to see those fine details up close uh, when, when especially my, you know, pointing out myself uh, when I'm having the challenges of not being able to see things that are small or up close uh, as clearly. That's right. Okay. So let's talk about tension a little bit. Um, tension is one, again, that transition piece. Yes, you know, you're is. going from your Ninus machine to a long arm. And when you go from a smaller machine to any long arm, you're going to have that transition of knowing um, what my tension looks like, how do I fix it? Because that's going to be a pretty common theme that you're hearing in long arm is tension, tension, yes. tension, tension. And, and Mark, I, I want to interject. One of the things, it was kind of like a, a light bulb moment uh, that I had a little while back. Mm -hmm. So uh, we talk about tension of our machines, long arm versus domestic. Uh, when we are quilting with our domestic machines, oftentimes we're pushing our fabric 
underneath the needle. Once we're coming to a long arm machine, uh, and you brought this up earlier, we're now moving our needle over our fabric. Mm -hmm. So setting the tension or getting the right tension is going to be completely different between your domestic machine and a long arm machine. For the, the simple fact that, in a sense, we're rotating how we're completing our projects, whether we're pushing our fabric through or moving the needle over the top of the fabric. That's right. And because we have so many variables going, that tension is, is key um, as you're quilting. Um, so not only are the, is the tension maintenance or troubleshooting you can have right on your screen, but again, the manual also talks about it. The tension on a Cuning 21X Elite, and I'm not just saying this, it is really easy to adjust. You know, you, we have a dial knob on the side here, which from your angle, you won't be able to see, but right where my hand is right here, there's a dial knob that has numbers on there. You can adjust, um, and then also your bobbin, your bobbin hook you can adjust to. So don't let, if again, tension was something that was stopping you from buying a long arm, don't let these little things that are easily fixed by the manual, um, by a phone call, we would love to talk to you. I know Sewing Parts Online has a great team that can talk to you. Yes. Um, you're gonna be supported. And so these little things that are stopping you from going big into your hobby, don't let them stop you from doing that. Um, look at the 21X Elite and all the wonderful features that it has. And going back to the couple questions we had with, what size of quilting are you doing? What size of pattern? Do I have space? Um, if you really have been considering a long arm, the 21X Lee is easy to use, easy to maintain, um, easy to move around. There's nothing about it that's going to have a head scratcher, right? Maybe that's why I'm, I'm bald because I scratched my head <laughs> too many times. Um, this machine, you won't have to worry about all these head scratchers because it's just all built in and it's just easy, easy, easy. You know, Mark, uh, and one of the things I was truly truly surprised at uh, is it when you look at the box this machine comes in when you try to pick up the box this machine comes in it's a heavy box mm -hmm. it is <laughs> uh, but uh, the machine out of the box it, it's still going to be heavy uh, but as the machine or, or once the machine is put on the frame uh, and again the continuum uh, two frame it has uh, the dual wheel track uh, upgraded track system. So it, it, even though there's quite a bit of weight of the machine itself, the movement uh, on the frame uh, with the carriage and, and everything, it just glides so effortlessly. It doesn't feel like it weighs, it, you know, 50 pounds. It doesn't. Okay. So we went over a lot of stuff. I'll, I mean, questions, comments, you know, if there's anything that we can see popping up, we'll love, love to answer. Um, you know, some of us, how's the vibration? That's a good question. Uh, with any long arm, because of how fast it's moving, you're going to, um, you're going to possibly get some, but we have a tolerance and we've tested our machine to make sure that the vibration is within the tolerance of the quilter because you don't want your hands to be going around. I don't know you can see my hand right there, but if you were, you know, looking, I'm just like shaking, shaking around. You don't want your hands to be moving your arms. Um, you want to be able to have it. Um, quiet, um, functioning, um, the vibration. So as I go ahead and start this, as I move it around, and there's that edge warning we talked about right at the edge there. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it. And you can see with just my hand moving around that it's very to little to no, um, um, no force, vibration. No stress, yes. Right. Very little vibration. So that's a big one, and you definitely want one that has um, that, right? You don't want to have your, your movement. So that's a great uh, comment. So the vibration is, is really um, minimal, because like I said, there's going to be some vibration in all long arms. Um, ours, like I said, is very minimal, and it's, um, you won't even really notice it as you saw me quilting, you know, wasn't flapping around. But also, again, Mark, to, uh, a little bit to your point, how you hold the mm -hmm. handlebars. Uh, again, I've seen people at shows, uh, you know, demonstrating the machine. They really get a firm grip uh, on the handlebars, and, and you really don't need that firm uh, of a grip. Just a light, steady, you know, the tips of your fingers, uh, just guiding uh, and moving the machine, uh, and you really don't feel that much vibration 
compared to when you're really holding on to those handlebars. That's right. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, any other uh, comments we'd love to answer? Any questions, please come through. Um, they'll pop them up on the screen um, or if we don't see them. So bring in the questions uh, so we can help answer. Um, as we look at the machine, I'm going to point, a, point out a couple of things. When you see this, this is for the automation. Um, so yes, it is. Um, the automation is compatible with our 21X Elite. So going back again to the comment of like, oh, free motion scares me. Well, if free motion scares you and you don't want to at least try it and get going, I mean, there's ways to help you. There's videos, there's things you can do to, to, um, to help with your free motion scare, but automation, yes. you can add computer to it, then your free motion's out the window. Yes. Uh, and I love that our automation is compatible with all of our machines, all of our frames. Uh, and we have a segment uh, that will be coming up later this week uh, with the 21X Elite and uh, our automation software. Uh, so, we, you know, look at the schedules, uh, tune in for that one as well, because there will be lots of information uh, about the quilt motion. That's right. So you're gonna also see all these cords. So everything that you see hanging off this side of the machine or back here, this is all to do with our automation that we took off for this video. Uh, so within the box, you do get um, the tools needed. You get a manual, uh, you get the timing tool. Uh, you are able to, um, it comes with um, thread, extra bobbins, extra needles. Um, obviously the, the screen that comes with. Uh, so it comes with everything you need out, out in the box to have that out of box experience and these other features you see are for the automation that is an addition you could add to it at any time. Yes, yes. So and you know I, I love everything about this machine, um, the, you know the frame that, mm -hmm. that it's paired up with. I know I personally right now I don't have enough space in my house to be able to take this home um, but one day I will have enough space. Uh, this is my dream machine, so one day, Mark, it is going to come home with me. There you go. So going back to it, if, if you've been considering, you know, we, we keep saying that, but really the 21X Elite, you know, it's going to have a wonderful price that they'll get to here in a minute. Um, and sure, you're investing. And um, if you've already been looking at long arms, you know some of the prices that are out there is really, really high. And so sure, there's some investment um, with this, but once you see the price, you're gonna be surprised on how budget friendly a 21 inch long arm that has all these features. Think about the features we went over. That is something that's really, um, well, a lot of them aren't even reserved for some of the other um, high end machines. Only in the 21X Elite do you have all these features we talked about at a budget friendly cost. Um, don't let some of the fear stop you. Um, we saw how easy it is to move. You can adjust the handles. Um, maintenance um, is one that really is a eye catcher when we talk about little to no maintenance on our machines because that's the last thing you want is to invest in a grace product just to always have it maintain and service. You want to be able to have a machine that is really built, really easy, strong, um, with all the wonderful features to built to last. Oh, exactly, exactly. And, and you know, built to last, uh, and, and I would uh, envision this uh, being one of those keepsakes uh, they get that will eventually get passed on, you know, to our next generation That's as right. well. That's right. So um, we briefly talked about the frame for a little bit, uh, for or a small amount. So the frame that they can get with the 21X Elite is either an eight foot, 10 foot, or 12 foot. And so look at the space that you're looking to put this in. If you have room, this is what I'm going to tell you. If you have room for a 10, but all you do are queen size quilts, I would do a 10 foot frame um, instead of having a queen frame. So again, think about this. If you have room for a large frame, I would do a 10 foot or 12 foot frame because you could always quilt anything smaller. But if you get a queen size frame, you will need to get the two foot extension in order for that to make it a, a king size. So yes. if you have room, do the larger. They're all the same cost. Get the 10 or the 12 foot to go with your 21X Elite. Yes, so, uh, and I think, you know, just with our frame, uh, it, whether it's the eight foot, 10 foot or 12 foot, we can still quilt our smaller projects, uh, you know, anything from our table runner crib size. Uh, the eight foot will, of course, quilt up to a queen size. Uh, the 10 foot will quilt a king size. Uh, the 12 foot will quilt a like a California king size. So it, again, you're not limited to how small 
uh, you can quilt your projects, but you are limited on that upper end uh, of how big you can quilt your project. That's right. I love some of the comments. Go big or go home. Exactly. That's right. Always says go always big or go home, right? That. Yep. So if you have room again, get that get that big one because you could always quilt anything smaller and it's harder or it's more inconvenient to have to add more to the frame if you bought the smaller frame um, on that. So um, the footprint on those, like in like a 10 foot, um, you need a roughly about a hundred and I want to say about 140 inches outside outside dimension to fit in your area. Then if you do the 12 foot, um, you need probably oh 100 and maybe 170, 160, 170 on your outside dimension. So so keep that in mind as you're looking at the footprint of of the frame. So. We had a lot of comments. Um, if we missed any of the questions, we can get them up here. Um, but I, I'm excited, I think as much as you are, to maybe see what kind of package deal is being offered for the 21 X Elite uh, with a frame. Um, so we could probably turn the time back over unless you yeah. had any other thoughts you wanted to bring up. Trisha, I, I wanted to, to jump back to you. Do you have any questions about the 21 Pro? Did you see any questions we may have missed? You guys are doing a fantastic job answering the questions that came along. We've been looking as well. It looks like we're good at this point. So oh, thank good, you very, very good. much for your demonstration. And we look forward to you guys joining a couple more times throughout this event. We've got yes. another one with the 21X Elite with automation. And then we also have people coming back to show us the True Cut, correct? Yes, yep. So we're, we're again, very excited. Uh, we're, we're happy to be part of, of the kind of this first uh, event uh, with Sewing Parts Online. And, and you know, we, we always hope you'll invite us back uh, for new shows, new events down the road, so. Yeah, and if I can jump in, Trisha, real fast. I see it says call for event pricing, um, which I'm sure they are ready for. So again, call that number on your screen to get the very special price that, that is allotted for this event that So Machine Parts Online is, is putting on. The machine, the frame, call that number on your screen to get that. And it looks like finance is also available, which is really good. Yes. Yes, it is. And I, I just want to throw one more thing in there really, really quick. I just want to thank, thank you guys because originally I had reached out to you know, our suppliers and stuff, and it's like National Sewing Month, we're gonna do some giveaways and seeing if you guys wanted to contribute. But you were the first one to ask if we wanted to do a live. So this all stemmed from you asking if we wanted to do a live. <laughs> so That's I just great. want to thank High you. Five. Yeah. I really, really love that you guys are doing multiple segments and we are all enjoying it, I know I am. So I just wanted to say thank you to you guys. You are welcome, welcome. Trisha. Yes. <laughs> So. <laughs> all, all right, right. well, we'll, we'll take it the time back gonna... over to you. All right, thank you, and I'll show that special pricing. All right, guys, they did a wonderful job. I just absolutely love their presentations, and I'm looking forward to the couple more that are coming out throughout the event. But let's go over a couple of those pricings that they had mentioned. Let's talk about if it was going to be just the machine. If you already had the Continuum 2 frame, if you're looking at just the machine, the MSRP on that is $9,999. Our sale price is $8,499, but that is not the special event pricing. Remember, we can't display that, so please, please give us a call. We have some fantastic special event pricing. And as Mark had mentioned, we do have financing available, so that is always an option. If you need just the continuum frame and you already have the machine, you can do that as well. It has a MSRP of the $3,169. It's on sale, regular sale for $2,699. Again, we have better pricing available. So please, please give us a call and we can help you out. You could choose the eight foot, the 10 foot or the 12 foot. Like they were saying, go big or go home. If you have the space, take advantage of that. And then we have the combination. So if you're looking at getting the 21X Elite machine with that Continuum 2 frame, it normally, my eyes, I'm squinting here like Melinda said, it's the $13,101 and it is on sale for $11,198. But here we go again, special event pricing. Give us a call, that number at the top. We have a fabulous team that is ready to help you secure 
some wonderful prices. It's going to take you into the next level on your long arm cool team. They made it look so easy. I know I'm enticed by it. <laughs> so last but not least, we are going to do our next segment here. It, let me go ahead and get this off the screen. There we go. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> All right. Well, last but not least, we have Sheila Christensen joining us. And can we get her pulled up on the screen too? Hi. Awesome. There we go. Hello, Sheila. Hello. How are you? I am doing very well. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. A little bit tired yeah. this morning. We were, I was just about yeah. to say you're joining, um, joining us from quite a ways away. Australia, right? In New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand. I'm sorry. Yes. I was thinking Australia. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you getting up early. You probably have your coffee. I've got my water over here. <laughs> yeah, All yeah, right. well, my coffee this we morning. Will, so, yeah. Well, we'll go ahead and let you take over and do a, an awesome demonstration on, I believe, creative grids, triangles, and your patterns, correct? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Right. Can't wait. Hello, everyone, and welcome to New Zealand. Um, I know you can't see any in New Zealand, but take my word for it. It's where I am. Um, so my name's Sheila Christensen. I am a quilt designer, um, pattern designer, and a creative grids designer, and also an author. So um, you may have seen my books. Let me just show you here. Okay, so I'm just going to get the comments up, but I couldn't hear myself on that when I was doing that. So I'm trying to find the comments. For some reason, my mouse has disappeared. <laughs> Don't you love it? Okay, so I might do that on another screen. Um, so let's just start that a moment. Okay. Right, so I'm going to talk to you about my passion, which is triangle piecing. And you can see the quilt behind me on the wall. Um, it's a called Matariki, which is the Mari name for the new year. And it's also a constellation of stars. Um, so this is a pattern that I do. Um, when people look at it, they kind of think, oh, that's going to be really hard. But uh, I'm going to show you how easy it is with the Creative Grids rulers, because I really love those for doing triangles and all the different shapes that you can do. So first of all, um, so Tricia, I wonder whether you could comment when I go to this camera, can you still hear me? We can. Sheila, we can see that we can see that angle, but we can't hear you. That's what I was checking because I wasn't getting that in my ears. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I can hear you now, but not when you're at the other yeah. angle. We can yeah. see okay. I can't hear you. Yeah. So uh, don't gotta you love technology, technology, right? It's great. <laughs> <laughs> So let me just try this again. And sure. I'm going to check on this one camera. Okay. 
Brian's chit chatting with me. <laughs> We can see it, but let's see. No audio. Well, while she's trying... okay, so what I'll do is um, I'll switch between and I'll I'll come back and and talk to you and then do the the little things on there. <laughs> okay. Um, what I could do actually is. So I can add another, I can add myself in there. And hopefully you'll be able to see, and uh, not that one. So. All the fancy buttons, right? <laughs> all the fancy buttons, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. oh, don't worry, they had to be patient with me earlier. Thank you viewers, oh. we love you. <laughs> Oh, everybody throw a comment. Let me know what you guys are working on. There we go. Okay. I love what you're sewing. Um, so I've got myself in an overlay here, but I don't know if you can actually hear me there. We um, can. That looks lovely, Sheila. Oh, you can. Oh, excellent. Yeah, that's go. perfect. Wonderful. Okay. So, <laughs> Good job. Um, yay. <laughs> Sometimes you get it to work out. <laughs> So, okay, let's get started. Hello, everybody. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about these triangles and the triangle blocks and how you can make them really easily with the Creative Grids rulers. So these are some of the blocks I've made. Behind me are some of the blocks I've made. And a lot of you might have made similar things, but using, say, English paper piecing or a specialist ruler. But um, what I'm going to show you today is that you don't need a very specialist ruler. You can just use the Creative Grids triangle ruler for all of these different shapes. So see, these are some of the blocks. I'll talk to you about where the patterns for these are later. But these are some of the blocks that you can make. You can make hexagon shaped blocks. And that's like the ones that we've done behind me. You can make triangle shaped blocks like those so there's lots of different blocks that you can make and it's really fun adventure to get into something really new um, now the triangle rulers that i love to use are the creative grids so this one is the eight inch finished and it's eight and a half inches from top to bottom and um, they also do the 12 560 which is the um 12 inch finished size and then also once i'd written my book and a couple of books i said to creative grids you know i love these triangle rulers but i'd love to be able to cut half triangles really easily and so i've designed this one which is the half 60 triangle um, and you can get that one as well. And I have some patterns specifically for that ruler. So I thought I'd start off by just showing you how easy it is to cut triangles and why I really like using the Creative Grids one to, um, to cut them. Um, the, really, the main reason I love it is it's very intuitive. So if you want a two inch finished piece, you're going to cut a two and a half inch strip, just like you would if you were making squares. And also you're going to use the two and a half inch line on your ruler. So it just makes complete intuitive sense to me to um, use these, these types of rulers. Now you can see on the top here, there's a little blunt tip. And what that means is that when you cut your triangles, you get a lovely blunt tip that's absolutely brilliant for lining up all the pieces when you're doing your sewing. So I'm just going to start by showing you cutting a triangle. Um, I've got a strip of fabric here, so I need to cut my two and a half inch strip. And I'm going to use my lovely little, little tiny Creative Grids ruler here. It's great for my demos. 
So I'm left-handed, by the way. So you have to turn your head upside down. <laughs> Unless you're left-handed too. I have learned to cut the other way around, but um, this is my go-to. So I'm just I'm just neatening the edge off first of all of my strip of fabric because everything here is cut from strips. So it just feels very comfortable to do what we're used to doing. Now I'm going to put the two and a half inch line of this ruler on the edge. And you can see that there are two different sets of markings on the, the rulers here, the straight ruler. Um, you've got these black ones here, and then you've got white ones that go in the other direction. So if you're right-handed, you can go that way and use the white markings, or you can turn the ruler around and use the black markings there. Um, the other advantage with these rulers is they have this lovely grippy pads on the back, so it means that they don't slip all over the place. So I'm going to put my two and a half inch line, I'm going to use the black markings. The two and a half inch line goes on uh, I'm going to turn it around because that's the side I've, I've already turned it around. So two and a half inch line is going to go on the side that I just trimmed. And then I cut there. So that's my two and a half inch strip. And I've actually got four layers here. So I, I like cutting things in bulk. So I'll put it like that. Now to cut my triangle, I've got my, this is my eight inch finish. CGRT 60 is the ruler. And I'm going to place it on here. And you can see that I'm going to put the two and a half inch line on the bottom. And when I do that, the blunt tip up here is um, at the top of my strip. So it just makes perfect sense. Two and a half inch strip, and I put the two and a half inch line on there. So now I'm going to cut on both sides. So I'm going to cut there. And I'm going to swap hands because I'm in a cramped position, but normally I would move my body around to cut, but I don't want to cut towards my body. So I'm going to cut with my right hand here. So you make a cut on each side and then there's my little set of triangles. And then to carry on cutting more triangles, I can either turn my ruler around like that and cut again on this side. Or I can flip the strip over, and this makes it much quicker, I think. Um, people in my classes love doing that. Flip, flip the strip over, and then you can just keep your ruler up the same way and carry on cutting down there. So these lines are um, nice and clear. You've got markings every inch. You've got markings half inches, which are the solid black lines. If you can see that, get the camera to focus. No, it's not going to focus there. <laughs> and then um, markings on white, which are the quarter inches in between, which we will be using in a moment. So now when you get to piecing some of these triangles together, let's just cut some background ones. Oh, you never realised that about the black and white numbers. Yeah, they're great. <coughs> so I'm going to cut a strip from this one. Hopefully my blade's nice and sharp because I've got layer upon layer because I'm working in a small space. So let's uh, cut a two and a half. <laughs> And now, cut a few triangles from here, and then I'll show you how they match up so beautifully for piecing. Oh, 
Okay. So now when you want to piece these triangles together, you can build a quilt up in rows. And this is the simplest triangle quilt, just whole triangles. And you can do, um, I do one with eight inch triangles finished, which is a great thing for doing like a crib quilt. Um, you can use all the really lovely kids fabrics and intersperse with some blenders and things. And all you have to do to do it is to build your quilt up in rows. So you have your triangles going in rows like this. So that's almost a row. So when you're piecing these together, you're going to place this one on top of this one. And if you can see, when I line up the triangles with each other, you can see the edges are all lined up here. In this corner here, you can see that tiny little quarter inch piece of blue. And if you turn it over, you can see a tiny little piece of the white with the flowers there. Where those cross over is going to be your quarter inch for your seam. So that's why I really love these blunt tip triangles, um, make it much, much easier for piecing. So you're going to sew down there and then you can build up a row for your quilt. Now, little tip on your fabric, I usually try to keep my triangles with the blunt tip at the top or the bottom. And the reason for that is that keeps your straight of grain going this way and this way. Whereas if I turn it, then I've got bias going on there. So a lot of people do say, you know, what about the bias in your triangles? But if you control it like that, then it's, I've never had a problem with it. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I'm going to show you on the back of one of these blocks what I do when I've sewn my pieces together. I always press my seams open. And so you can see here, that's pressed open. It helps because you've often got a lot of seams interfering with each other. And I really love using this. This is the clover roll and press. So you can do all that. And I have that next to me at the sewing machine. So I can press my seams open as I go, because you want to press each one open before you sew the next one. Um, and then when I've done that, I can then press the block itself or the unit um, when I've actually finished the whole block. Um, so that, that makes things quicker. Oh, Delia, this is filmed from New Zealand. <laughs> so I'm in Masterton, New Zealand. We were, we were up quite late actually yesterday because we were watching the Queen's funeral and we had a Google meet with my family in England. And um, it was very, very cool, but quite a late night so okay um so the next thing I'm going to show you you can see that if you join all these in a line you'll say oh great I'll make a triangle quilt but what am I going to do at the ends well you need half triangles at the ends and you can cut them using this ruler but I found that when I've cut one, I'll show you what happens when you've cut one. Get my strip. So I'm going to start with a straight line. So I need to straighten up the end of my strip first. Now to cut your half triangles from this ruler, what you need to do is put your two and a half inch line on the bottom of the strip. And then if you see these lines in the center here, there's one central line. Now that's going to end up being your seam line. So you need to go with the line that's to the left of it and then cut on this side. I'll show you this both ways round. So that's cutting one right-handed. 
and then let's do one at this end so I'm just going to straighten up so if you're left-handed you put the right hand uh, dashed mark on there and this is so that you get enough fabric in here for your seam Put it that way so you can see it's quite chunky um, actually the top of this is slightly wider than the top of the ordinary triangles just the way maths works out so those then can go at the end of your strip and guess what Sheila's done she's dropped the things on the floor <laughs> So anyway, that's how you finish off the edge of your strip um, of triangles, your rows. And then, of course, you then can just sew your rows together and you can play with which way round you put your triangles and colours and everything. Now, as you can see, once I've cut a half square triangle, uh, not a half square triangle, I'm sorry, a half triangle off a strip, I'm then faced with an angled end and I go what am I going to do about that so earlier I was just cutting that off and then starting again you can try and do this kind of like line that up and ugh, but you can't really use the measurements on the ruler if you do that so this is why I created this half half triangle half 60 ruler so this is what it looks like <clears throat> and we've done a, a 12 inch finished version so that it's very flexible you can use it in all sorts uh, particularly things like behind me where you've made all your blocks and you need setting triangles for the ends and the advantage of this one is that when I've done this I can use this ruler to cut the straight edge, but actually my, my best way to do it is to turn it like that. And this, and then I can line the two and a half inch line up on there. So I can cut right-handed like that. Let's just do that one. Then I can turn my ruler around and cut like that. So if you're left-handed, I've got this angle on here. I can line that up, put my two and a half on the bottom. So it just matches exactly the ruler and the strip size that you've been using. Cut there. And then turn the ruler and I'm lining up the top end the two and a half inch on the top of the strip like that so this has really sped up my piecing and my cutting for for doing the triangle blocks um, I got quite obsessed with doing them when I did my first quilt, uh, which was uh, a modern triangle sampler. And I just decided that, well, if you can do triangles, you can do all sorts of other shapes as well. So I got into doing trapezoids and hexagons and diamonds, all sorts of different shapes. And I thought I'd show you today how I cut a hexagon. Um, I started off doing it in a fairly complicated way with a number of steps and now I've realised that it's not that hard at all. It's really easy. And if you do English paper piecing, if you're a hand piecing person, this is actually a fantastic way to cut your strips, to cut your hexagons. Um, it makes it really quick. So here's a block and this block is from... This book, which is the triangle block tool, which has all sorts of blocks in. 
trying to find the reference pages because you can bookmark everywhere else. There we go. So there's all these different triangle blocks. There's diamond shaped blocks and there's hexagon shaped blocks that you can really get into, have a play with. So you could repeat one block throughout a quilt. Um, the other thing I do is show you at the end the setting, so how you can set everything to make a quilt. Um, so this block here that I'm going to show you is called Cogwheel. So, and this is the block and I, you've got the various different sizes. So if you've used any of the C&T um, block tools before, this is the same sort of layout. So you've got one where you can make a six inch block. Actually, I've got four different sizes. So six inches, which is going to be finished size from top to bottom. Um, 12 inches, 18 inches, or even 24 inches, which would be a really cool table center. Um, so to cut my hexagon, that one, I'm going to do as if I was doing a six inch block. And this block here is obviously bigger than that, but we're going to cut one for this. So for a six inch block, I needed a, a four inch from top to bottom hexagon. And this strip here is four and a half inches. So let's just check that I've got my strip the right size. Yep. So this is a four and a half inch strip that I've cut from my fabric. The neat thing about the hexagons is what I'm going to do is actually fold this in half like that. Just finger press it. Then I'm going to get my triangle ruler. And if I was going to be cutting a triangle from a four and a half inch strip, I'd be putting my four and a half inch line on. But here I've got my two halves are joined together already, so there won't be any seam in between them. So I've got to take off the seam allowance. And so therefore I'm going to put my four and a quarter inch line on the bottom here. And that goes on the fold. And then all I have to do is cut that side and cut that side. And there's my hexagon. That's, I just love cutting these. <laughs> and you can check that you've done it right by, if you fold it like that, you can't see anything. It's, you know, all lines up at the edge. Open it out, turn it through 60 degrees like that. Fold it up. Yep, can't see anything there. Can't see anything there at the sides. Open it out again. Turn it once more. Fold it up. Can't see anything at that side. Can't see anything that side. So if I'd used the wrong line on my ruler, you'd be able to see it wouldn't be a symmetrical piece. And that's how I know that it's perfect. Um, I mean, you can get into fussy cutting and all sorts, and that's something that I talk about in all the books, um, how to fussy cut your hexagons, which is really fun. One of my favourites is the, the bee, which is all fussy cut, and it's all lined up in there. So you can use this for my patterns, which are all machine piecing. But you could also use this ruler if you do EPP and you just want to quickly cut hexagons. There will be a little bit more wastage than if you try and interlock them, but oh, it's fast. <laughs> so you get a lot, a lot done. Cool. OK, so what we're going to do next is show you the Matariki. Um, some of, and some of my other patterns. So let's just come back on. We, <laughs> hello, Sheila. 
We can't hear yeah. you. Oh, can you hear me now? Uh, we can. You can? Great. Okay. Something went wrong with my sound feed. <laughs> so let's try and bring this back up. I'll just uh, enlarge myself on here and then that'll be the easiest way. How about that? Can you hear me now? We can. Great. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Matariki. Um, this is a pattern that I wrote as a block of the month. So it actually comes in 10 parts, um, but you can buy the whole lot together at once. And I made this quilt in two different colorways, one behind me on the wall. And then and that's using um, Violet Crafts Modern Classics. So I wanted to use fabrics that you could always get rather than fabrics that are um, ones that are going to go out. But of course, you can use your own ones, whatever you want to do. And then this colorway, this is called Museum. And this colorway is made with chalk and charcoal. So these are both Robert Kaufman fabrics. Um, and on the back of the pattern, you've got all the specifications for if you want to use those fabrics for what to, to get. Thank you. So in this pattern, there are lots of different blocks. You've actually got 12, 18 different blocks to make. And as I say, it comes in parts, so you can buy the whole pattern in one go, or you can buy the, buy the separate patterns. And the first one gives you all the instructions for cutting the shapes. Of course, if you've already got one of my books, you'll know how to cut them, but um, that, that will give you the instructions for that. Um, so I think we are giving one of those away, aren't we, Tricia? Um, the Matariki, so that's going to be one of our giveaways. That is correct. Yes, you've had you have several yeah. awesome giveaways, and that is one of them. Cool. <laughs> so yeah, so that's the Matariki. So that's probably the the most complex out of the quilts that uh, the patterns that I'm going to show you. Um, then I have got some patterns that I wrote specifically for the um, half sixty ruler. This one's a really easy one, and it's called Slice It Up. And that's made with a layer cake. So very, very easy and quick pattern to make with a layer cake. And I, I'm a big fan of showing you how you can make quilts in different colorways. Um, and this is, you know, lovely. Um, this is actually Krista Watson's fabric from Benetex on that I used on mine but imagine how different that would look in the colors that you love and you know in may, maybe one of the layer cakes you've got in your stash you could just go right I'm going to do that this weekend it's a really quick one to do and then I've got some other ones with the half 60. this one I made uh, out of Carolyn Friedlander fabrics and linens and um, so that's the Essex linens from Robert Kaufman. Um, I just love her fabrics. They're just really effective. And this is more of a muted type of colorway. So if you've got um, sun or something like that, that you want to make a quilt for, obviously, again, you could make it in pretty pinks if you want to. But that's, that's this is the one that I made and that's called Hover. And again, they are really easy to make so you might look at it and think I don't think I could do that but you can and oh do I make videos yes well I do I have um, classes online so my website's quiltwithsheila.com and um, I do do online classes so um, and then this one is called arrows this one was a mixture of um, chalk and charcoal fabrics for the colors and then let's see if you can see that better i've used i've interspersed it with a variety of 
kind of low volume fabrics. Some of it was is quite spotty. It's um, Wyndham Inkwell was the range that I used. Um, so quite some quite funky black and whites that I, I really liked. So it's kind of all to me tones in that one that I've used. Again, do whatever you love. And then the final one is probably my favourite and most people's favourite, which is called Topsy. And I called it Topsy because I don't know if you have this saying growing up, but if something grew fast, my mum used to say, oh, it's growing like Topsy. And this one grows really fast. Um, the size that I made is the king size and they're very big blocks and so much fun to use with uh, fabrics that you love. So I had these lovely um, art gallery fabrics that I bought at Houston and um, I, I wanted to use those. So that's what I used in mine. Um, again, nice and easy to make. Everybody says how surprised they are, how easy they are to make. And you can see that you can use the rulers. So it's the triangle and the half triangle ruler. Um, and that just grows like topsy. So on the pattern with this one, you have a queen size and a king size. But uh, if you buy the pattern and drop me an email, I've also done a smaller version, a couple of smaller versions. So I will send you that if you drop an email to me, if you have this pattern. I love, I, yeah, I love art gallery fabrics. So, yeah, there we go. So uh, a wedding quilt, if you want to make a wedding quilt and you need to make a big quilt quickly, then uh, that's my tip for that one. So I think that's about all. Um, we are just about there. And so I'm going to hand talk to Tricia and we're going to show you some giveaways that we're going to do. Well, that was beautiful, Sheila. We enjoyed Thanks watching so that. And she donated several patterns for our giveaway. We've got that beautiful Topsy pattern, the Slice It Up pattern, and the full set of the Matariki. So that's really cool. We can go right into the giveaways if you're ready, Sheila. Excellent. Yes. All right. Let's see who the winner is. I've got to get my screen pulled up. Um, I'm always excited. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Let's see if this goes a little bit smoother for me this time. Maybe I'll I'll get it by the end of the day, right? <laughs> yeah. Everybody's been patient with me. All right, so let's go ahead and draw. Uh, what number is the topsy pattern? We're going with 21. All right, let's see 21. who gets the topsy pattern. <gasps> who is it going to be? Lois yes, Anderson. Allison. Congratulations, Fantastic. Lois. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we will go right into number 22, and that's going to be the Slice It Up pattern. And let's draw for that one. Who's the lucky winner? One more. Oh, Gail, right. Gail Hardock. Congratulations. Congratulations. Gail. And last but not least, that full set of the Matariki. How fun. The Here we go. Well, and thank you so much for donating these, Sheila. They're beautiful. You're welcome. A lot of fun. They're going to enjoy JCD, making them. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right. Well done. Wonderful. Well, Sheila, I don't know. Let me just double check and see if we have any questions from anybody. See if we have anything coming through. Do you see anything, Brian? I don't see very much. No, I don't see anything specific. All right. I think everybody was just mainly saying it was pretty. You're doing a great job. Awesome. Lovely, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, since well, thank you're you so morning, much for having me. You're so welcome. We'll let you get on with your day since it's morning there in New Zealand, not Australia. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, thank cool. you so much, Sheila. You have a wonderful day. Thanks so much, Trisha. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, that was wonderful. So just to recap, if anybody was looking at the comments, uh, we did share all of the, the links for the different rulers and stuff that she had used. 
also she was using the roll and press tool here um, for doing the seam. So that was really awesome too. So if you need that information again, just let us know. But otherwise you can scroll back and look at those links. I believe somebody had asked if we offer her books. We sure do. Both of them are able to be found on our website. So I don't have that part number handy, but you can just type in the triangle block tool. And then the other one is quilts with an angle. Both of them come up. All right, everybody. Well, we have 20 minutes before the end of the day. So I just want to go over a couple. We'll be streaming again. So we'll be starting at 9 Central Standard Time. We obviously have another fantastic lineup. I think today went pretty darn good. I mean, we had a couple of technical difficulties, a couple things here and there. <laughs> Brian fixed it for me. <laughs> but overall, I think for our first sewing event, it went pretty well for our first day. So tomorrow, praying, it's going to go a little bit smoother, but I think overall it went well. Just remember to get entered into our giveaway. Continue to comment. Everybody's been doing a fantastic job on that. If you are watching from Instagram or TikTok, hop over to our Facebook or YouTube so you can get entered by commenting there. Any of our winners, if you're wanting to claim your prize, and I sure hope you're wanting to claim your prize, just go to the link in the description and go to our link tree. And it will be there where you just click a little button and claim your prize that way. Uh, what else can we let them know other than... What do we got going on? What do we have got go? What? <laughs> what have we got going on tomorrow? <laughs> Tongue twister. What do we have? Ever sewn right, right away in the morning. Who's yeah. after that? Arrow. We'll be looking at some fantastic furniture. We got Philtex coming in. Philtex, a more awesome thread. The uh, Grace Company is going to be back next year. Laura, uh, Laurel and Melinda are going to be here. Melinda will be back, and then Laurel will be joining them with the Grace Company. So that's going to be nice. That's going to be their third segment. They're going to have one more after that featuring some True Cut products. So that'll be fun as well. Um, both Tim Bond and uh, Sam Fung from Juki and Genovia are going to be here. We're going to be giving away a Juki HZLG 220 and then uh, Genomi pink anniversary edition machine. Awesome. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, we're going to be doing more machine demonstrations. And now with um, Juki, we're doing the ideal Juki room, excuse me, the ideal sewing room with Juki. And Tim Bond's going to be covering that. So that's going to be a ton of fun. Following his segment is going to be Sam Fung. And he's going to be featuring the Genomi, which model is that? The 780 plus? It's going to be the MC. 200 QC PSE. How did I forget that one? That is my machine. <laughs> the 780 DC. I was actually thinking of the Elna models that he's going to follow up on another day. So followed by that, um, I believe it's going to be Michelle Muska with Alicio, and she's going to feature some of the mini irons. I know that we all love those mini irons. We did a giveaway on our Facebook page and we had fantastic engagement. She's going to show all the cool features of that. I've got one back here that I kind of want to grab, but <laughs> no, they're pretty awesome little iron. So she'll be joining us tomorrow, but we have a, like I said, another fantastic lineup. And then last is Colleen Davis. Oh, I'm so excited about Colleen. She's actually been in the comments today. So Colleen Davis, uh, I met on TikTok and she's a fantastic seamstress. She makes all sorts of fun things, but she just recently came out with a new tote. It's called You Totally Can. How cute is that, right? She's going to be doing a sew along, and then at the end, she is going to give away the tote. So that one's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, other than that, I think we can wrap it up for the day. We got a few, well, we've got a few minutes. Let's see if we have any questions. Oh, Brian's over there tapping the box of prizes. I think we need to give away a couple more prizes. What do you think? I think so. <laughs> Since he said, yo, yeah, Trish, man. give away prizes. Okay, let's give away some prizes. He's selecting them. Got to end the day on a high note, right? <laughs> oh, Rose City Originals. Oh, I love that. They're smaller, but... I love Colleen. We all hey, love Colleen. Worth it. Here's uh, <laughs> Thank you. That's purple oh, Awesome. And the orange and sour pack. Perfect. So this is from Purple Hobbies. It's actually quite a few different items. So let me pull these out and show you a little bit about what they are. Purple Hobbies is really cool because it's a small company. 
start a start small business and they 3D print all of their stuff, right? They sure do. They 3D print it and she actually sent me something to test and I loved it. So wanna share some of that with you. Uh, we've got a stitch tracker here, the infinite blade saver. Actually, let me grab one. I'm gonna show you how this works. We have a couple of different sizes for the blade saver. Let's do, excuse me, we've got the 45 millimeter and the 60 millimeter. So these just are a great way to use up, or I should say use your blade from your rotary cutter. Say you're going along using your rotary cutter and it has a nick in it and it just doesn't cut your fabric right. You don't want to throw it away because it's still sharp, but you don't want to use it with your fabric because every time you have to get a little scissors and cut that little mistake. So great way to use it. Put it in one of these blade savers, little screw, easy to pop in, just like that. Take the pieces and then plop this right here, just like that. And you've got little openings where you can put your thread through and do your chain piecing. And you have a bunch of chain piecing. You just sit here and cut. They work awesome. So again, you can get that as a 45 or a 60. So included in this bundle <laughs> is that blade saver and what does she have here a multi-size block trimmer i'm not gonna lie i'm not 100 percent certain what this is hmm. laser cut out of bright green acrylic so you can easily see the markings on any fabric i'm gonna have to look into that but included in the bundle here the third hand binding folder clip oh these are always nice they help you make your binding and then a binding wheel. Store your binding on there, make it, wrap it up, and it'll be nice and neat. So that bundle, we are going to call number 202, Brian. All right, 202. Oh, actually, look at, we've got one more little needle, a needle minder. Perfect. Okay, so 202 is the Purple Hobbies bundle. Let's see who our winner is going to be. All right, it is going. Judy Gibson, congratulations. You get all these goodies. To claim your prize, just go to the link tree in the description and click claim your prize. And then from there, you just fill out the form and submit that and we'll get it sent to you. So that is what, and we've got number 203, Brian. Okay, so for these, these are actually learn to sew kits. These are awesome. So one is going to be um, a little tote or bag almost. I hate to say bag because everybody picks on me <laughs> for my Northern accent. <laughs> so let's say, what's another name that I could say for a bag? <laughs> tote. <laughs> it's a drawstring tote. <laughs> All right, and the other one is this little duffel bag. So bag. <laughs> These are really cool. They are best for age six and up, both of them. One says medium difficulty and the other one says it's a higher difficulty. But somebody learning to sew, great couple of projects. So let's see who that winner will be. All right. Here we go. A little bit longer. Sharon from YouTube. <laughs> Congratulations, Sharon. Thank you so much for commenting. And if you didn't hear me before, uh, to claim your prize, just go ahead and go to the link tree in the description. Oops, excuse me. And then click that claim your prize, fill out the form, and you can submit that and we'll get it sent out for you. And that was number 203. And right, Sharon. Thank you. Viewers asked if we would go over our list of winners for the day. Oh, yeah. So I actually have that for you right here. Um, so do you want to put it on my page here and I can read them off? Yep, it should be on there right there. All right, let me find that and we will share. Oh, look at all those awesome winners. Okay, so prize number one was 
Patsy Vanderhoeven, and that was the finesse eight pack of thread. Prize number two was Adrena Hutch Hutchison, and that was the light bar. Sorry, I'm going to be squinting. <laughs> Prize number three is Janet Pess, and that was 100 weight Visifil mini spools. Prize number four is Suzanne Kubis, and that's 80 weight um, Deco Bob thread. Again, I just want to thank all our sponsors. Like I said, without them, this would not have been possible. They've donated so many wonderful prizes. Prize number five is Nancy Richards Connolly, and that's the ABC Pocket Guide, the five pack of needles, and the color code chart. And let's see, that same ABC Pocket Guide, the five pack of needles, and the color code chart, that's all the way through what number? Is that number? I think we did nine of those. Yes. What? Yeah, so it should be through 13. Yep. So through 13. Perfect. Okay. So number five, again, is Nancy Richards Connolly. Number six is Carolyn Fields. Number seven is Beth McCaw. McCaw. I did that before. I'm like, there's no separation on there. <laughs> number eight is Chris Yost. And, oh, and I was just about to say, um, Brian just shared that ticker at the bottom of the screen. So that gives the instructions on how to claim your prize. So as I'm reading these off, any of the winners, that's how you claim your prize. Prize number nine is Emily, I think it's Dugan, D-U-G-A-N. Prize number 10 is Elizabeth F. Prize number 11 is Mundy Miller. Number 12 is Becky Ryan Calvin. And number 13 is Pamela Tinkle. And all of those, again, are the ABC Pocket Guide, the five pack of needles, and the color code chart or the little luggage tag. So congrats, congrats. Prize 15. Oh, did we have a 14? Oh, we didn't have the 14. Never mind. We had skipped that one. Okay. We've got number 15 is Betsy from YouTube, and that's the 30 pack of Floriani embroidery thread. Number 16 is Mary, is that Ja Carlton? Ja Carlton? J O C A R L T O N. <laughs> and that is the 30 pack of Floriani embroidery thread as well. We've got number 17 is Joe Womack, and that's the Blue Fig Mini Carry Case with the 12 spools of the Floriani thread. The Bowen pins and also the Quilter Select Air Erasable Marker. I love that Air Erasable Marker. <laughs> uh, number 18 is Teresa, and last name A-R-A-U-J-O. And that was the Dookie HZL 355Z series machine, little mechanical machine. And as Brian said earlier, we are going to be giving away more of those, five more to be exact. Um, number 19. Is the cutie frame. Ah, uh, the cutie frame. Oh, I'm so excited to give that one away. So the cutie frame, the cutie legs, the Juki TL 2000 QI, and the bungee clamps went to Deborah Poe. Woohoo! <laughs> that was a fun one to give away. Plus, I'm a really big fan of the Juki machines. I have um, the one that I would say just has the extra tension and the speed control. So it's the TL 2010Q. They are fantastic machines. I use the 2000QI here at work all the time. You're going to love it. And as I had mentioned before, you don't just have to have it on that frame. You could take it out, use it for purses, quilting, you know, all different projects. Okay, we are on prize number 200, and that was Natalie Monique with the 30-pack Floriani. The prize number 201 is Anita Gilbreth, then that's the Blue Fig Notions bag with the eight spools of Floriani. The prize number 20 was Robbie V, and that's the grid glider, the polish kit, the two-piece suspension system, and the 18 by 24 large extension um, so steady table. So 
I really hope that you enjoy that one. And that so steady table will be able to be cut to your machine. So don't worry about that. You're not going to get some random one that's not going to fit your machine. <laughs> All right, and we've got prize number 21 is Lois Anderson. She won the Slice It Up quilt pattern from Sheila. Prize number 22 is Gail Hardick, and that's the Topsy quilt pattern. Let's see, we've got a few more here. We've got prize number 23, JCB, and that's the Matariki Block of the Month complete pattern set. I believe that was like a... $90 pattern because it's all of them. So that's a pretty cool one. You've got an assortment that you'll be able to work with. So that's pretty awesome. We've got prize number 202, and that was the Purple Hobbies bundle, and Judy Gibson gets that. And then prize number 203, uh, the Learn to Sew kits, and that was Sharon. So recapping, I think we look pretty pretty good. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us on our first day of So Creative Live. We have three more days. We're going to get our groove going and hopefully have a fantastic time the next few days as well. So join us bright and early, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Make sure you have your cup of coffee, your notebook to write everything down, and we will see you tomorrow.